Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Welcome back to Halo. It has been years in the making, and this is the HCS ANZ Open number one. I am your host in Maniac, and I cannot come up with the words to convey to you just how excited I am to, to bring you today's broadcast. What a journey it's been to get here. We have a hell of a year ahead of us, and it all starts with today. Halo has been in the blood of everyone here at ESL Australia and myself included from way back in the day, over a decade ago, when we first started running Halo events around Australia. There is a long and storied uh, history here, both in Australia and around the world. Let's have a look back at some of the highlights that have made ANZ Halo what it is today. And uh, there it is, five to one in the final game. Team Immunity are your 2011 Halo Reach champion. Just two kills in it, one kill to win, four Noxious Gaming, 10 seconds left in the game. Adam's one shot and he's almost about to die, but he manages to stay alive. Weasel's week two, he finds one, 50 to 47 though, and Noxious Gaming takes out the tournament, six games to three. starting to go to work. You've got team teammates over at Bar and Cafe. Oh, the ridiculous snapshot there. We've come down to the slow mark. Can Exile 5 bounce back? They've picked up one, now that's two. Adds and Zirkle teamed up 48, 45, but two kills back to back. It's wrapped up. Team Immunity are your ANZ Regional Final Champions. He's feeling it. He wants it to happen. He lands the one there. One, two, kangaroo. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Goes for another, why the hell not? It could be a double, no, too slow. Oh, baby! No, he got that one. But Voltage and the rest of Immunity looking so good. Look at this, reversal from Vitaj to get a double kill. That is it, guys. The Immunity are your winners. They will be going to the Halo World Championships 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Halo World Championship Sydney Finals. Where you going, Voltage? Let's okay, go, you help him, you help him. Hi, Beto. Hi. I'll get camera, I'll get camera. Wait, Hi, Bonnie. Hi, Slave. There's five seconds left. No, Seduce is actually just going to hold this flag here. And ladies and gentlemen, Mind Freak are your Halo WC 2018 Sydney Finals champions. I can't explain the goosebumps and chills looking back on some of that footage gives me. It is absolutely hype. I'm very, very proud of where Australian Halo has come from. And you know, there's a lot of stories behind the scenes and there's more stories to build as we get into Halo Infinite and a new era of Halo Esports. And to kick it off with me, it's our casters joining me on the broadcast. Please welcome Hoots and SSJ4. Gentlemen, looking back on some of that history is just really, really got me pumped. Hoots, you were there for some of it, especially in the early days. What a journey we've been on together. Yeah, John, it's crazy to think that was over a decade ago that we were casting together at some of those early AC ACL tournaments. And that video there, that package just shows how far the scene really has come in that time. I'm really excited to be back uh, casting Halo with you and I really I can't wait to see how this tournament goes. Me either, mate. I've been absolutely psyched all week and Justin, you know, we look back at some of the, the long-term history over a decade ago there with those Oz Halo highlights, but in recent times with Halo 5, kept alive by great guys such as yourself and a big shout out to the man Lunchy at Halo Australia for keeping things going here in Oz. But look, some of the recent times, big history that was made with those Halo 5 events a couple of years ago as well. 
Absolutely, we've done our best to keep the ANZ scene alive. Some wonderful events, and I've really got to know and love all the players. And I'm more excited for the players in our scene than I am for the game itself. It's great opportunities for them. Halo Infinite, and Halo's back. Halo is back, baby. Speaking of, let's have a look at the roadmap and see what's in store for not only us here locally, but for Halo fans around the world. The launch, of course, of course dropped this week and we're already into our first competition on the weekend. Hoots, were you able to get some time on the sticks? Mate, the game's only been out for five days and we're already casting a tournament. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, the roadmap is incredible. To, to put out a game in this quickly, give competitors a real idea of what the year looks like for them. And, you know, we're going all the way through to October next year for that uh, final championship in Seattle. But no, it's, it just looks fantastic. I can't wait for that, but of course here in the ANZ region we've got the HCS Online Supers in March and I spy with my little eye, Justin, the HCS Regional in Melbourne coming up in September. Josh, that's my stomping grounds and I put the call out on Twitter. The air mattresses are coming out, so if you need some of the crash, my place is the place to be. I'm absolutely jazzed for it and it's just going to be massive. You're a gentleman and a scholar, Justin. I'm head to toe with you, baby. It's going to be great. Can't wait for that LAN event in Melbourne. But look, this entire roadmap, it's not just ESL Australia putting this together. It is a global effort. And in partnership with 343, we've got Esports Engine, DreamHack, Face It, and Gaming Partners all helping us bring this together. The Halo Championship Series for 2021 and 2022 is going to be absolutely bonkers. I cannot wait for it. You know, you look at those names and we all run different things across the world. I mean, in the business world, competitors, but the love of Halo brings us together. And as someone who works within ESL Australia, I mean, it's just really humbling to see and I absolutely love it. Halo, the passion for it brings everyone together. At Hoots, we were joking off, off stream that, you know, we haven't really talked to each other, let alone hung out or anything since the Halo days and yet here we are on a broadcast together. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's pretty crazy. You hit me up out of the blue a month or two ago saying Infinite's on the way and, and we'd love to have you back and I jumped at it straight away. We used to have so much fun at the ACL days and you know, that was back when we were just doing it. We were all volunteers doing it for the love of the game and um, got so many fond memories of the tournaments we used to help run together along with all the whole ACL crew and especially a shout out I think to Nick Vanzetti who was running the helm of that back then. Big man Vanzabra, yes. Big shout out to him as well for kicking things off here in Australia in any kind of big way. Now, look, so many nostalgia berries at the moment as we look back on some of this history and we looked at the roadmap, but it's all about the first event that these teams are playing for. We are, are of course, talking about the first major that's taking place in Raleigh. That wasn't a glitch on the screen, folks. December 17 to 19, HCS Raleigh, the first major in the roadmap. It's coming up in less than a month. Justin, I cannot wait for that one, and it's going to mean a whole lot to these teams to try and make it to that event. Absolutely. I know a lot of the top players have been waiting and waiting for this. It's all about when Infinite comes, when Infinite comes, and that first event, they've all got their sights set on the US where you know, there's really strong competition. They want to expand their skill sets. So really big opportunities for some up and coming players. For the fans at home, please make sure you do tune into that event, or at least if you can, if you're over in North America, go along. But there are other ways you can support the teams as well. Of course, Halo, those awesome guys at 343, bringing in the team skins once again. These partnerships with the biggest teams in the world were made before the team even dropped. We'll have a lot to say about the Halo Esports ecosystem. Tashi on Twitter obviously talking about it being years in the making. But for those of you at home, if you get these skins, support your favorite teams. There's a kickback to the team so they can contribute to the ecosystem as well. Hoots, I don't think we've ever seen a Halo Esports program that's so all-encompassing. And so soon with the game again, like we said before, just launching five days ago. Just spare a thought for my wallet though, Josh. It's taken an absolute hit over the last couple of days because 
it's really hard to pick which of these skins I, I want to stick with, and I think I've been I've been changing every day pretty much. But they, they all look fantastic, and as you said, giving back to the ecosystem and the teams is, is just fantastic. And along with the team skins, you can also support the regional bundles as well. So here in Australia, we've got the hashtag Croc Gang. If you get your regional bundle, you are supporting the TOs in that region, directly supporting Halo Esports and the tournament organisers to help promote the growth of Halo Esports. If you're in ANZ or indeed if you want to represent around the world, make sure you get those regional packs as well. There's a lot of ways that you as a player and us as a community can help the Halo Esports ecosystem. And that's what I love about this program. Something that makes it unique that I haven't seen in other programs around the world is just how all encompassing it is and how this these kickbacks to community uh, initiatives uh, work. So very, very excited for that. But look, let's talk about today's competition. For those of you playing at home, this is day two of the HCS ANZ Open number one. We're picking up the broadcast from today. However, a whole lot of action took place yesterday. So let's talk through some of that and what we saw because, gents, I know that there was a whole lot of action, a whole lot of gameplay, and some highlights as well. Some big names that we'll be talking about more in future. But I'd like to start by just talking about the game at large. This is the first esports broadcast for Halo Infinite. And Hoots, a lot has changed. And as we saw that grapple onto that rocket launcher, I think we're going to be seeing some really cool things in this game. Yeah, absolutely. The equipment in Halo 3 wasn't really a part of the competitive settings, but there seems to be a really great balance in Infinite for equipment to have a role in the sandbox. And so, you know, as you said before, we saw some great ways in terms of getting power weapons when you might not be next to them, being able to move around the, the map really quickly. Um, I'm just really excited to see how it actually does work with these competitive players, and especially once they've had a bit more time with it um, to see some, some of the things they can do. And Justin, you've seen a lot of the competitive gameplay recently with your involvement with Halo Australia. Um, you know, what's your take on this? What have you heard from some of the Halo 5 players as we move towards Infinite? It's a really interesting dynamic at the moment. You know, the you know quote unquote Halo 5 kids and the Halo 3 kids are all kind of coming together, and it's a good mix of everything for them. You know, the loss of that thruster in from Halo 5, but the implementation of um, some of these abilities as equipment just really creates so many opportunities for outplaying your opponents and they're jazzed about it and I'm jazzed about it. Yeah, I can't wait to see how they do, you know, utilize this kind of equipment and these new features within Halo Infinite, you know. There's a lot of new and old and Hoots, this is what we were talking about a little bit earlier. Halo Infinite, it truly feels like a hybrid of, you know, the old games like Halo 3 along with the new Halo 5. You know, as someone who probably like myself plays a lot more Halo 3 than the newer games, what, what's your kind of take on it? Yeah, no, I agree. It, to me, it feels like more of a throwback to Halo 3 than of the Halo 5. Um, and so that's going to be really interesting to see how those teams who dominated Halo 3 back in the day that are still competing now, how they fare against the teams who, um, you know, in more recent years have, have had Halo 5 be the game that's got them into the competitive scene. So, yeah, new school versus old school is going to be very interesting. We saw a really good game here and a good use of that Repulsor block blowing uh, enemies off the map, but Direwolves they got this 2-0 over Look At Me through yesterday's competition. We were able to hear a little bit about Direwolves, a very, very strong squad. Uh, you may know of them, those in the ANZ scene at least, or some even overseas may have known of the former, uh, former Exile 5 squad. I believe it's three of the four players that are in this new Direwolf squad with the addition of Vamp, a very, very strong squad. But as we'll see in these highlights a little bit, I think there may have been an upset involving this team, which we're about to see here, Justin. Yeah, absolutely. My boy Lunchy and the squad managing to knock them out of the tournament, which is a bit of a shock upset, but the addition of Junior there, um, a ma massive uh, player there with plenty of experience overseas and at home with tournament wins. And that was the big upset of the day, and I couldn't be more any more jazzed about it. I love when competition is shaken up like that. It just makes everything that much more interesting. This throw together team here with Nuke and Pave, a name we've seen for many, many years, Hooters. But uh, look, to take down Direwolves 2 0. I saw some smack talk from Juckor on Twitter. What did he say? I think it was, I'm paraphrasing, something along the lines of turning the Direwolves into the tire puppies. Uh, I hope we see a little bit more of that today. Yeah, absolutely. I, I want to chat about this game we're watching now as well, Idolize v KBM. So KBM is a, a team, and, and something we should mention as well is that keyboard and mouse now is a part of the sandbox of, of the game um, for Halo Infinite. So we're going to have keyboard and mouse up against controller. This team, KBM, is a, a full keyboard and mouse team, as you'd imagine. Unfortunately, couldn't get the job done against Idolize, but we even had a player, I believe it was a Scoobmeister uh, for KBM. I've been told it's his first ever tournament he's ever played in, and he's had a top eight finish. So pretty incredible, and it's going to be interesting to see. Does 
keyboard and mouse become more popular as the game goes on and more PC players are playing? Is keyboard and mouse a particular role that teams want to have? Is you know, does the keyboard and mouse player run the snipe a lot of the time? All these things will be really interesting to see as the as the tournament pans out, not just for this tournament, but going through for the rest of the year. Yeah, that controller keyboard mouse debate, you know, it's always an interesting one and something fascinating about Halo Esports is where you can use either peripherals. And Justin, I gotta ask, you know, are we gonna see that war finally come to an end? Will the keyboard and mouse guys finally concede that controller is better for Halo? Never. That debate will never end long after we're gone. It's still going to keep going. I have that debate internally, actually. I had struggled in the MCC because I just kept swapping between the two. I love the sniper's playlist with the mouse and keyboard, but, you know, control is part of my heart. And I cannot welcome mouse and keyboard players anymore into the scene. Come come one, come all. Every, every eSports come to us because Halo's going to welcome you with open arms. I think so. We're starting to see a big shift, at least in ANZ, and I'm sure we'll see that around the world. But look, we saw a lot of fantastic replays there, highlights of yesterday's action, and there was a couple of breakout teams that we have to highlight as well. One of them being Carbon. Um, you know, a big name, not the same Carbon that we've seen elsewhere, um, but a few of these players here, Chef, Grand Last Shadows, Pandora's Wolfing, Godzi. Justin, I'm actually going to come back to you because you've seen more of these players in recent times. Tell me, you know, they, they had a really good performance yesterday. What's been your take and what's your vibe on these players? Well, I know that Grand Last Shadow and Godzi are a bit of a team doubles duo. You can always find them grinding in the Halo 5 playlist. Um, so they'll be ready to go. And Pandora, he's a consistently good player as well, something that you can count on. So I'd be watching out for um, Pandora, Pandora for consistency and then maybe Grand Last Shadow to really be the star player on that lineup. I know this squad beat Nuke and Pave to make it to the semi-finals, so they're one to look out for. But speaking of Nuke and Pave, for me, they were a breakout team as well. We talked about their win over Direwolves in the lower bracket, able to knock them out. Lunchy, Juckor, Junior, and Mantis. Hoots, big names, old names, seasoned veterans that we've seen for many, many years. Yeah, absolutely, Josh. Mantis is a, a name that I could never forget, even you know that it's been a decade since I last commentated him. But I, I remember ACL Sydney 2011, I think it was. He was just the heart and soul of his team. He was so loud, so vocal, um, doesn't mind the trash talk, which is always good. Um, but yeah, no, it, it's great to see some of these names here. And interesting seeing um, Junior no longer playing with Divine Mind. So um, that, that's been interesting to see as well. Yeah, very, very fascinating. Obviously, Divine Mind, one of the biggest squads that have already been announced. They did have Junior in the lineup. We actually were able to catch up with Junior prior to the broadcast, and we know that there's a bit of a personal clash with timings of the roadmap. And what's happening is that uh, he's allowing uh, or encouraging the squad to get some practice in this weekend with their reserve player as a just in case. But we'll leave that there. I'll allow you guys to talk on it a little bit more. For now, let's have a look at the bracket and see how the, uh, the events kind of unfolded and what we'll be seeing today. You know, we touched on Divine Mind. They're going to be up against Carbon and Neutral Bullet there with BBR. You can see there through that upper bracket that all of these teams that have made it to our semis did so without dropping a map. And although you can't see the earlier rounds in the bracket, I can confirm that none of these four teams have dropped a single map yet. It has only been best of three till now, but Justin, I find that fascinating nonetheless. Yeah, there's a couple of teams that have been well prepared for when Infinite drops, you know, non-stop eights for the last couple of years. So no surprise they're not dropping any maps so far. But you can see New Can Pave making their uh, run through with the upset over Die Wolves, and you know they're in the lower bracket now. And well, I love a comeback story, so I'd love to see. Uh, and you can pay, make it all the way to the finals. We'll just have to see how it plays out. I think that would be a really cool story to see. We'll have to see how it all unfolds. You saw there in the bracket how it's kind of going. And I know that there are some some really, really strong players in that lower bracket that could make a, a run all the way through. And if you are curious in that grand final, if there is a lower bracket team that takes the win, we'll reset the best of five. But we'll get to that in a moment. We're ready for our first match. BBR versus Nutribullet. Now, BBR, I think we can't say that name without just having all of these memories flashing back. Hoots, Brattles, Ads, Evil and Dante. It may not be the BBR of old, but that name is a staple in Australian Halo. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to see these names still playing, keeping the BBR name strong. You know, BBR, a team that has a, a very storied history in Halo, as you said, Josh. And Ads in particular um, has been in the scene, I think, for almost 17 years. So. You know, a real stalwart of the of the community, and as many people would say, the godfather of Australian New Zealand Halo. Um, he competed at WCG back in 2008, representing Australia with BBR. Um, 
I think it was 2008, Josh, yes. correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, and then, but yeah, has, has always been at the top or, or near the top. So it's great to see him still going strong through internet. Yeah, I cannot believe that 13 years after coming fourth at WCG 2008, you've got the captain of the former Encore BBR now here on one of the best teams in ANZ Halo. To me, that is absolutely nuts. I would have carpal tunnel in my thumbs by now, if not arthritis. Nonetheless, very, very impressive. Let's look who they're up against. It's going to be Nutribullet. I have a feeling I've got the intel that this isn't the name they're going to be going by for very, very long. I hear a very big team announce coming out very soon, but we'll uh, we'll just have to wait and see for that. Seduce, Barcode, Madzi, and Pratt. Now, I'll tell you what, I don't think this lineup really needs an introduction, Justin. No, but I'm going to do my dandest anyway. This is a monstrous squad. You have Seduce, arguably the M MVP of Halo 5. Madzi, who I would say had the best pistol shot in ANZ Halo 5. And then Barcode, he is just cracked out of his mind. He is a monstrous player. He would be who I'd be watching out for, um, for dominating these early days of Infinite. And I have full confidence in these boys performing well today. Yeah, you can see there, impossible for anyone to describe barcode using any other word than crack. That was the feedback we got from the players. I think we had to have talked to about half a dozen players who... It's, and it's funny, we didn't prime them. I think five out of six said literally, yeah, the kid is cracked. Yeah, and you just have to look at some of the highlights he's posted on Twitter recently as well. Um, some pretty disgusting overkills. Um, so it's going to be great to see him compete on the on the biggest stage here um, today. And, and yeah... But, Really looking forward to casting. I just want to get the game started. For my friends at home, particularly those outside of Australia, make sure you keep an eye on the young gun barcode and the rest of that squad as well. Nonetheless, these guys are about to face each other. We're almost ready for our first game. Let's take a look at the maps that they're going to be playing on here. Our very first competitive broadcast of Halo Infinite. BBR versus Neutral Bullet. We're going to have that Stronghold on Live Fire, Slayer on Streets, and if we get to it, because it is a best of three, CTF on Bazaar. Now, we've talked about the old versus new narrative and we've still got that carrying forward here, Justin. Stronghold on live fire, that, that objective game type. I feel like it's really going to come down to the team that's got their prac in as, as a squad. You can have your individual skills on the sticks, but that communication needs to be tight for this map. Absolutely, and that's what makes this lineup so exciting. Both teams have storied histories together, and that team teamwork is really going to translate into this first game. And Strongholds, it's all about those rotations and uh, moving around the map, and I think it's going to really lend well to the strengths of both of these top-tier squads. I really think so as well, Justin. I just want to say we're about to get started. Before we do, those of you at home, make sure you do share the stream. Get it out there. Get mum, dad, and Uncle Bob in here. This is the start of something special. This is the beginning of a new era of Halo Esports. This is the HCS ANZ Open 1. We are incredibly proud to kickstart the new esports program for Halo a new era for Halo fans around the world. This is going to be absolutely something else. Remember to support your teams, get your skins, and get supporting the regions as well. But alas, we are underway. Let's get things started. I'm going to hand it over to you, Justin. Yep, hashtag Croc Gang. ANZ Halo is back, and we're going to be kicking it off with Seduce. Absolute monster. And uh, he's going to be running through there. No, now we're on board with Brattles, and I think Brattles, he's a great player to highlight on this squad. He's very consistent. You can always expect him to be doing the right things on the map. And now Barco, we highlighted him before. He's got that sniper rifle checking all these sight lines. Two players there doing well to hold both of them back. And Barco, so much confidence there, challenging Brattles. But the amount of cover work that Brattles was using there, he managed to stay alive, and his teammate got the clean up there, Hoots. Yeah, did a good good effort to stay alive there, but unfortunately two is better than one. I'm really interested to see on this map what kind of positions teams choose to try and hold to to maintain control over the majority of the map. You know, it, it's very early days, and that's what's going to be quite interesting to see is different teams only having the game for five days or so, finding the strategies that they try and play in some of these objective game types. You know, the nest, I find, has been quite an important aspect of this map. So do people use the nest to try and hold and keep a sight line on both the C uh, and, and the B um, capture points? Uh, all that stuff's going to be really interesting to see, and, and it's going to be, I think, a different approach from a lot of teams now. But look, to start off with, we're seeing a, a BBR with a strong out of the gate start here, um, 28 to 2 lead, and, and it just seems right now that both teams are kind of feeling each other out a little bit, just getting map control and, and trying to sort out a strategy. Absolutely, yeah, BBR with that early lead, and just as we say that, uh, Neutral Bullet does get two strongholds, so points coming on the board for them. 
currently on board with Mazdi, Madzi. Uh, very strong BR shot from him. Two players there, 2v2, and they both go down and now switching over to Seduce. Finding himself, Rattles, there's three. Triple kill for him. Already going massive on day one, Hoot. Seduce, what a monster. Straight into it, straight into it. I love it. And not just that, it's the capture as well and maintaining full control now, actually, for Neutral Bullet briefly, although it looks like they still will actually hold that. So now's the time for their score to really start cracking up as they start to hold these points, start to slay. And we can see here, just looking at the scoreboard as well, Seduce, uh, he's off to a very strong start with seven kills, but we're on board with Prades here with the camo. And that's an interesting aspect of well, Justin, that we should talk about that's changed a bit from previous Halos, is these power-ups, whether it's the camo or the overshield, it's just used perfectly there by Prades. But th these power-ups, they don't get used straight away upon pickups. So there's a real tactical element when you pick that power-up up. Do you use it straight away or do you hold on to it, move around the map a little bit more and then activate it when you actually need it? It's it's a really tricky situation to weigh up, but we can see here Barcode being really sneaky here and using that repulsor as well. It seems complete, adds is completely unaware as to what's going on, but Barcode just fantastic use of cover here. Brattles finally takes him down, but using that equipment, what we spoke about earlier as well, is how people use it in different ways, whether it's just knocking your opponent off the map or just knocking them somewhere where they don't want to be. It's um, it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. Couldn't be more right about that one, Hoots. And now on board with Seduce again with that fresh sniper rifle. He's got eight bullets to play with. He'll have to see if he can find some visors through his scope. He's checking all the angles. And it does look like BBR. Oh, Seduce managing to find one. Another one in the long hole there. Tries to connect on Evil. Evil ducks and dives out of there. Fresh mag into the sniper rifle, and we can see down the bottom of the screen that uh, Neutral Bullet on a triple cap at the moment. BB are desperately trying to get a stronghold they managed to do, but those points are still ticking up. And Neutral Bullet, they're starting to blow out that lead there, Hoots. Yeah, they've really gotten into the flow of it now. Fantastic snipe from Seduce there. He's really starting to outslay uh, already on 12 kills, as you can see, unfortunately taken down there. But as you said before, Justin, you're right, they've started to maintain map control. Holding these two capture points, obviously, you only need two capture points to be scoring. Um, so as long as you've got those two, you're still scoring. Slaying becomes less relevant, but it is important to keep slaying to maintain map control. Just looking at the scoreboard here for BBR, adds only on one kill, so struggling to get in the rhythm a bit, it seems. Um, so he's going to have to really try and, try and lift a bit, get those slays, uh, and start leading his team. Yeah, absolutely. And now we're on board with Dads himself in a 1v1 versus Barco. And you see there, his little cheeky strafe. Um, Barco, just such a hard kill. I mean, I always get sweaty palms when I come up against Barco in matchmaking. Um, glad I'm not playing against him today. Now we're with Madzi moving through the tunnels. Does get a trade there, so I'll have to rotate onto another player. Now, again, with Barcode here. Um, capturing that um, A stronghold. Now rotating through. Brattles being very sneaky in the corner there, but it doesn't matter. Barco getting the better of him, just... Brattle's not hitting uh, that final shot with the battle rifle to clear him out there, Hoots. Yeah, Neutral Bullet really put a, a long run of score on. I think they actually went about 100 points straight before uh, BBR was able to arrest some momentum back. But we have seen now, um, after BBR's managed to regain a bit more control um, and, and a, a, a trying to claw their way back, unfortunately, here, though, Neutral Bullet <laughs> using that repulsor again really well, Madhu, there. Uh, we're jumping back on with Ads, who's still struggling just on that one kill. Um, it is hard to try and maintain map control when you aren't keeping the other team on a respawn timer. So I don't know what the deal with Ads is here right now, whether he should maybe try and stay back a little bit. He does seem to be running in quite a bit without much help, but we can see a fight here for this camo uh, as, as Barco's just holding down the fort with a double kill, almost for the triple, but unfortunately he's taken down by Bridles. Yeah, old man Ads struggling a little bit. You know, he's the breadwinner with the bread stick for his team currently. And now we're on board with Brattles, a personal favorite of mine. We'll have to see how he moves around the map here. And, you know, this early on with Halo Infinite, the meta and how the maps flow and all that kind of stuff has really yet to be figured out. And I think someone like Brattles, he just leans on the Halo fundamentals. You won't see him doing anything flashy. He just puts himself in the right spots. You can see he's being very cautious about his sight lines with that sniper, wanting to maintain that power weapon because that's a key to get them back into this game. It's yeah, absolutely. And, and Nutribullet here have managed to get back control. They're starting to score again. So, 
Look, BBR have clawed their way back in a little bit with time. I think that the run that Neutral Bullet's having in terms of their score has slowed down a little bit, so BBR's been able to get back into the game somewhat, but but it is a, it is a very big uh, gap to come back from. But one thing that we have mentioned before, Justin, is that that's the beauty of this game type, is that you can be down very far and still be able to work your way back into a game. Fantastic work there from Fire Battles, getting the triple kill and helping to clear some of that out. That's actually all four dead for Neutral Bullet, so this is a time when BBR really can start to set up on the map uh, grab some of these positions and try and keep Neutral Bullet away. Yeah, game's not over yet, and we can see BBR getting those two caps, so they're going to be putting points on the board. They're going to have to go on quite a bit of a run here to come back, but game is certainly not over. Now we're checking out Dante. Haven't given him much love so far. He's going to be rotating through, checking on the spawners in A. He finds Madzi. He's sniffing him out. He's trying to get him out of there hunting, but Madzi just using his cover so well. Dante is completely lost. And look at that. The help comes in um, to help take out Madzi there. But Dante goes down straight away. And uh, BBR, they're still putting points on the board. It does look like they're going for the triple cap there, Hoots. A bit of organized chaos back there in the garage. But, but, but you're right. Yeah, B BBR are starting to make a bit of a comeback. They actually had all three points at one point, although it looks like Neutral Bullet are on the verge of, of potentially capping two, although some good defense there from BBR managing to hold that second position and keep scoring. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see. I haven't been able to tell whether there has been one particular capture point that seems to be most of the focus. B is that one that often you find at the start of games, at least there's that mad initial rush for, but um, it doesn't seem like either team right now has committed to holding just two, because that's obviously how this game works in terms of scoring. You only need to be holding two, so some teams can choose to purely focus on two points to hold and say, we'll just give up this other one, that doesn't matter. Um, so haven't actually been able to tell that yet, but seeing Ads is starting to a cup, string, uh, string a couple of kills together, which is good. If he starts to get back into the zone a bit, then we can maybe see this scoreboard back a little bit. But as I say, that neutral bullet now, three caps being held, and they're going to start scoring uh, way quicker. Seduce with the camo, leading his, uh, coming second on his team at least with 17 kills. But he's going to be very sneaky there with the back smack, playing this perfectly. Sometimes with that camo, you just need to know when to hold your shot, get into position so you can go for the back smack and then try and tee up a double or a triple off that. Exactly right, and that's what he's doing right now, contesting that B hill, suppressing the players, trying to be as sneaky as possible. The camo does run out, but he's on a killing spree once again. Seduce just going absolutely massive, almost on that 20 bomb and moving through the map here. BBR still putting points on the board. I mean, they're really starting to catch up here. Uh, neutral Bullet better watch out um, because... You know, the game is just not to get over yet, Hoots. Yeah, no, although Neutral Bullet, they're only about 40 points off, so and, and now, now holding three positions, you know, that score is going to start ratcheting up pretty quickly, and that's when you do start to panic when you're on the other team and you see that those points are just piling up, and if you're on respawn, you start to freak out, and that's when you start to lose your head. Mad rushes start, but you're not really playing your life as smart as you should be. Um, but it looks like here that this score is going to keep ticking up. Neutral Bullet only about 10 points off now, and... I'm going to go out on a limb and say I think this is going to be a win for Neutral Bullet. I think you could be right, and poor old Dad's uh, still asleep at the wheel, but he'll come back. A Halo veteran like himself, he'll just brush off this game and move on to the next one, and I think that's what we'll be looking out for in Game 2. Yeah, absolutely. So pr pretty clean win there from Neutral Bullet, as we, as we did mention. It was the slaying there that probably wasn't as strong as it should have been for them, um, so Ads is really going to have to try and figure out how he can get back in. Uh, you know, we move to a Slayer game next as well, so um, that's all that matters. It's, it's purely the kill uh, when we're doing a Slayer game, so Ads has really got to start to work with his team a little bit better to try and get yeah. back in it. I have to jump in here, guys, because, uh, you know, I was shouting out Ads for uh, the arthritis joke, but it turns out he might have actually had it. So, uh, look, if that's, if that's a real condition, I apologize, mate, but no, you called it best, Justin, with, uh, you know, a little bit of a sleep at the wheel as we go through that scoreboard. 3 and 22. Look, not a way that you want to start, but uh, Justin, I think I might just give him a pass and call it a warm-up. Yeah, it's just a warm-up. First, first, first game on stream. He's maybe a little bit nervous even still after all these years. But looking at Neutral Bullet there, so Juice and Barcode both dropping those 20 bombs, going absolutely huge for their team. And Madzi with a double-digit assist 
just putting in so much damage over the map. Having a look at the accuracy, I mean, Ads, you know, struggling to get kills, but his accuracy, top of the scoreboard, which is a surprising stat line to see, but we'll have to see how that translates over to the damage Dell. And look at that, barcode with 5,600 damage hoots, absolutely massive. Yeah, and, and Ads unfortunately eating a lot of that as we move into some of the highlights. But, but one other thing that was interesting to note there was Ads' shots fired was actually only in around the 300s, which was, Pretty low, actually, um, for, for a, a game. I guess you know when you're spending so much time on respawn, it's it's hard to be shooting your weapon as much. But look, it, it was just it, map control really is pivotal to these like, stronghold game types, and 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 we saw there that um, Nutri Bullet just had that in spades. They seem to control the uh, the power ups for most of the time. I think I only saw a camo in the hands of PBR maybe once. Um, sniper in the hands of Seduce a lot. And um, as we spoke about before, with both him and Barco putting up 20 bombs, um, it's going to be pretty easy for them to secure the win. Yeah, when when you're down and uh, down and out like uh, BBR was in that game, you can't afford to let those power-ups go uncontested. You got to put up a fight. You got to be there, get those burns, and the sniper rifle just such a monstrous weapon that can turn around a game in an instant and we didn't see BBR get much action with that one though. I don't think there was any real surprises though from what we knew of the neutral bullet, bullet squad right and uh, not to say that this was a, a throw together squad from BBR but let's say I don't think that they're exactly practiced together um, and neutral bullet as we know uh, we think that they're going to be one of the biggest teams in Oz and I think that's something that we can talk about a little bit I mean these guys are Relatively speaking, when considering we've got players in here from 17 years ago, relatively speaking, they're uh, pretty new on the block and they've been really crushing ever since they've come on board. And, you know, that 250 to 78 scoreline against some of the greatest, in Oz anyway, kind of shows that. And it's exciting for them with Raleigh only a, a month or so away. And, and, you know, here in Australia, the borders are now open and people can start traveling again. So they're able to get over there um, and, and compete on the world stage, which is fantastic. Um, as we said before, Josh, we're moving into this second game now with Slayer on uh, streets and, and you know, Ads is really going to want to be able to, to, I guess, uh, rectify some of the mistakes made in that first game. Because if you're putting in a performance like that in Slayer, then your team's going to be in a lot of trouble. But um, it's going to be interesting to see how, how teams play this map because it's, it's you know not symmetrical at all. So it's a lot harder to set up. I think we're going to see a lot more free-flowing free -flowing gameplay. Yeah, and I think that, you know, Slayer gives these players an opportunity to really show some more of that individual skill. Now, I think that it's often downplayed just how much team coordination is still required for uh, a Slayer match. Obviously, you need to get control of those power weapons, power-ups that may be on the map, but, you know, there's obviously a level of coordination that isn't quite as required, say, uh, on Strongholds or similar. But look, as we move to Streets, Justin, do you think that there are any takeaways from that previous match that can kind of allude to what we should see from this and, and are there any expectations that you're placing on these players and what they might want to do going into it? I think it's pretty clear that Nutribullet uh, came to play today. They've been preparing long before the surprise announcement that Halo Infinite was coming out early. So you know, it's not really a surprise that those guys are performing so well. But all those players on BBR, they're all monsters in their own right. And give them some time to warm up, bust off the rust, put some ointment on that arthritis hands, and they'll be back in it. So I wouldn't count out BBR just yet. I, I, I totally think so as well. And even if they are beaten, they've still got that lower bracket run. But, you know, under the water hoots, we know that there's some sharks to be found in that lower bracket. Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's going to be interesting to see which ones of them can come up and then and disrupt the top order. Um, that's what's great about this being the first tournament so soon after the games come out. We don't really know which teams that this game might actually favour. So teams who might have struggled in previous entries, they find infinite. There's just something about it that clicks for them. I mean, we saw it with through Halo 3 with uh, Prey and Immunity, that all of a sudden they were just these Halo 3 warriors that no one really had heard about and came out of nowhere and then dominated the scene for, for a long period of time. The th interesting thing that we should probably touch on, I think, Josh, is that for those who might be a bit new to Halo, is the way the game plays and the reliance on teamwork compared to a lot of other shooters. With a longer time to kill, it's often that you need two or three people um, aiming aiming onto to a player to take them down quicker. Um, and so that's going to be really interesting to see as well as we go through this game. Um, which teams can get those team BRs and, and two-on-one situations throughout the map. I totally agree with you, mate. And, you know, there are some new viewers here, new people to Halo that may not have seen this before. And, you know, welcome in. We uh, we totally encourage you guys getting involved in the broadcast. But for now, we are into the second game, map number two, Neutral Bullet versus BBR. It's Streets Slayer, Justin, take away.
Yeah, and we're starting it off with Brattles. I did see him get a cheeky little triple kill in the previous game. So he's been performing pretty well, managing to find himself one right away, putting some shots across map. And one thing I do like about streets is there's just so many interesting sight lines that you can get. And uh, it does look like the players are taking a little bit of a pause, maybe a break in their communication there, trying to figure things out. Um, but there are some players dropping out. I'm, I'm guessing Nutribullet's thinking they only need... Uh, two players on the other team to win this one. <laughs> he, we might be uh, seeing a, a, a technical pause here as these guys sort out their lobby. Look, guys, it is the nature of online gameplay. As good as Halo Infinite is, it happens with all games. Uh, so we'll be seeing a remake of the lobby, I am sure. Um, but we'll get into that in just a moment, I would assume. Look, I think we should continue the conversation that we were having before Hoots while we've got the time because it is really relevant. We've talked about just how accessible Halo Infinite is and is going to be. We've got competitive cross-platform play. You can come in, play in a HCS open event. You can play in any HCS event, in fact. You can be on mouse and keyboard or on controller. You can access it. So there are people jumping ship, and I think that that is something special. But look, let's touch on that, but also just the differences that you'll find with Halo Esports. I, I, I'd probably invite you Hoots, to expand on that a little bit. Oh, well, I don't know if I can really speak from experience. I think the best I've ever had was a couple of second placings at, at local Second, I think my best placing was like 30th at yeah. Oz Halo 09. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm not going to speak about that so much. Um, but, uh, but yeah, look, uh, it, the thing with Halo always has been, as I said before, it's that team aspect. And so other shooters that, you know, we don't need to name specific ones, but with a lower time to kill, you find that one player can just go through and carry a team to a win. And that just can't really happen in Halo. Yes, individual players can catch fire and, and assist their team in winning. But if you've got uh, just one superstar in a team of, of, of you know, lesser players, um, then you're just not going to be able to compete at the highest level. So that communication, knowing the map, knowing the strengths and weaknesses of each other, that's something that um, some of these new teams will, might take a little bit of time to, to, to get used to, but it shouldn't be disheartening. So, And I think the great thing that we've seen just on the ANZ Halo community Discord is so many new players coming in interested in competing, and that's just great for the scene. And so you know, we're, we're obviously a small country, but Halo's always had a really strong um, place in the in the gaming community here in Australia and so to see more people coming in is just fantastic and um, I just urge everyone to, to you know stick with it um, because it, it's a game that's so rewarding in the long run when your team's really starting to gel and function properly. We're talking about the meta of like how a Halo works and how it plays as a competitive shooter. Justin let's let's branch into something that is I'm sure going to get the chat wound up is just this talk about how we've got BB, uh, BR starts uh, in Halo Infinite once again. Now, I'm biased to that. Obviously, I spent a lot of my time in, in H3 and H2, but uh, I really like the BR starts, but there was actually a lot of loud voices out there going back to the pistol starts that we saw in uh, Halo 5. What's your take on the sidekick versus the BR? Uh, well, if we're talking about the sidekick, I'm glad that we have the BR start, particularly because I struggle with the sidekick. I'm absolutely shocking with it. But I think more so they're referring to uh, pistol starts in Halo 5. The Magnum, I think, was just one of the best additions to the sandbox of um, the Halo franchise. Such a great gun, um, really competitive, but, you know, easy to use too. You know, that five-shot kill, and for a lot of new players that are trying to learn the game, they could just count out their shots, you know, one, two, three, four, five, and made it really easy to call out to your teammates as well. And the battle rifle has that too, but, I mean, it's all about that battle rifle, really, isn't it? It's just the classic iconic weapon. I'm, I'm glad that it's back as much as I love the Magnum in Halo 5. What's your take on this, Hoots? And do you have any thoughts on the competitive settings at large? It's, it's BR or bust, baby. It, it's always <laughs> the BR. Um, I, I just... Uh, there's something about this one in particular, the sound of it, it just packs a real punch. Um, it's just great fun to use. So I'm always BR. The competitive settings in general, I think are fantastic. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed, you know, the, the way Oddball now working through rounds, I think is a really interesting change on things compared to some of the older entries um, where initially you could build this insurmountable lead that was just deflating for other teams to try and come back with. But by breaking it down in rounds and resetting now, we really just create this, okay, you know, we might have gotten wiped in that first in that first round, but we can reset and it's a whole new game. Um, so that's something that I really like seeing. I think that the game just seems to be playing really well across all the maps, which is great. 
Yeah, I think so as well. And, you know, we talked about that time to kill and whatever, and we're talking about these competitive settings. Again, there were a lot of, uh, at least in, in circles that I'm in, hesitancy. And I, to be honest, I think this really comes from some of the old guard about the fact that, you know, when Halo Infinite came out, you've still got your sprint. You've still got these these uh, these power-ups, this equipment that you can use. Um, after playing it and grinding it for many hours this week, I think it plays perfectly fine. I think it really adds a new element. And we always had that, you talked about time to kill earlier, that kind of difference between Halo and other shooters. And I think that, that this equipment really helps, I guess, overcome the longer time to kill and makes you think in different ways. Take, for example, um, you know, uh, the map behemoth. Now, we saw uh, you often see snipers up in the towers that are on either side of that map. I've seen some really cool plays with the grapple where people, I saw one yesterday, in fact, it might have been in competition, where they used the grapple, aimed at the top of the tower, launched themselves higher than that, and they were able to get shots down on the player that was kind of doing the dosi do around the base of the tower. And that player didn't even know where the hell they were being shot from. And it's those kind of plays that I think are going to be really, really cool. Or like, for example, using the repulsor to uh, to get yourself, uh, you know, get a launch. So you get up and get in those higher places. Those kinds of plays and then linking them to multi-kills, I think are going to be something very, very special. And Justin, like, uh, we've already seen some highlight reels and stuff. Like, surely, what, what do you think of that? And what kind of highlights are you hoping to see from that? Yeah, you touched on the repulsor. That's probably my favorite addition to the sandbox. It's a very interesting piece of equipment you you talked about how you can use it to move around the map but something that I've been doing personally is using it to launch back some of those nades I mean you know if you call out a player and it's like you know player t2 one shot instantly the your teammates turn around and start throwing nades and having that repulsor you just send them straight back baby and you need to watch out for them it's kind of like a pseudo insta explode yeah, indeed. Now, I, I'm really, really keen to see how this one's going to play out. I do apologize for those waiting at home. We should be starting in just a sec. We're having a problem getting the uh, the lobby together with players at home. That is one thing that we should say, despite all odds. You know, obviously, you've got the global pandemic happening as well. We're all at, uh, you know, playing from home and, and casting, not from the studio, but we've been able to make it work. So, you know, a shout out to everyone involved and obviously, our guys, the ESL producers and the TV team behind the scenes for getting it all together. But it looks like we're about ready to get underway. Thank you everyone at home for your patience. We're hopefully getting game two underway here. Now Slayer on streets. It's going to be BBR up against Neutral Bullet. Uh, and look, uh, Hoots, I'll throw it to you. I think we've finally got this game underway. Round two, let's let's give it a go. <laughs> uh, so, so look, kicking off at the start, it's going to be interesting to see this how, how we go for these rockets at the start. I believe they have been picked up. I'm not sure who's got them, but being out in the open, it is a real mad dash. And you do find that people at the beginning of the game are obviously trying to feel each other out, feel the other team out before making a commitment to go for those rockets. Um, and as we can see, they're in the hands of none other than Seduce, as you'd come to expect. So he's going to patrol with these rockets. Great hit there. You, you do need to be careful with these rockets um, because we, they obviously do have a lot of splash damage with them. Um, in fact, I found more than most other Halo games that we've had. Um, so you really need to be careful when you're using them like that. But I think we might, unfortunately, I think have another issue with the disconnect. Getting to the bottom of that. And these tape players, look, hey, look, they're getting some uh, practice shots in while we wait. I don't really um, know what's the problem yet. I'm sure we'll get an update from the admin in just a second, but we're still confirming what the problem is. Um, so I'm sure we'll be seeing a restart in just a second. But um, yeah, I mean, we will eventually be getting through it, guys. I think we just go back and, and continue talking about what we were saying before about the differences with Halo. I mean, you've got a couple of weapons here. You've got the Bulldog in the hands of Madzi, that bulldog in competitive, obviously a big move as well. I saw some people ups upset with the, the close range damage. I actually think it's pretty well balanced too. Yeah, I don't mind it. It's, it's not as powerful as the original shotties in some of the other games, but I, I don't think it's it's that much different. Look, going back as well to, to Halo and comparing to some of the other games, I think Halo's always had this level of, of verticality that most other shooters don't have, and it's one of the reasons it is just so different. Um, you know, having these multi-leveled maps, and then the adding of equipment just really changes that up even more. And so we spoke about the equipment then, the repulsor, and how you can use that to launch yourself up to a, an area that you typically couldn't. The grapple shot's obvious um, in terms of what that does for you to get around. 
but but when they're used properly, as you said before, being able to chain those multi kills together, those montage moments we always used to talk about um, back in the day, I think we're just going to see some incredible footage coming through in the next. You know, we're only five days into the game being out, so I think we're going to see some incredible stuff um, over the years that that we're playing this game. So I just got an, I got a uh, the the admins and the TV team in my ear. What was going on was there was one player that was DC'd, uh, and then because of the tournament rules we were playing on, there's now a second player that either DC'd or left the game. So we're just trying to determine now what's going on uh, next. Uh, this is the joys of uh, playing online. Unfortunately, folks, it's not always perfect. Uh, we can always blame that uh, that Australian internet, oh. but uh, at the moment, yeah, all players are uh, out now from uh, from BBR, I believe. So we should be getting this underway in just a second. We're waiting for the admins to confirm if the game is going to be restarted or if it's a forfeit. So I'm not going to <coughs> actually. I will. I'm going to um, introduce some conjecture, but uh, with the caveat that it is. Uh, just uh, me having a guess. So again, I'll, I'll rehash what had happened. Um, after the t first 10 seconds, I believe, someone's going to clarify for me soon, guys, so take this with a grain of salt. After the first 10 seconds, if there is one DC, I think they play on, there might have been some confusion about whether the team plays on or not, and that has led to a second player disconnecting or leaving the game, to be confirmed. Once that happens, that may count as a forfeit, but we're waiting for the updates from the admins. So again, appreciate the patience. Our admins are going through it. Quite a debacle, but um, look, uh, I think we'll uh, we'll get our update very soon. I mean, we could we could play the cynical side, Justin, and say, look, the result's going to be much the same, right? But I think that might be a bit unfair <laughs> to the guys on BBR. I think it would be, but Josh, I've just been distracted by this map, Streets is just so beautiful with all those neon lights and, you know, um, the different corridors and the different little nooks and crannies. And it's just this map that's alive, the Carafeteria and the, the arcade, really cool looking maps. And I'm, I'm loving the additions that uh, Halo Infinite has brought to the sandbox. And um, each map just feels alive and I've been really enjoying them. Yeah, I mean, so have I and so have all of the players. Look, we do apologise for the d for the delay, guys. Um, we are going to get the real uh, the lobby remade, but we're waiting on the final call from the admins of what's going on. However, we do have something that we can play for you. A little bit of a, I, I think it's a pretty cool video that was chucked together. We've got some of the local ANZ pros talking about their reactions to the release of Halo Infinite and the HCS roadmaps. Let's take a look at that now. On behalf of the entire Halo team, it's my honor and privilege to announce that your Spartan journey begins today. Right now, you can download and start playing Season 1 of Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer beta on Xbox One, Series S, X, and PC. This is an amazing moment for our team to get to celebrate this as we finally get to release the game and play with you online. See you online, Spartans. Initially, I was a doubter. I have to admit, so for the longest time when Seduce first came to me and he's like, dude, I think it's going to drop early. I'm like, don't say that, man. I don't want to get disappointed when it doesn't. Certain things started to make me raise an eyebrow like, okay, well, well that's kind of odd. I didn't like believe it because I've just been waiting for this game to come out for so long now. So I'm just, I'm like, you know what, stuff it, I'll wait till December 8. But I guess it kind of did catch us off guard, but it is a good thing that it came out early, gives us more time to practice. If you can imagine like this chalkboard at a detective's office and like little thumbtacks going through and we're like red textile drawing all the dots together, that was us pretty much for like a week. We ended up sorting our sleep schedules. So we like slept eight hours and then woke up at 4 a.m. and then we grinded the entire day. There started to be dots that started to appear in the sky. You start you know, draw the lines between them. It's a lot better way to get the ball rolling than a surprise release. I think it was, it was really well done. When me and my friends saw the leaks, we... We were kind of skeptical. I was kind of skeptical at first a bit, but then there was like dots that were connecting to another dots and all that stuff. But it was it was a massive surprise. I was really excited and really happy to see that he, um, 
it actually did come out. And then to then release this roadmap of like a get guaranteed years set of dates and prize pool, just like support for the ANZ region that we've been missing for so long. I think the roadmap's awesome, to be honest. I've never seen something so organized. Gives us actually definitely a lot more clarity around planning things as well, which is good, so. It's super exciting to see Halo's, like especially ANZ getting some love tournament structure wise. There's going to be like a pro league. There's going to be lots of events. There looks like there's a lot of events, which is always a good thing. Even like weekly comps for our region. That also looks pretty awesome. I love how they're doing this, how they're, how they're going full force for um, for esports for Halo. 343 really did a good job with the team skins and just all of that sort of esports promotions in the game. The fact that the game's free to play is awesome. So it gives like literally anyone access to the multiplayer version of the game, which means the barrier to entry into competing is basically non-existent all you need is an xbox or a pc now it's definitely fun to be playing with the boys you know on a fresh experience and that announcement trailer got me hyped i was just all giddy and excited super excited to to see how it all pans out and i can't wait for those major tournaments in uh in america as well i can't can't wait just to, to see what's in store And we are back. Sorry about that, guys, as we're getting this lobby underway, this game. Uh, we have got an admin update, but uh, look, I don't want to pressure the teams, guys. So uh, let's wait to see what comes of that. We're seeing if there will be a rematch or a remake of that uh, that previous game. Uh, if you are just tuning in, Neutral Bullet versus BBR, we're at the semi-finals here at the HCS AMZ Open number one. It is a best of three, so this map is critical. If there does, uh, or if there is a case where it's going to be either a disqualification or a forfeit from BBR, that will see Neutral Bullet go through to the winner's bracket final. Boots. We were making some jokes about it. I think it's probably the expected uh, outcome, probably the way it was looking anyway. Oh, be a bit sp spare a thought for ads after that first game. I think he wanted a chance for some redemption. So, um, yeah, as you said, we'll see if we do go ahead. Um, you, know, you would say on previous form that Neutral Bullet would definitely be the favourites to, to go through in this second game. Um, but ads has been around for a while. He's a competitor, and I reckon he'd be itching to get back and, uh, and try and make amends for that performance in game one. I think he would be. I mean, he's a competitor at heart. It's why 17 years later, after starting competitive Halo, that he's back in it, right? And, you know, Dustin, you know, no one wants to be forfeited or, or pushed out of a tournament. Doesn't matter how bad you're performing, right? No, absolutely not. And maybe a little bit of comeback. I remember Ads was commentating over my gameplay and I was having a poor performance because I'm trash, as everyone knows. And uh, maybe a little bit of comeback. Um, um, on ads there, but I'm sure he's hungry to get back in it. And, you know, this is still only the first cup. There will be more. And BBR, they'll be back, Josh. And a competitor like ads, that will just fire him up even more. And I wouldn't be surprised when he comes back. He'll be the top scorer on his squad. I'm hearing the latest from the Halo bun Bunker, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it looks like, by the rules of the law, we would normally see a forfeit uh, for BBR. However... Nutrable have agreed to replay that map. Aren't they good sports? Fantastic. We love to see that. So we will be seeing a rematch of that previous map. Hopefully we can get it running and underway and there's no confusion about in or out of the game. So uh, by the rule book, that would have been the place, but both teams have agreed to uh, replaying. So that's fantastic. Good sportsmanship all around and we'll be seeing that map underway in just a second. Map number two, as we said, it's really, really important given it is a best of three. Uh, while we wait for that to be started, I'll talk about that roadmap in just a second because, you know, if you missed the beginning of the show, there is a whole lot to talk about with Halo Infinite and the competitive uh, roadmap ahead of us. I mean, we've touched on some of it. We know the launch was this week. We're already into event number one. And then, of course, the first major of the roadmap, the kickoff major in Raleigh, 17th to the 19th of December. Hoots, that's going to be a big one. And, you know, despite all of the craziness in the world right now, having that major, that massive LAN event for global participation is really something big. Yeah, maybe it's just us being in Australia where we've been locked out from the rest of the world for the last two years. But it's just insane to think that in a month, we'll have people from our community here flying over for that tournament. Um, you know, if we went back a month or two here, that would have seemed like an absolute pipe dream. So um, I can't wait to watch it. 
And the Super Finals, you know, the HCS Online Supers, excuse me, we can't downplay those. We focused on the LAN earlier, Justin, but that is basically, it's a, it's a regional all of its own just played online. A massive event coming up in March. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, all of our players, no strangers to playing online. They've been doing it for a really long time, so no excuses there. But it does look like we're going to be jumping into the gameplay here on boards with Ads is Mads. Let's see if he can uh, make a comeback from his previous performance suits. Yeah, absolutely. We, we've switched over to Brattles now and, and just controlling down in this rock area with a nice double. Um, unfortunately taken down, but a, a, an early start, nice and even, which is what we what we like to see. Um, and we have Neutral Bullet just with a slight lead, but it's going to be interesting to see as these teams set up with map control, um, with Rockets here in Barcode's hands, what he can do to try and get this setup set. Adds is about to become the victim there of a big blast. And as I said before, that splash damage with the Rockets for the big double, going for the triple on Dante, unfortunately double team and taken down. Yeah, unfortunate for him, gets a two to one, then gets taken down himself. Uh, scoreline pretty even, but it is early days. Nice little double kill for Seduce there. Trying to find some more, more plays. He's getting called out and the rain of grenades coming in, but Seduce so sneaky. And with that bulldog, woof, woof, watch out. Hiding in the plant areas here. Finds himself, Brattles backs him off, but Brattles not backing down. The team shots come in for that cleanup. Now with Dante flashing shields, trying to get some angles for his team here. Moving through the map, and that's it's something I really like about this map, Hoots, is that there's so many different sight lines, so many different nook and, nooks and crannies that the players can utilize. Yeah, it, it, in hindsight, it doesn't really lend itself to a setup type game. It, it, it is more, as you said, that that large level of movement, getting around and, and flanking with your teammates, you know, choosing different lanes because there are so many different options to get around. Um, really, really great to see, though, that, that BBR are holding their own at the start here, 12 13, nice and close, which is what we want. Um, but, but on board with, with Dante now, uh, he's, he's three kills, four deaths, so, so not doing too badly, but we're moving over to Seduce. Um, we saw him stay alive there before with grenades just flying in everywhere. And just that awareness, I think, Justin, to be able to dodge them left, right, and center using, using your headphones and your sound to, to try and avoid those blasts and staying alive just makes such a massive difference. Absolutely, we do see that Spanker rocket the pop. Uh, Bra trade is there dying straight away so players gonna have to scoop it up there goes the trade should still be one more rocket to play with there and we're gonna see Madzi get it he shoots it off and just cops a grenade to the face and he goes down into the respawn screen now Dante finds himself barcode awesome team shooting coming in here BBR coming in hot fresh mag into the battle rifle finds himself Madzi trying to get him get him there hoots but no uh Madzi getting the better of him in that situation the ads redemption story begins <laughs> five, you know, five kills on the board couple of assists so so doing well to keep his team in it and we've got bbr here in the one kill lead this game's just been close the whole way through i don't think we've really had more than a two kill gap um and so brattles here who we've jumped onto now leading the way with 10 kills so he's really doing a fantastic job staying alive and out by our in barcode there which was fantastic unfortunately taken down but he's you know with a positive five currently he's leading the way for his team yeah, it looks like uh, all the delays was just BBR going into Octagon and uh, warming up ads because both ads and Brattles are really hot right now, keeping BBR in it. And are we going to see uh, a bit of buyer's regret from Nutribullet deciding to let them play out this game? Because BR, it looks like they've woken up and they're here to play Hoots. Oh, well, fantastic that they agreed to go for the rematch as well. I think it would be the easy option to take the take the technicality and the default win. But, but to, to play it out, it's great sportsmanship. And, and seeing that at the very start of these tournaments is something that's great to see. Um, back on with Brattles, he's still leading the way with 12 now. Um, and he's just been doing a great way. He's been holding this stair and pillars area and the palms quite a bit. So he's found an area that he feels comfortable in, duking it out with barcode. But look at the way he moves through these pillars here. Stays alive, backs out, gets shots in, calls his teammates to come through. Um, and this is clearly his spot where he's most happy staying. Yeah, Brattles, happy place on the stairs there. And now on board with Pratt. He's got that super nice BR skin. They're trying to contest the Rockets here. It does look like both players go down, so it's on the ground, ready to be picked up. One more Rocket to play with, and it looks like we have Brattles here putting some shots in. Barco getting the better of him. Rocket's still just sitting there, ready to be scooped up. And when you have a game that's this close, only three kills the difference, that Rocket, that one Rocket could lead into a collapse that wins a team a game. And we are going to see uh, Evil from BBR with that. Tries to get Seduce. Easy cleanup for him, though. Fantastic stuff from him. S slams a fresh mag into his battle rifle. 
and really just being cautious and checking all of those angles. Great stuff from BBR. It's like they're a completely different team, Hoots. Yeah, Neutral Bullet have managed to turn the corner, though, with a, with a four-kill lead. So they've managed to claw their way back. I'm not exactly sure what they've, what's changed or anything like that. We saw the power weapons in the hands of BBR before. But we're jumping on with Seduce. Um, holding this area that we saw Brattles making his own not too long ago, and we can see most of BBR stuck in that back tram area. So they're just going to try and collapse in on them, pinch them. See, Prades is just moving in on the side there, but Seduce is going to duck around this alley and try and get a flank on. Uh, and they're actually pulling out to quite a large lead now. So BBR were able to hang, but you just see just the collapse happening here um, as Nutribullet move in and then start to get these last few kills as they're racing now towards the final. Just eight more kills to go. Yeah, that scoreline is starting to bloat out a little bit. Eight kills, the difference with uh, in favour of Nutribullet. Not really a surprise for us, but BBR not going down without a fight. Everyone performing to the top of their ability right now. We're on board with Madzi, who's desperately trying to slay alive. Hasn't got many bullets in his BR. Desperate reload there, trying to find that player and really trying to sniff him out. There's Evil. Will he be able to connect? He's uh, got that new addition of the sandbox there. Puts in a couple of defensive shots there. Easy cleanup for Madzi there. With a nice little slide down the stairs. And that rocket launcher is going to be popping. With only one kill to go, I would say that Nutribullet has this one in the bag. One last spank to send us off, Madzi. Where's that last player? And he's going to send it right up just to the Hail Mary rocket. It connects. That splash damage is always going to be no match for us, Barton, there. And Great finish. They, they really did pull away there, um, which, was, which was quite interesting. We didn't expect that. The match was close. BBR actually took a two or three kill lead at the beginning um, and managed to hold that for, for most of the game, but it was one of those blink and you miss it moments. And then all of a sudden, bang, neutral border in front, end up getting away to, to quite a comfortable win in the end. Dan, I'm glad we were able to eventually play that game because uh, it was quite interesting in the Josh, end. Josh, I think your microphone's uh, off, so I'll, I'll just keep going. But um, but yeah, look, as, as we said, it's a, it, it, that was a match where you know, we now see uh, Nutribullet take away the series, um, move through, and as, as we do take a look at these stats here, look, Ads, he, he managed to bring himself back into the game a little bit there, um, and, and from Dante on the on the BBR side, a lot of assists, but um, when you've got people like Barco going with a positive six, it's just really hard to, to put a stop there to the team. Um, and, and just even the shots fired, looking at those stats there as well, just across the board pretty much, uh, I, uh, way more on the neutral bullet. I think I, need a, uh, I think I need more rehearsals with the ventriloquism <laughs> act there. Uh, but the, thank you, Hoots. Uh, I would just wanted to continue on with what you were saying, calling out the damages dealt there as well, and Barcode was a monster. But what I was saying that you couldn't hear was the fact that I'm glad that we saw that match, that map, because uh, it ended up being really interesting. And as you were saying, Hoots, uh, it was very, very close. I saw there it was just neck and neck. And also, Justin, you know, we were calling out the fact prior to this game, the Slayer can really change things up. And it was 26-26 there for a little bit, I saw. At least the, the kills were one or two apart at one stage before it did blow out at the end for the blue team of Nutribullet. Like, is that kind of what we expected? I mean, the end result kind of was, but what were your thoughts through the game? Well, the old cliche with Slayer games is it doesn't really start until that halfway mark. And, you know, it was a little bit delayed, but that's kind of where things started heating up with Nutribullet. And they went, okay, boys, that's enough of the show for a stream and just put on the NOS and started racking up those kills. And it wasn't much that BBR could do about it. But you know what? If, if this was a, a longer series with BBRs, you know, breaking off some of that rust, might have been able to uh, bring things back a little bit, but no, Nutribullet just too strong in the end. Yeah, and that final spanker at the end for that kill, we ended up obviously the 50 to 38 scoreline. Looking back, the stronghold, if you missed it, 250 to 78, which will see Nutribullet going through to the, uh, the winner's bracket final. We didn't obviously get that CTF on Bazaar. It wasn't needed. Uh, look, I, I think that uh, it would have been quite an upset if Team Pensioners, BBR, was going to be able to make it through. Alas, they are knocked down into the lower bracket, Neutral Bullet going through. Um, winner's bracket final, did you kind of expect uh, Neutral Bullet to be there, Justin? I, yes, yes. I had full, full, full yes. confidence in, in, my, <laughs> in my boys. I mean, talking to them all the time the last couple of years, and they are just so hungry. They are starving, though. You know, in the desert, and there was the Oasis, Halo Infinite, and they just ran straight for it. So they've been prepared, so no surprise that they are going for blood on this first day. Yeah, I mean, indeed they are. They want to obviously show that they are the number one in the region. 
uh, and it wouldn't surprise me if they do go the whole way. We talked about the fact that uh, we here on the grapevine, they're signed up to a, a pretty major team here in the ANZ region. So I'm keen to see that announcement when it does come. Otherwise, you know, we can uh, have, a, a, I guess, a, a renewed meaning for the for the, for the the name Nutribullet, but something tells me that they won't be sticking to it. Um, I think they got that because they were a pretty uh, intense blend of characters there, Hoots. But um, I, am, I am really keen to see how far they go. This uh, tournament has been eventful so far. We'll be showing you guys more about it. This is just the beginning of the day. We're going to have quite a few matches ahead of us yet. But um, throughout that game, nothing really too much of uh, to call out, I would say. I mean, control of that Rockets ended up being pretty vital. And I think that around halfway, which Justin, as you were saying, is kind of that critical point of a Slayer, we saw control of that really making a, a, a big difference. And the Rockets, obviously, were the final plays at the end. Hoots. Was there anything that you would have liked to have seen a little bit more from either team? I, I, I will start by saying that BBR, they were able to get ads to wake up, but then it seems evil fell asleep. They couldn't just get everyone firing on all cylinders at once, Hoots. I mean, look, they were in both games, they were in it to a point. Seven, in that Strongholds game, eight, they broke out to a nine, big lead at the very ten. start. Um, and then after that, it was, it was just a case of they got blown away. And same in that Slayer. It was the same thing where they were, you know, in that 25, 26 apiece, they took a little bit of a lead and just fell away, unfortunately. I just want to quickly go back, Josh. I don't think you paid yourself enough credit for that neutral bullet pun. That was um, that was fantastic. <laughs> I was hoping you might have liked that one. <laughs> but um, yeah, what we're going to be waiting on is getting a, an interview with uh, one of our friends from neutral bullet in just a moment. Before we get there, there is another way that uh, people playing at home can get involved. There's another tournament that's going to be running, which you can check out. The Game Pass has PC games. Open series featuring Halo Infinite registrations open now. Head over to smash.gg forward slash Xbox. This is no small thing, guys. You can win an all expense paid trip to HCS Rally, the first major of the roadmap. Flights, hotels, and a team pass, all thanks to Game Pass, has PC games. You know, that's a pretty direct name. What? Yeah, I feel like the marketing guy was like, all right, how, what, what do we call this program? How do we let people know that Game Pass is for PC as well? And I'll tell you what, I got it. Game Pass has PC games. Well, there you go. It's, it's on the nose, but I think it gets the message across, Oots. Yeah, it does. It does. Actually, I follow the Game Pass account on Twitter, actually, and the, the guys who post on that are hilarious. Um, the banter they have with, with people is, is pretty good. But, yeah, trip paid fully to Raleigh, hotels, a com, um, Team Pass. Yeah, if I was any decent at all, I'd sign up, but... Justin, we were saying that we have to get the, the 1v1 going. Now, look, I, I'm happy to call a truce. Let's just team up. I'll, we'll pick up Hoots as the cheerleader, and uh, we'll, we'll throw a squad together. Let's try and take that ourselves. Well, Josh, I got a strong backbone, but I don't think it's strong enough to carry you to victory, unfortunately. <laughs> well, I can't wait to see what's going to happen with that one, guys. But a, truly, a shout-out to you guys. Make sure you get on it. Smash.gg forward slash Xbox. Check it out. Uh, for now, we do have an interview ready to rock and roll. It is with the Wonder Kid. I've got a lot of gas behind him. Let's chat to Barcode. Now, Barcode, we're coming in here with you, buddy. Uh, look, stellar performance to kick things off there. There was a little bit of a rough and tumble getting the game underway. But look, it's the first game on broadcast. You guys are already quite a way through the tournament. Tell me, first of all, how are you feeling? And, you know, first tournament with Halo Infinite, what are your thoughts? Um, the game's amazing, honestly. I'm actually really enjoying it with the boys. The grind's been insane. Um, we've been playing this whole week. Um, and how as to how we're feeling, like, we're feeling pretty confident, especially with, like, our scrims lately, going over stuff. Like, we're ready to play. Fucker, we, we were saying on stream that it was great to see you guys not take that technicality and, and the win because of the disconnections. Was it ever a discussion at all amongst you guys of, of taking that, that forfeit or was it always a Absolutely case that you were going to play that second game? Absolutely not. Like, we <clears throat> we want to play the game, you know. We'd rather win it by winning it rather than just taking the disqualification. Um, and, yeah. Love to see it. Uh, yeah. Justin? Yeah, barcode. Now, it's been a long time since we first met at a Halo Australia land in Melbourne. You were quite a young man. I think you even needed a permission slip from mum and dad. How's your mentality changed from when you were such a young man then, you know, you know, just a little high schooler and now you're an adult and you're going to be looking to the future of Infinite. How's your mindset changed? Um, definitely confidence, you know, like <clears throat> getting around the game and like actually getting that experience has boosted my confidence to like a level where 
I trust in myself to make the right plays. I, I have belief in myself, you know, like as an individual in like terms of skill to keep up with these sorts of players, you know. And uh, yeah, definitely confidence as I've gotten older now. Well, there's only one word people have been describing you as, Barco. That's absolutely cracked. That's what I've seen so far. <laughs> Mate, good luck with the rest of the competition. You're off to the winner's final. I'm sure we'll be seeing you in the grand final as well. Thank you for your time, mate, and good luck with the rest Thanks, of the competition. Thanks, guys. Thanks for, that. For, thanks for that. Awesome. That was Barcode there off Nutra Bullet. And uh, look, I think he's pretty humble, but he, he, he knows he's cracked. But uh, we saw some great gameplay from him, and we're going to be focusing on him a little bit later on, as we'll see the, the winner's bracket final, of course, the grand final later on, if they do make it that far, which I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about. But look, you know, hearing some of your responses there, and Justin, I kind of want to go to you because you were talking about the fact that Barcode, and again, I want to say with keyword here is relatively speaking, Barcode's new on the scene, uh, and yet he's risen right to the top. He's the cream of the crop, and uh, you know, there's a lot of history there that he's made in his short time in competitive Halo. Like, uh, what's your kind of thoughts of him and his team, and, and how they've kind of risen up to where they are now? Well, he's certainly come a long way from a random string of numbers, and it's like, who is this guy? And it's like, I first time I played him, I was con convinced that it was a Smurf account, a Seduced or something like that, and he just really impressed me, and he's just kept getting better and better and better, and now is at the tippity top of the mountain, but he's really only halfway up. Yeah, I can't wait to see what he does, and hopefully we'll see him on the world stage with many other of his uh, ANZ player colleagues here in Halo Infinite. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just series number one. There's plenty of Halo Infinite action here in the HTS ANZ Open 1 still to come. We're going to be back right after this short break. On behalf of the entire Halo team, it's my honor and privilege to announce that your Spartan journey begins today. Right now, you can download and start playing Season 1 of Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer beta on Xbox One, Series S, X, and PC. This is an amazing moment for our team to get to celebrate this as we finally get to release the game and play with you online. See you online, Spartans. Initially, I was a doubter, I have to admit. So for the longest time, when 
So Juice first came to me and he's like, dude, I think it's going to drop early. And I'm like, don't say that, man. I don't want to get disappointed when it doesn't. Certain things started to make me raise an eyebrow like, okay, well, well that's kind of odd. I didn't like believe it because... I've just been waiting for this game to come out for so long now, so I'm just, I'm like, you know what, stuff it, I'll wait till December 8th. But I guess he kind of did catch us off guard, but it is a good thing that he came out early, gives us more time to practice. If you can imagine like this chalkboard at a detective's office and like little thumbtacks going through and we're like red textile drawing all the dots together, that was us pretty much for like a week. We ended up sorting our sleep schedules, so we like slept eight hours and then woke up at 4 a.m. and then we grinded the entire day. There started to be dots that started to appear in the sky. You start to you know, draw the lines between them. It's a better way to get the ball rolling than a surprise release. I think it was it was really well done. When me and my friends saw the leaks, we we were kind of skeptical. I was kind of skeptical at first a bit, but then there was like dots that were connecting to another dots and all that stuff. But it was it was a massive surprise. I was really excited and really happy to see that he, um, it actually did come out. And then to then release this roadmap of like a get guaranteed years set of dates and prize pool, just like support for the ANZ region that we've been missing for so long. I think the roadmap's awesome, to be honest. I've never seen something so organized. Gives us actually definitely a lot more clarity around planning things as well, which is good, so. It's super exciting to see Halo's, like especially ANZ getting some love tournament structure wise. There's going to be like a pro league. There's going to be lots of events. There looks like there's a lot of events, which is always a good thing. Even like weekly comps for our region. That also looks pretty awesome. I love how they're doing this, how they're, how they're going full force for um, for esports for Halo. 343 really did a good job with the team skins and just all of that sort of esports promotions in the game. The fact that the game's free to play is awesome, so it gives like literally anyone access to the multiplayer version of the game, which means the barrier to entry into competing is basically non-existent all you need is an xbox or a pc now it's definitely fun to be playing with the boys you know on a fresh experience and that announcement trailer got me hyped i was just all giddy and excited super excited to to see how it all pans out and i can't wait for those major tournaments in uh in america as well i can't can't wait just to, to see what's in store And we're back here with the ANZ HTS Open number one in Maniac here on the cast along with Hoots in SSJ4. And we've just had our first match go down. It was Neutral Bullet. Probably, I would say, fair to say favourites for the competition. Uh, knockout Team BBR down into the lower bracket. That was a semi-final match. So we're going to be seeing Neutral Bullet go into the uh, winner's bracket final, which we'll touch on in a second. Gentlemen, we've only had one series to go down so far, but we've already had a lot of action take place after that small technical hip hiccup. We've got the upper bracket now in front of us. And Justin, you know, as we talked about, we think it was fairly expected with Neutral Bullet to make it through as well. We also saw Divine Mind with the 2-0 over Carbon. Yeah, this is, this is the match that I think everyone's waiting for. Divine Mind uh, versus Neutral Bullet and really just the cream of the crop uh, two teams here, so that is just going to be a bloodbath between those teams. The rivalry is very, very strong, so I expect to see some Twitter uh, uh, smack talk after the game. Very often you see the winner's bracket final become the grand final, so we will see that. However, there is the lower bracket to get through as well. One of those teams will be knocked down here, and down in the lower bracket you're going to be seeing Carbon versus Idolize and Nuke and Pave versus whoever is going to be the, uh, the loser of that winner's bracket final. So again, we could see a rematch there. I can't wait to see who's going to be knocked down. But uh, look, we've still got a few teams to get through before we get there. And again, a lot of players, both new and old, still in the mix. And this is what I love to see. Something tells me you're going to see a little bit of a hybrid. And that's what we're going to see later on with that Divine Mind and uh, Neutral Bullets uh, competition. Um, Justin, you know, we've, we've obviously seen around the trap these guys scrimming and practicing and 
I think they those two are probably the teams that we're expected to uh, to make it all the way to the grand final, right? Yeah, abso absolutely. I mean, they never stopped playing. They never stopped grinding. And uh, one thing you noticed that they were you know, trying out Halo 5 PC and trying to get used to that new ecosystem. And, you know, they're communicating through Discord and using PC as a platform, which is just that barrier of entry is just gone for all the players. Xbox, PC, it doesn't matter. You can just jump in and play. And it's good to see that existing players just embracing all of that and welcoming uh, new people in also. Yeah, we were talking about this grand final as well, but before we get there, we need to work our way through the lower bracket. So let's talk about our next match. We are going to be seeing Idolize versus Carbon. A couple of big names are going to be in both squads here, now in the lower bracket. This is the match that's really going to count for them. You lose this one and you are li eliminated from this tournament. So it's going to be a big one. We're going to be focusing on Idolize though and taking a look at this squad because again, you know, this matchup I think is going to be a vital one. We've already talked about that one of them are going to be eliminated here, but who's actually going to make it through first a couple of these more, I guess, well-seasoned teams is, is going to be interesting to see. But look, is there any insights here that you can can, can provide us uh, on these players, Justin, around Ingestix, Flex, Rain, Square, and Wrath City? Obviously, Wrath there, Dylan, he's been around for, for a long, long time. I actually first knew of him when he was a big name in Reach. Flex Reigns, he's been smacking me around all over the place in Halo Infinite. Uh, but what can you tell us about these players? Yeah, as you already touched on a, a lot of experience throughout this squad. And I'd say Flex Reigns is probably someone that you want to watch out for. He narrowly missed out on Worlds uh, qualifying in 2018. So I bet he's hungry for some wins. But Square, I think he's a little bit of an underrated player within the scene. Sometimes I see him and I was like, how is this kid not on a top squad? And looks like he formed a top squad and he's making his way through the loser's bracket. Yeah, and we'll see if he can make it all the way. I don't think he's going to, though. There's going to be a challenge. We'll have to wait and see. They are going to be up against Carbon. Uh, so Carbon, obviously, uh, you know, the squad made up of Chef, Grand Last Shadow, Panda a Wolf, and Godzi. Uh, they were listed as our breakout team after yesterday's competition where we had a whole bunch of highlights. And now here they are staring down the barrel of possibly being ejected from this tournament if uh, if we see Idolize get their way. Now, these guys here, uh, we've seen a little bit of their gameplay just through their highlights. But um, again, Justin, like... Through your experience in Halo 5 in the recent competitive scene, I think you called out Pandora as a wolf earlier when we talked about them being a breakout team. Are you looking for anyone in particular to kind of save the squad and keep them in the mix moving forward? I, I do think that Pandora is, you know, he's, he's the foundation of that team. He's just a fundamentally great player that concentrates on what needs to be done in the game, which is a great pairing with someone like Grand Last Shadow. He's such an annoying player to go, go up against. He spends a lot of time in team doubles, so he does a lot of unorthodox things. And in a brand new game, surprising your opponent can be a key to victory. Yeah, indeed it can. You know, we talked about it earlier about all of these different new elements within Halo infinite and uh, I'm sure that we're going to be seeing that a little bit come out in the mix a lot through this game you know talk to me though Hoots you know when it comes to the end of the well we're getting to the pointy end of this tournament we're down in the lower bracket obviously we talked about how these points are going to contribute towards qualifications for ACS Raleigh and, and making it there obviously is going to be a dream for any of these players whether they're at the top of the crop or not um, just making to that event I think it's really like you know this landmark event for Halo Infinite yeah absolutely it's just having that roadmap and that system in place of knowing what you're playing for so set, knowing that in 12 months there's this particular goal that we need to get to so that's what's just so fantastic about this about this roadmap and, and the plan that 343 has put out for the for the game um, and I'm just really looking forward to it and, and I'm sure these guys are as well um, but look Josh I think it might be worth us uh, jumping into the maps for this series um, and as we can see here we've got up first, the CTF on Bazaar, followed by Slayer on Streets, and then if we need to get to that final game, we've got uh, Oddball on Live Fire. Indeed we do. It's CTF Bazaar to kick us off. We haven't seen a CTF on broadcast yet. Obviously, a few changes, Justin, between uh, this and former competitive settings on uh, on Halo now with uh, all of these CTFs being to, to five caps. How do you think this is going to shake things up? I think that that really translates to... Uh, get out of jail free cards. There's going to be so many opportunities to come back from games and you know It takes a lot of team coordination to get those five caps done 
and you might see teams that are struggling a little bit at the start like we saw with BBR they might have the opportunity to change up their gameplay communicate it's like boys we're not doing things quite right you know let's change it up you know stick together rotate differently and all those types of things and Caps first to five, I mean, gives a real opportunity for coming back in a game. Yeah, indeed it does. And I, I think it's a positive change. You talked about getting out of jail free cards. I think that a lot of the maps that we've got here um, are, I guess, small enough in that kind of that arena shooter style that allows for it to play like that. I mean, we did see in previous, let's say, you know, Halo 3 is my game. You saw like with Heretic with Fire Flag and that kind of thing. So it, it has been seen before and I think that it will go really well, especially when you've got those additional pieces of equipment that allow you to get around the map quicker as well and of course sprints in there too but look alas guys we are ready for our second series of the day idolize versus carbon we're in the lower bracket one of these teams are gonna get sent pack and justin take us into the game yeah and we've got square on time for his game and he's putting some nice shots down there with his battle rifle not taking any damage himself either so Good use of cover as he rotates, trying to get some fresh angles here. The power-ups down below does look like one of his teammates managed to scoop that up. The overshield slamming on it onto his chest right away, deciding to utilize that straight away, Hoots. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's probably what we are going to see going forward at the start, at least. That Especially in a, in a frantic start of the game when there are players everywhere. If you can pick up that overshield, you're best to just pop it in straight away. There is obviously a slight delay but in terms of uh, enabling it, so it is best to, to just chuck that in straight away. Um, we're on board here with, with Ninjastix now, and, and he's just trying to clear out the base here and, and, and make sure that he can set his team up for a, for a good push through. We see the, the armor effects and the fire coming at the back, which is something new and infinite in itself. But I'm really going to be interested to see how the grapple shot plays its part in this in terms of being able to go for that overshield and that rocket launcher if you have it without having to go out in the open. Um, to be able to just pull that into you from a safe spot is going to be really, really handy for a lot of players. Yeah, and we highlighted Grand Last Shadow in the pregame chat, and he's already on three kills. No flags pulled just yet, but it does look like the first one might get moving. No, it's Chef defending his base here. All two players putting some shots onto him. Chef desperately needs some help, and he's getting collapsed on here. Wrath City not able to connect with his shots, though, and he does go down now, jumping on board with Ninjistix, who is an absolute monster, rocking that Cloud 9 skin, which is just beautiful on that battle rifle. Lots of really Really interesting angles that he's collecting here hiding in the pot plants just being a little bit of a uh, sneaky beaver there hoots yeah absolutely and he's got this shoddy ready for a few surprises if he can pop up and find someone unfortunately not i think his os is going to be popping pretty soon so potentially getting in a in a position to start making a play for that um, one thing that we should discuss as well is that in terms of running the flag you've got so many choices not just in terms of the routes that you take to actually bring that back to your base but there's always the dilemma of do I sprint and show up on the on, on the map and have the indicator popping up? Do you choose to run it by dropping and getting that extra speed boost in between juggling the flag in front of you or do you just hold it and go for a stealth pull? Um, all those different things and, and I guess it's a different situation each time that you make that determination of what you do, whether it's you've got all four down and you can just absolutely commando it straight down the middle. Um, but it looks like we're finally going to have a flag pull here coming through from Carbon and there looks like they're going to take it up through the tree and goes straight across uh, through bottom mid. So this is a pretty audacious flag run at the get-go. You can see juggling it there, but we also have a flag pull on the other side as well. So Idolize has managed to pull as well. We have both flags down in the middle. So this could actually turn out that too much emphasis was put from Carbon onto that flag pull. But as I say that, they are three down. So they're gonna need to, all four down now actually. So we've got Idolize now in a perfect opportunity to put this flag in if they can get it back. They just need to get the return. There it is, bang, Idolize up one nil. Yeah, one on the board for Idolize, and it was just chaos down there for a minute, but that's the nature of a new game, all those flag routes and the and the meta of how to play this map hasn't really been decided yet. It is so fresh, and myself, I'm looking for some tips of where I need to be running this flag because I seem to be struggling a little bit on myself. Now we're on board with Grand Last Shadow. He hasn't done a lot since his hot start with those three kills, pushing over into the base. He's going to get a sneaky little pull here, deciding to hold it onto him, so that's not going to reveal himself on uh, the enemy's map. And he's just going to be a little sneaky beaver, and it's going to be another flag joust. And look at this, Grand Last Shadow goes in for the pounce, gets the trade, so those flags are going to stop there. And that little cubby in the corner, that's just ripe and nade potential there, Hoot, so it's just going to be raining fire in a second. So both times we've seen flag pulls, it's actually been both teams pulling flags at the exact same time. So often what you expect to see is that one team will push into a base, get three or four dead, and then go for a flag pull, whereas both times it's both teams being alive on opposite sides of the map pulling flags. 
Uh, in the meantime, that being said, we've got Carbon here looking to uh, even up on, I believe, actually, sorry, we're on board with Idolo. So they're about to put in a second flag now. Uh, so they go up 2-0. So they're running their flag perfectly. Both pools they've had have ended up as caps. Um, and meanwhile, <laughs> Square, not only does he put the flag in, but also picks up a double to help clear out his base. That's three down again for Carbon. And we're going to have Idolo start to push in again and start to collapse on their base. Yeah, Square really doing it all, defending the flag, throwing him in, getting caps on the board. I'm just looking a little bit on the scoreboard here, and we have Flex Reigns with 14 kills going absolutely massive. He's on pace for a 20 bomb. We've seen a lot of 20 bombs today, Hoots, and I'm all for it. Gives us something to talk about, and Flex Reigns really showing up for his squad and really proving that he's hungry uh, to perform in Halo Infinite. Yeah, and, and if you actually look at the rest of his team, I mean, you've got Ninjessix with, with, eight, with eight, but Square and Wrath, clearly the objective runners, um, not, not putting in as many um, kills at all. Wrath obviously has the eight assist as does Square, so, you know, the, the majority of slaying coming from Flex, he's just happy there to be putting shots in the air, putting shots on people and running flags. Um, and it looks like here we're running another flag with Square through, uh, trying to go through bottom mid, unfortunately, he's shut down there and don't know if much is going to be made of that flag cap. No, we'll probably see that one return and both teams will reset. Now on board with Logistics, he finds himself. Pandora is just hanging around bottom mid there. Uh, that um, power up, power weapon there, not on the spawn. So I have to watch out for that when that comes out because the new addition to the sandbox certainly changes things up quite a lot. And there we go, double kill for Ninjistics. More kills on the board for him as he approaches into the double digits. Godzi there for a third if he wants it. Cautiously trying to stay alive here which is good or the nade comes in and flashing shields and he's assigned in the back down a little bit there hoots and he's at a really critical point on the map where he's just at that precipice of pushing into the enemy base and he was playing very patiently great stuff to see so square is clearly happy to be the objective runner on on this team um he's he's pretty much at every flag pool he's the only one who's put the flags in his slight fumble there unfortunately but look it's like we spoke about before when one team pulls a flag the other does it as well you obviously need that flag at home to score so sometimes when you know your flag's being pulled and is about to be captured if you're in a position to even just waste a little bit of the other team's time by pulling their flag making them force a, a return before capping it's it's the way to go but we're going to see potentially a bit of a standoff here as we have both flags heading back to the uh their opposing bases um although it does look like idolize are in a position now to get this return and i think did it go back i no i did it, it did return i think so we might be in a position to see another cap here yeah, and in a flag standoff, it's always interesting to see how players coordinate around it, and it does look like that flag has been returned. Or, or are we? No, it hasn't. No, we're still in a standoff, and I love a flag standoff because it can really slow down the maps and gives the teams an opportunity to get their communication and really coordinate themselves and decide on just how they want to push. And when you're in a flag standoff, I really think that it shows just who's here to play and who has the best team work. Yeah, I think we might find that often the things that NC stands off is a, is a run of power weapons, whether it's rockets or overshield. But we are seeing here Flex, who's the main slayer for, for Idolize. He's starting to push into the base now. And you see Godzi, he can get taken down. I think there might be a position to get this return here. So Flex is in no real rush to get in, although I think there's another member of their team there. It must be Wrath, who was the last alive briefly. I think he's able to get the return. And then I think we just see then it's another cap um, through with Square. So Square clearly running the objective there. Yeah, and we see Wrath City, our resonant cheeky boy, little bit of banter there. Uh, unexpected item in bagging area, and another flag on the board for Carbon. There, no, uh, for Idolize, sorry. They're really starting to run away with this one, uh, Hoots. And, you know, there's still plenty of time. We touched about it in the pre game. It's first to five, so there's plenty of opportunities left for car, uh, Carbon to bring this one back. And then we just saw a, a bit of a delay in putting in the OS, but <laughs> sees a player in front of him, chucks that OS in and then gets to work. So, you know, you do run that risk of potentially trying to put it in, but it's too late and you miss using the power up, but um, he timed it perfectly then. And we're going to see another run here. This time, Rat City just throwing it out and trying to be a bit of a nuisance as he, as he starts to figure out which way do you want to run it? Because that's one thing you need to consider as well. You pull a flag, Sometimes it's better to actually hold off a little bit before committing and hearing your teammates saying, okay, this way is clear, we should run it this way. You see Wrath did it, then he tossed it out, stayed in the base and waited a little bit, but then chose to run it down this right side through the alleys. And uh, if he keeps this up, I think he's in a position for another cap as there's two down for Carbon. So it looks like he's taking a few shots, but I think he should have the reinforcements to probably put this back in. Ninjastix is the only one alive square coming off the respawn. But I think Ninjastix is going to put this one in here. 4 nothing. 
Just one more cap needed for Idolize. But it, it doesn't feel like Carbon is getting spanked across the board. You look at the scoreboard, you look at the kills, and yes, Idolize is, is clearly in front. But they've been able to make some flag pulls themselves, Carbon, um, and, and actually get it a decent length of the base. They just haven't been able to put it in at the end, and that's the main thing that matters, obviously. Yeah, I think it just boils down to making sure that you're valuing your life and seeing a lot of flags just get pulled and then easily returned because they're desperate. They're looking for the scoreline going, boys, we're three down, we're three down, we need to run flags, but a little bit of patience goes a long way. We saw that with Rat City on the previous cap. He took his time, he got a kill, and he was even checking his angles before he even bothered touching that flag. And we're on board with Rat City once again. Flashing shields, he's trapped bottom mid just in the market, having a little bit of snack on the fruits and vegetables there, sliding through some fresh grenades to play with. Finds himself chef, can't connect on his battle rifle shots. A little bit of a whiff uh, from Wrath there, but he's certainly been performing stellar so far. It's yeah, absolutely, and we are just seeing a, a bit of a standoff now, actually. This overshield comes up, can be put in straight away by Ninjastic. So this is a prime chance for him to move in. Unfortunately, his flag's actually been pulled, I believe, so he's going to need to be keeping an eye on that. It's actually probably going to end up running straight past him. I think they're going through a bottom mid full carbon, so Ninjastic's putting in a lot of work with the shoddy here, staying alive, putting the head down, a bit of a strong side, a, a, a throwback to the old Halo days. Um, unfortunately taken down, but he really put that OS to good work, was able to burrow his way into the base and cause a bit of a, a distraction here. Um, and so Flex Reigns now, we're on board with 26 kills. He's on the opposite side of the map now, starting to make a push into this flag. And as we can see, the final flag looks like it's being run by Idolize here. Flex is going to pull out the uh, the shoddy and, and get to work. He's obviously been the main slayer, so that's what he's going to still do here. And uh, I think he might be in a position to cap, unfortunately, <laughs> runs straight into a, a Carver's team member. Uh, but it looks like now this is through the double doors. We might see another bit of a flag stand off here. Nade's going everywhere. Yeah, Ninjistic's just unloading everything out of his pockets. You know, here's my grenades, here's my pencils, here's my tissues, just trying to block off that angle, and it has allowed them to slap in that last flag. Five to zero um, in favor of the boys on red. Yeah, look, a, a pretty comprehensive victory there from the scoreboard point of view in terms of flag caps, slays as well, but, but it did feel relatively closer than the scoreboard actually reflected, I felt. I don't know if you felt the same way, Justin. Yeah, I, I just think that it's all about utilizing those opportunities. You, you get your kills, you need to get the flag moving and a lot of desperation. And, you know, that could just be boiled down to either it being a brand new game and the meta really not being established or it just maybe the team work wasn't there. Um, but the boys managed to tear away from that one five to zero and certainly a massive outslay with flex reigns two off that 30 bomb he's going to be kicking himself a little bit on that but look at that only two assists so he <laughs> you know he's missed the plow he's the cleanup crew just you know getting all of those one shot players one burst to the head and accuracy certainly lines up with that too 56 percent from him hurts yeah absolutely and even you look at the shots hit as well flex reigns only had about 200 or so shots hit the, the lowest out of his whole team so he was definitely cleaning up a lot of those one shots. I mean, two two assists when most of your teammates are going in the in the mid teens is uh, is something else. So, uh, not going to say he's cherry picking, but he was definitely positioning himself in the right places to to pick up some of those kills and and, and clear the way for his team to run those flags. But what was really interesting throughout this game was the fact that the, we saw most of the flag runs seem to go straight up the middle. So they were pretty, as I, as I said before, audacious flag runs. Um, you know, not taking a, a potentially safer and sneakier route and going down one of the sides, but straight up the middle through bottom mid through the double doors. Um, I, I didn't expect to see that. I don't know about you though, John. No, I love to see it. I love when players just straight down the guts. They're just like, boys, I'm coming. I got the flag. Get ready. And just full faith in their teammates to back them up back them up so they can run that flag over seeing some of these highlights here plenty of killing sprees and double and triple kills throughout that game fantastic stuff to see and i wouldn't count out the boys in blue just yet i mean they've got plenty of talent and they were holding on there and there were some glimpses of glory from them so i'll be looking for game two to see them bounce back i think yeah absolutely we see some teams are more uh, stronger at objectives others are stronger at slays you know sometimes the objective is just a massive distraction that stops teams from being able to do the one thing which they are the best at which is slaying um so now as we move into this next second game uh which is a slayer on streets again um it's going to be interesting to see can they transition more into those slayer games where the objective focus isn't isn't there it's not an issue they can focus purely on let's get the power weapons let's get set up and, and let's just slay absolutely and quite a different map too i mean bizarre you know lots of open area in the center of the map and it's 
really a bloodbath trying to clear out that halfway mark and make a push into the base, but streets, lots of tight corridors, sneaky things to do. And we touched on it before, Grand Last Shadow, he's a sneaky, unorthodox player. So maybe we'll be looking to him to shine in this next match. Yeah, I think Bazaar is probably your more typical Halo style map of, as you said, long sight lines, usually one or two lanes that you that the majority of the combat goes through. Um, so a lot of cross map fire team shotting, whereas, as you said, streets a lot more, there's nooks, crannies, corners, people to hide, people to get, get lost in effectively. Um, so so it, it could be a completely different different game. You know, it's obviously we're, both, we're still playing Halo the whole way through, but moving into a map that is probably your less traditional Halo map. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be something that changes it up really for everyone. Um, I, I can't wait to see it. Absolutely, and I'd be calling on uh, Grand Last Shadow and Godzi, the uh, Halo 5 duo, to really lift up their team. We just need a little bit more teamwork. They, they were close to getting things rolling, um, but the slaying power um, on the other team, Flex Reigns with that 28 kills. I mean, we're going into a slay match. Are they going to be able to compete when someone is just going off like that? I'm, yeah. I'm not sure, Hoods. Yeah, that's the question. And I think when you do get a 5-0 spanking in Capture the Flag, regardless of if you think you were getting close or not, it can be quite disheartening. So, you know, Halo always has been a mental game, specific, particularly these tournaments. And I think you and I both know from playing even just in local ones before, when when you've been gaming nonstop for a day, two days, it, it's, it's tiring. You know, you start to lose focus, you fatigue. And so... Um, they're just going to need to have to pick themselves up off the back of that. They get another chance now with Slayer on Street. Absolutely, and uh, just admiring the view here. Street's such a beautiful map, and we got that spanker there, and we saw a spanking in that first game, 5-0, to zero, and a comeback story could be coming up. Slayer, it's going to be a bloodbath, and Hoots, I mean, what's your predictions for this next one? Look, I think it is going to be hard to look past Idolize with the fact they did outslay and everything on that objective game before. But like I said, you never know with that distraction of the objective gone, we could see something completely different. We're kicking off here with Flex, who was obviously our main slayer from last game. It's probably a good idea to stick with him in a slayer game at the start. Unfortunately, taken down with grenades. Uh, but these rockets still haven't been picked up yet. It looks like Carbon's actually going to make a move to pick them up. And I think we have Pandora who might have grabbed them. So. Uh, he's actually picked up a quick double at the start with those rockets, um, putting them to work, which is exactly what they're there for. And he's going to start moving in. Pin. Very, very good, what I call trigger discipline there in terms of not shooting the rocket at close range and killing himself, using the back whack and then chucking another rocket. Unfortunately, it didn't connect, but good start for him. Yeah, it's exactly what I was talking about before. Pandora, just the dependable player and the trigger, trigger discipline, you said it perfectly. Now on board with Wrath City, who had quite a big game himself, you know, and he even had time for a little bit of uh, teabagging too, which is something you love to see in a Halo game. I'm glad that it's back. Scoreline very even at the moment. We're still just warming up. And we are looking to Carbon to put up a bit of a higher fire here. Rat City smelling some blood. Couple of plays there. Bandura, you know, twerking on the ground there, desperately trying to stay alive. And Chef getting the nice clean up there. Yeah, absolutely. It was a good effort to stay alive. Had two players in front of him. Sometimes you just got to figure out, make that snap decision. Who is these? Is one person have their shields popped, and you can actually get a quick kill before going on to the other guy. Um, unfortunately, wasn't able to, to make anything of it then, but. Um, you know, this is similar to the last series we saw um, where BBR was able to hang in quite a bit at the start, but I think you, you said yourself, Justin, that you don't really start to pay attention to Slay games until around the 30 kill mark. Um, but at this stage, it's good to see that both teams are really hanging with each other here. Um, and, you know, as we said, there, there doesn't seem to be a real strong setup on this map. It's more just about the way you move around and listening to your team's callouts as you start trying to fold in on, on, on one or two players isolated. These rockets come up in about 10 seconds, so it's going to be uh, a, a bit of a rush to start to set up and get ready for these rockets as we can see here square I think he's going to have a pretty clear run at it with Pandora backing off weak now he's actually going to decide to not go for them it looks like instead gets a very nice kill on Chef I think he's leaving the rockets to one of his teammates so he's just going to get those shields back and they'll try and make something with these rockets yeah it looks like they are setting up they've got to grab that power weapon soon and that spanker just so powerful on this map there's just so many walls uh, and roofs and uh, little nooks and crannies that you can launch those rockets into. It really leans into just how powerful this uh, weapon is. You only have two rockets to play with, but you know you only need those two rockets to create a collapse. And there we go, Wrath City using both of those rockets to full effect. Double kill for him, throwing nades, cutting off the angles, and he's twitching around the map, trying to find where's that third player, where's that third player. I bet you I'm on stream. Doesn't get the triple kill, but he does get the trade as well. 
um, really performing through his squad. And, you know, Rath City, he's here to play hoots. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd be interested to see zero assists again. So it's good to see that he's sticking with that. Um, but they're really starting to make a bit of a move now. So they're, they're up by seven. Um, they're clearly starting to flow those power weapons. They, they make a massive difference. That's a two free kills effectively if you can use those rockets semi-effectively. Um, and so to be able to have that, then you're easily able to pick up those other two two players who are now all of a sudden two people down. Um, obviously, we said before, Halo's a massive team game. Team shots is a massive part of, of competitive Halo. And so when you have less people on the battlefield, it's less fire that's able to be put on the enemy team. Wrath City with more of that body disrespect. Um, and the scoreline is still kind of close, but it's getting to that pointy end with, you know, the top of the bell curve at the moment. And the slope is steep and fast, so... Carbon, they really need to get things going, otherwise they're going to be out. The to there's, this is loser's bracket. They're out and gone after this one. So I'd like to see them clean things up. And I love a comeback story. They're 11 kills down now. Hoots, can they do it? Um, look, I'm never going to say never, um, but it's going to be, it's certainly going to be a challenge. I mean, you can see, you know, Godzi and Pandora, they're, they're holding their own with eight kills each, but unfortunately, Chef and, and Grand Last Shadow just aren't able to get much happening right now. <laughs> Um, these rockets in the hands of Flex again. Um, I doubt we're going to see many assists coming from them as you would just get a few direct kills, but um, he's taken down. It, you know, got one kill out of that, didn't get both, but the other important thing is he didn't put the rockets in the hands of the other team, which is just as important sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to use them straight away, which is why you'll see a lot of players, they'll just launch two rockets. If they don't get the kill, they won't switch to their battle rifle for the cleanup sometimes if they're under pressure. They'll just launch both so they're not on the receiving end if they do lose them. Ninjistics with another kill on the board. Um, he's got, you know, nine and nine, so he's about to top into that uh, double-digit assist. So really working with his team, just melting with that Sentinel beam. E effective on the flood and effective on Spartans. Hoops. I mean, we've seen effectively, I think we were around 15 apiece at the start of the game. So if you look at that alone, we've seen roughly, a, you know, a, a 25 or so um, kill run for Idolize compared to Carbon only putting on about 10. So they've really been able to pull away with this. They're racing to the end. This Sentinel beam is... Uh, Love the effect scene when you get a kill with that. It's not really a gun we typically see in competitive Halo, but now that it's in there, I'm, uh, I'm enjoying watching it, definitely. Yeah, well, <laughs> as they say, beaming with the uh, Sentinel beam, now on board with flex reins, and not racking up a lot of assists like the previous game, but, you know, plenty of kills so far, and he's got that bulldog ready to bite some ankles with it. Finding Pandora, put some shots on there. Easy kill for him. Shields are flashing him, and you see... You know, his shields are flashing, but he's still trying to help out his team there. Throwing some nades in some angles there. He's got the bullfrog patiently waiting there in his little kennel, ready to buy anyone that comes in, Hoots. Man, he is just feeding. <laughs> he's just, he's so opportunistic, just picking up all these kills. You can see only two assists. It means that most of the work he's doing, he's finishing everything. And there you go, his last kill. Uh, so that's going to be a 50-32 to 32 win for Idolize. They go through 2 nothing in this series. Um, but I think... That is something we definitely need to talk about, is Flex. And, and, it, and it can make it seem like that he's not a team player, which is completely unfair. Um, it could just be that, you know, individually he's winning all his kills and he doesn't need a teammate to come in and, and help him. It's uh, it's pretty impressive. But, but Josh, another 2-0 series there. Um, they couldn't have been more impressive than Idolize. I think he was just flexing on him there, who oh, yeah. oh, I had to do it. I had to come in with a dad joke. Come on, man. I'm dying of arthritis here. But no, what a uh, what a series. And unfortunately, we do say goodbye to uh, to Carbon in this tournament. As we look at some of the stats here, boys, you called it really, really well. Um, it was a great performance all around. Flex with that 15 kills. We did see, of course, Square hot on his heels at 14. On the opposing side, again, relatively even. We saw their chef kind of struggling to get some uh, some kills, but he did get the most assists on his team as well. But I mean, you called the action there, Justin. Well, as we look through these stats, was there anything that really stood out to you? Uh, just, I mean, we're looking at the accuracy right now. 67% accuracy for flex range. Just, you know, being really efficient with his shots there, you know, taking his time landing his shots and racking up those kills very efficiently. And it does look like Idolize pretty even damage dealt across the board. So really working together to get that victory.
that was a very high level of accuracy there. So accurate, in fact, you can see their use of the rockets even hitting themselves. But no, in all seriousness, it was really great to see, and we will be seeing uh, this time these guys idolize moving through uh, the lower bracket. And the next game is going to be very, very fascinating nonetheless. What we did see, and it's already appeared a few times in our highlight reel hoots, is just how important on this map in particular, the streets getting control of those rockets are. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It, it's, you know, it's a close quarters map. Um, so you know, it's quite easy to be pretty effective with them, as we can see here working through the Sentinel Beam. We haven't really spoken about that much, but... Look Sentinel Beam that, competitive, baby. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but just that, that sheer accuracy with it, you can really melt people. I, I just want to go back to the stats quickly as well. Lex had the lowest shots fired and lowest shots hit on his team and still managed to come out as the top slayer. Um, so he is just picking the angles perfectly and, and, and making his shots work for him. He doesn't need to put as many out there when he's racking up 15 kills. Peak efficiency, they didn't quite get the steak dinner, but they did get the entree, 50 to 32, not too bad at all. And of course that 5-0, you could say this was pretty one-sided. So Carbon, they will be exiting the tournament. Idolize continue here in the HCS ANZ Open 1. Very, very impressed by the team at Idolize. And obviously, you know, Justin, you know, when it comes to these teams, I know it's only the first tournament. It is an online comp, but getting a loss and getting knocked down to the lower bracket can really affect the mentals of some players. Doesn't seem to have done so with Idolize. No, you know, some players take it really harshly, like, oh man, I'm in losers, like, you know, I've got to make this huge run. And other people, they use that as fire and motivation to move their way through the bracket and it does look like Idolize is doing that. They're fired up and they're determined to make their way to the grand final. Indeed they are. You know, they're on their way to the grand final, hopefully. And speaking of grand finals and competitions, this is my segue to the Smash.GG uh, tournament that we called to a little early on. It is your opportunity if you haven't signed up for this event and if you want another tournament to be able to play in, here is your opportunity. Thanks to Game Pass has PC games. It is the open series featuring Halo Infinite. Registration's open now, smash.gg forward slash Xbox. We talked about it earlier. An all expenses trip, uh, all expenses paid trip to HCS Raleigh, flight, hotel, and team pass. You can compete there. Something that we haven't really talked about and, and that I think is maybe not unique, but is definitely ingrained within the competitive Halo ecosystem is these open LAN events. Now, I know that Raleigh is sold out. This is probably your last chance to get a team pass through this tournament right here. But those open LAN events, one that we're going to be seeing in Australia as well at the HCS Melbourne event, the regional taking place later in 2022. That open LAN environment, Hoots, is something very, very special to Halo, and I'm really glad to see that back. Yeah, there's, there's, there's something about just being able to yell at your teammates and, and, and get into your opponent's faces that you just can't get online and um, I can't wait to get back to LAN. It's just been too long. Someone who I'm keen to talk about LAN and just competitions in futures will be one of the players that we just saw compete in our last series. It is going to be Ninjestix, so let's have a chat to him if we can get this rocking and rolling. Ninjestix, come in, my friend. Congratulations on your win. How are you feeling after that one, mate? Obviously a critical one to, uh, to take to stay in the competition today. Yeah, look, you know, it was really good to take out the W with the boys considering this was a, like a pickup team. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to see how, how much further we can go this tournament. Yeah, Jesse, we, we were joking on the broadcast about Flex Reigns and, and his lack of assists across both games. Not just that, but also his lack of shots. He had the lowest number of shots and shots hit um, in both games, but was the lead slayer. Uh, is that something that is part of his role? Is, is he typically a, a sneaky player and he just moves around the map so well to pick up kills? Or is that something that happens often or is that a bit different? Yeah, see, like, look, Flex is one of those players that's really good at, like, listening to the comms and picking out, like, where the weak players are on the map and creating those, like, opportunities. Um, I think he's got three really good players behind him that can really, like, put those shots down and, you know, create those opportunities for him to be able to get those kills. Um, but, I mean, like, if anyone can do it, it's Flex. He's an absolute beast. Now, Ninjistics, we've got this roadmap, like, an entire year just laid out, ready to go. Uh, what's going to be your approach and your team's approach for the next 12 months and what are you hoping to achieve? Yeah, so I guess like for me and like my team that I throw together, um, we really want to you know, push ourselves to, to the highest limit we can. Um, you know, we're looking to go overseas eventually, but you know, we want to you know, help this community thrive and you know, like show people that this is actually like a viable thing for people to do um and you know it, like it's everyone's going to benefit in the community um but yeah like us personally we're looking to go like overseas eventually 
um, improve, you know, put in the time, um, not miss a competition and just, you know, just really see where I can go from there. Well, we're all excited to see how far you can go Ninja 6, you and the rest of the ILO squad. Thank you very much for your time. Good luck for the rest of the tournament. Hopefully we'll see you make it through the lower bracket all the way to the grand final. But uh, good luck with that, mate, and we look forward to seeing you more soon. I'll see you there. That was Ninjastics and uh, look, relatively humble, relatively chilled as well. You know, there was a lot on, on the line for that previous matchup, but uh, it was a little bit of a swish as they were able to win very, very comfortably that 5-0 CTF and the 50-32 Slayer. Fantastic stuff. And, you know, look, they were saying they're excited and you can see with the players as well, Justin, you know, the roadmap we've talked about, very, very cool, right? It's absolutely so cool. And that entire year, I'm really excited to see some solid squads just get together and go, you know what, boys, we're just going to stick it out, you know, through the good and the bad till death do us part. So, and with a roadmap that long, it gives teams opportunity to, you know, build their own um, dynasty. We saw it with Immunity for such a long time and a big key to their success is that they're best buds. And, you know, they're all star players in their own right. But personally, I think it's just that um, friendship and that team gelling that they have that really kept them on top all these years. And I'm hoping that some of that can be formed in other teams with this long roadmap. And about the roadmap, you know, these international opportunities are something that are really, really special. It's important for, uh, for not just the players in their own goals. I think that if you're not a competitor or don't really understand esports and the ecosystem at large, you don't quite have a full grasp of what it means. Now, obviously, all players trying to make it to these majors, these international events, is very, very big. But if you want to support the local e ecosystem, which means get a team, get sponsors on board, and be able to get that commercial support in order for you to pursue that, getting that exposure to these international teams and this international platform is really, really important. I think that the Halo team, the HTS team, are doing a really good job of doing that. And that's obviously, um, you know, a part or a big part of the system and you saw Ningestics there talk about you know he, he mentioned several times about those international events and the plans that they've got they're obviously going to try and make as much as they can but uh, we did say earlier but I'd like to just call it out again which is the support for these teams not only are you doing it through watching them online and, and supporting them through their the co competitions, tournaments such as this, but also you do have those skins as well. So the in-game items and the in-game packages that you can purchase for the teams is, is really, really critical. Some of them look very, very slick. I think we were talking about uh, a hit the wallet for us suits as we were purchasing all of them. But, um, you know, for those of you at home who are considering um, purchasing those, keep in mind that there is a kickback towards the teams directly supporting them and the regional the uh, the regional packs as well, the hashtag Croc Gang for, uh, for A and Z, uh, they go to the TOs and for the local grassroots scene as well. So not to mention, on top of all of this, there's a portion that contributes to the prize pool for the event. Hoots, $3 million plus for this roadmap. Insane stuff. Yeah, it's just crazy. It's, it's just an amount that 10 years ago, I think, you know, we were running tournaments and the top prize pool was about 200 bucks. So it's just crazy to see how much it's grown. $3 million is just an insane amount of money. Um, and... You know, these guys deserve it, though. They've been putting in the hard yards for so long, they deserve to be repaid for it. Indeed, mate, indeed. I can't wait to see who's going to take that one. The HCS World Championship at the end of the year is going to be absolutely nuts, but there's a long way between now and then. Guys and girls, this is just uh, the, the early days at the moment. We are working our way through the lower bracket. This is HCS ANZ Open number one. We're going to go to a quick break, but when we come back, there is much more Halo action. Don't you go anywhere. So the best teams are probably the ones rolling in from Halo 5. So obviously, they're all very skilled players, been very, very good at Halo 5. Even MCC, I've been playing them lately and getting stomped at my old love, Halo 3. Although the game's not the same, I'll take that little caveat. Say our best competition would definitely have to be Seduce's team of Seduce, Barcode, Prades, and Madzi. Their team and our team has a really good opportunity and chance to do well overseas. The biggest threat to us, we feel, is Divine Mind, you know, with that rivalry between the duos. We also know they're comprised of good players that have been there, done that, you know. They've got Junior and Berserk, who have been two worlds. To pick a team to win, it would definitely be Seduce's team. Just with the sheer experience that they've got in that team is solid. They're just 
individual beasts and I guess throughout matchmaking so far, uh, they've been pretty dominant. I've been playing with them as well, so I, I see how they've been playing and they've been playing really well. So there's two teams that we've got our eye on, two teams that we can really push each other. We almost want to work together, like we want to beat these guys like crazy, but at the same time, we both have the same goal of doing well internationally. So. That team is Divine Mind, and then you've got the old school team Immunity. So you've kind of got like the newer era and like the older era. So it'll be super interesting to see what happens in the competition. I mean, X5 looked pretty hot with the with the new squad. Been around for Yonks, but with, with Vamped as an addition, I think that they'll do really well. Barcode is one of the cracked individual players here in ANZ. He's always consistent, always performing well. Madzi is also a stand-up player, obviously Seduce. So these guys are at the top of their game, top of their league, and they're they're quite strong. So definitely look out for them uh, coming into this week. Slays as well. He's he's a re really talented, like individual. He just you know he brings so much to that team, and he can just create so many opportunities for them. I think Barcode's definitely a player that people are going to have to watch out for uh, going forward into the future. Is he perfect? Not necessarily, but uh, he's got a lot a lot of things going for him, and he's young. And if he can. Uh, you know, keep his head straight on his shoulders and take some feedback here and there. I think he'll be probably, yeah, one of the scarier players in all the regions going forward. I definitely say Immunity was the dark horse of the tournament, I feel. Those guys know how to play Halo and they've been doing it for the past decade and a bit. So, you know, who knows what they can pull out of their bag. Or even Team SSU, which is also comprised of a few older players such as Ads, Dante, Rattles and Evil. They're also, you know, they're, they're grinding this game out. The team that I might form could be the Dark Horse. Let's see, let's see. Obviously, my team's going to win. Um, nah. Team Immunity, who obviously I learned a lot off of, and personally think they're all really good players and have all really good mindsets. Some people might look at that team and say, well, you know, they haven't really been playing for years. They can't just come back and be the best. But I definitely think if there's a team to be a Dark Horse, it's a team like that. Uh, players who've got a lot of experience, a lot of motivation. But you can't take away all of that experience that Team Immunity have accrued over the years. Like they're still one of the best teams because they know how to play as a unit. They know how to play in twos, threes, fours. Any situation that they're given on the map, they've most likely been in before. So it's just gonna take them a bit of time to get used to the game and they're definitely going to be a top three team. I'm not too sure on Dark Horse teams, but what I will say is that even just playing the playlist now, you, you keep stumbling across people who seem to be pretty decent, you know, and I keep stumbling across people who I've never played before, don't even recognize Gamertag. So whether or not they're keyboard players or not, I'm not too sure, but, you know, it's really exciting to see that there's potentially some hidden talent out there that could sort of maybe do what I did back in Halo 3 and sort of pull some people together and come out of nowhere.
It may just be the third series of the broadcast, but we're already up to the winner's bracket final here at HCS ANZ Open number one. I'm your host, Maniac. So joining me here on the cast is Hoots and Justin. Now, look, an amazing day we've had so far. The winner's bracket final is going to be nuts. Now, we were all talking prior to the start of today's action. We think that this is going to be the grand final as well. But gentlemen, the day we've had ahead of, uh, prior to us, you know, the last few matches we've seen, I think think it's just a prelude to what we're going to see in the next match. Justin, we've called out that this is going to be the match to watch. Do you still think that? Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it and I'm so excited to be able to cast these two great teams. You know, so many just absolute monsters on both squads and these are the two teams they've been preparing for a very long time. You know, Infinite got a surprise release but they weren't caught off guard. Now, we did see a lower bracket match just take place, so we'll have a look at that bracket in just a second before we move on to this winner's bracket final match because a lot has gone down. We've already said goodbye to some teams, so let's just walk back the clock a little bit, what we saw in the earlier rounds. Idolize, they took down KBM 2-0. Nuke and Pave, the shock elimination of Dire Wolves in that 2-0 series obviously took us up to where we are now. Now, Idolize versus Carbon. We still Idolize take that out in the match that we just watched, 2-0. And Nuke and Pave did eliminate BBR. So unfortunately, we say goodbye to the grandpas of the ANZ Halo scene. I'm sure we'll be seeing them back. But Nuke and Pave versus Idolize, that is going to be a match and a half for sure. Meanwhile, up in the upper bracket, we've gone through this. We know there's been a lot of awesome games. What we need to call out as we move into this uh, this winner's final is the fact that neither team here, Divine Mind nor Neutral Bullet, have dropped a single map. Hoots getting this far, the winner's bracket final, it just shows the domination of these two teams. Yeah, absolutely. But the fact is someone is going to have to lose a game now. And it's about how they bounce back from that as well, I think. So, um, you know, it's just a case of not losing your head in that first loss and, and regrouping and going back in again. But I'm expecting the series to be a lot closer than, uh, than some of the other ones we've seen. Getting this far, I have no uh, problem at all saying we are all winners. And Justin, you would probably feel the same, right? Surely, even if you drop the map, you drop the series, getting all the way to the winner's bracket final is big of the first Halo Infinite event, right? Absolutely, and Hoots, you know, he touched on it just yet. then. One of these teams is going to have to drop a map, and I think he's completely right. And how they bounce back from that loss is really going to be the key. But so much experience between both of these squads, and it's just going to be a bloodbath. We talked a lot about the Nutribullet squad, but Divine Minds, they've got some monsters themselves. But highlighting Nutribullet here, Seduce, Barcode, Madzi, and Prades. I mean, we've said it all. These guys are just cracked out of their minds, and they're here to play, and they've been proving it so far today, Josh. Yeah, we were lucky enough to have an interview with Barcode a little earlier from his previous win. We know that he's cool, calm, and collected. You mentioned Seduce in there. You know, he was, you know, the boy wonder for the last few years of the Australian Halo scene, absolutely dominating, particularly in Halo 5. He's got some international experience as well. Just so much uh, really, really high level experience on that squad, but they are up against Divine Mind, yet to be seen here on broadcast. Pip, Raided, Berserk, and Slays, massive names. I started the Pip fan club back in, I think, 2016 or 17, and you've also got Rated in there as well, formerly known as Snakey. So the player known as Snakey, you've got Rated in there as well. And Hoots, we touched on this before, Rated is actually the reserve player for Divine Mind in place of Junior. This was obviously very fascinating coming into this tournament. Yeah, it's interesting, but, but respect to Junior as well for making the call to sub himself out and say, you know, I'm probably going to be wasting your time if, I, if I'm taking part in this tournament. Um, it is going to be really interesting to see how this Divine Mind squad goes. Josh, I think you and I in the ranked playlist a few nights ago came up against a few of these guys, and um, yeah, close to controller breaking it was. So um, I'm really interested to see how they go in this matchup. Yeah, look, I'm still dirty after they used me to mop the floor because uh, they... <laughs> They really dominated. You know, there's a reason they're here in the winner's bracket final. But yeah, this squad, very, very strong. And, you know, it is, uh, I think, a really interesting narrative to follow. Just keeping an eye on this squad. They were one of the first, if not the first, one of the first anyway, to announce a sponsorship. They announce their team, Divine Mind, big in the scene, and they're supporting 
one of the best teams in the region. But the narrative to follow, obviously, is what will happen with Junior and Rated. Now, I think both are amazing players. Junior, however, I mean, I was chatting to him earlier. He's committed nearly 20 years of his life to Halo. He's on the grind with his stream. Uh, he's obviously doing everything he can, but just... But aligning the stars to make sure that he's available is going to be a tough one. You know, we all have personal lives, especially those of us who are dinosaurs of the scene. We've all moved on, can't commit quite so much time. Hopefully he can make it, and hopefully the Divine Mind squad can get him in here. But even without Junior, we'll put him aside. We need to focus on the squad we've got in front of us. And with Raided in there, Justin, it is still a monster squad to go up against. Absolutely. You touched on Raided there. He He's a monster, and I feel like... He's a player that you wind him up like a jack-in-the-box and then he just explodes. So I'm really happy to see him get his chance off the bench and competing against uh, Neutral Bullet here. So I'll be looking to him to really prove that he deserves to be on that Divine Mind roster. And Divine Mind, you touched on it, one of the first uh, organizations to jump in the ANZ scene. They're being a big supporters throughout the the dry spell that we had towards the end of halo 5 so i'm really stoked to have them on board and they've picked up a monster squad there's not a weak player among them you know you talked about the dry spell we're in the desert but the hcs for this year is our oasis we talked about the teams and look the lineups let's have a look at the maps that we're going to be playing on here again we are still at a best of three until we get to that grand final where we'll see a best of five and we're going to start things off with that oddball. Uh, look, a, a couple of changes with uh, with the oddball game type. No longer, it's not a one hit kill. Something to be aware of when you are carrying the oddball. On a map like Recharge, where there's a lot of verticality to it as well, and we can use that equipment in play. Hoots, I think we, it's a very uh, dynamic map and game type combo. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, this is one of those levels we spoke, maps we spoke about with the verticality element. So when you can use that grapple shot and the repulsor to really get around quickly from one level up to the top, um, that's that's going to be a big part in terms of people using that equipment to try and break setups. Uh, but I'm just really interested to see where teams actually choose to try and hold the ball. Um, there's a few options on this map and um, different teams, I'm sure, are going to have different approaches. I'm going to move past the Slayer Bazaar and focus on that Strongholds on Streets. You know, Streets, I actually really don't mind that map. I like playing Strongholds on it. I think it's a, a very interesting one. Justin, you know, is there anything here between these two teams that's going to kind of split them in the way that they should be approaching this map? Is it just the power weapon control? Talk me through what it, what it kind of means to them playing on this map. I, I would just say that both teams, they just need to maintain that composure. They can't afford to give the other team an inch. If you start making mistakes, they're going to capitalize on it. These aren't, you know, the lower bracket teams that got knocked out at the start of the tournament. If you get reckless and go too down, they're going to use that to collapse and rotate around the map. So holding your composure and not, you know, rushing too much will be key to victory. But we do jump on board with Barcode. Absolute monster already racking up his first kill. Does manage to grab that camo. Very sneaky boy. And we will have to see Barcode maybe have some patience here and really utilize that power up there. Does find Pips. Gets the flank on him. Easy cleanup with the squad. And they're already racking up some points on the board, Hoots. Yeah, and he... he took the option to, even while Camo sprinted around just to get to that kill and help his teammate. And that's that, that, those comps there where basically you know that you're safe to sprint and reveal yourself, but the priority is to get there and help your team um, um, secure that kill. So look, it's worth noting, we're, we're doing rounds here in Oddball now. So we um, obviously it's not a game type where it's just one way all the way through. We have rounds and you have to have two rounds to, to get the W, but we see Barcode's already doing a bit of trash talk. Uh, he's three kills, no deaths so far. Make that four. He's just running around the map at will, uh, just laying down fire. And it, it appears like we're seeing a neutral bullet set up down here uh, in blue. So not an area where I typically thought you'd try and hold the ball, given that there is a lot of exposure there on that bend. But um, that's obviously the way they've taken it here. It's going to be interesting to see if they choose to hold it that whole way through. Yeah, I guess that uh, silo area does give you the opportunity to play ball if you need to and then stop the other team from racking up points, which does look like that's what ended up happening. And neutral ball, they're already off to a 40-point lead. And I just want to circle back what you were talking about before with oddballs having rounds now. I think that really creates opportunities for teams to bounce back. It's almost having like two games within a game and you can really bounce back if you have a poor game or one. And it does look like Divine Mind are starting to put some points on the board. It's good to see. Yeah, and we see that camera just not picked up there, but with the sword rated doing a bit of work, picking up the double. And I think it looks like we're going to have an oddball held up near the top attic, which is an area that I've found through playing the ranked playlist that quite a lot of people 
uh, tend to take it to. So we've got a camo and sword in the hands of Raiden. He's taken down, so that's massive right now for Neutral Bullet to nullify that that camo. I'm unfortunately not able to do anything with it. Divine Mind, they've been in and around the ball a little bit, but um, haven't been managed to put a huge amount of time on just now knacking up those uh, 19 seconds there. But two down for each, and we have the ball now in the hand of Prades, and he's going to look to hold it uh, around this pipes area. A lot of cover. His team can take either side. There's only a couple of ways in there. But the, as we spoke about before, it's that grapple shot. That can be the one thing that changes everything. Players able to get up there quickly, get a back smack in, and try and break a setup. Absolutely. And I love in Oddball watching the perspective of the ball holder, you know, checking all of those angles, just trying to give themselves as much information as possible. You can't just hide in a corner and, you know, wait for players to come to you. You've got to be prepared to rotate and move uh, around and with your teammates. And they are starting to rack up some uh, quite a sizable lead here for Neutral Bullet. Not far off taking out this first round. Um, and just great stuff to see. And Barcode, we can't stop talking about him, but he's already on 10 kills, Hoots. 11. Make that 11. <laughs> Make that 11. Not just that, only two deaths. So he's just running around like a madman and just out there. And he um, was willing to put a few shots into the dead body there as well. But you even saw how he just utilized that grapple hook and was flying around the map and putting shots in and strafing around. And it's just fantastic to see. But look, pretty one-sided there opening round. But as we spoke about before, the great thing about Oddball being in rounds is that you can cast that one aside, the game's not over, you've got a chance to set up again, um, and it's basically a full refresh. But we're gonna head over here, stick with Barcode, why not? He's the one who's been the main slayer. Just hanging around out in the open with camo, and once again, same as last round, he scores that camo off the start, and he chucks it in, and now he's fully camoed, able to run around and uh, and just be a bit of a, a sneaky beaver as he's doing the, the two-shot beat down. Unfortunately, he get the kill with it, but cleans up on pips, and he's just moving around the map so cleanly um, with his camo out in the open, before his shields even pop up, putting shots in, he's just playing without a care in the world. Absolutely, and you, and you touched on it again. Tabako going for that camo off the rip, and it does look like they've really been studying these maps, and, you know, what's our starting tra strats? Where are you going? Where are you going? And obviously, it looks like Barcode is, you know, the steamroller that goes in for that camo, trying to get the burn, um, but he has managed to secure it both times, and now on board with him again, just looking for more and more slays, and not a lot of ball time so far, Hoots. It just seems to be a bit of a, a slay match, you know, a bit of a grudge match, you know, like, don't shoot me, I'll shoot you, and I'll teabag you, and I'll shoot your body, and uh, not a lot of points on the board just yet. Yeah, I think both teams seem to just be feeling each other out a little bit. You know, we're, we're pretty much even. We've been playing this round for, for a minute or two now, and, and as you said, not much focus on the ball. I think it's mainly just because it's in a position right now where neither team really wants to hold it. It's not, it's not really in a spot that they think they can set up. And as we can see now, Madzi, with a few down, he's willing to grab that ball and start to move. And it looks like he's aiming for that blue setup again. So from what we can see, Neutral Bullet aiming for blue, whereas Divine Mind, when they get it, trying to get up into that attic. We did see Neutral Bullet at one point in the last round once it was up there, we're willing to stay there, but it seems if, if they do have the choice between the two, it's that blue where they're going to head. Yeah, and just looking at the kills, they're, they're very even so far, and the score line's very even, and it's good to see the Divine Mind bouncing back after that previous game, but it's not over just yet, and I think I did see that Mangler in Slay's back pocket. He does go down, jumping over to Raided. He's putting some nice shots there. Madzi finds him, though. Wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of that BR. Madzi with that camo as well. He could certainly create some opportunities for his team here, Hoots. And we do see the sword uh, sitting there on its spawn, so I'd love to see that utilized. And it does look like Berserk's grabbed it. <laughs> it's, he decides to just dive off the map. And it's like, I'm taking this sword with me, Hoots. I don't mind it, though. It's a smart and it's a great triple there with Mad from Madzi with the camo, so he's really utilizing that perfectly. But I don't mind the, the whole idea of just chucking the power weapon off. It's You're right. It's If I can't have it, neither can you. Um, and we see here, we're on bail with Madzi. Nine kills, leading the slaves for this round. Barcode, he's taken a bit of a backseat, but look at those assists, nine assists. So he's putting in a heap of fire around the map to help his team. Um, but Magic, this has been a great runoff utilizing that camo, picking up that triple. Um, and you can see already, Neutral Bullet started to convert that into ball time. Three people on respawn from Divine, um, just thanks to Madzi's work, means it's really hard for them to put any meaningful time together. Absolutely, and I was just loving that Madzi gameplay there, just pre-firing all the little routes uh, that his opponent could take. Uh, now back on board with Seduce, haven't had much action from him, but he's on six kills already, and the scoreline's starting to bloat out just a little bit in favour of Neutral Bullet. Not over just yet, but 
uh, Divine Minds, they really need to clean up their act if they don't want to drop this first game, Hoots. No, absolutely. On board with Raided now, just seeing if he can make a few moves. Not a huge amount of kills or assists, but um, unfortunately, he's dropped and back onto Barcode. He's actually started to run ball now, so he's moved on to objective. Um, but look at those assists still. Nine. Um, putting in a lot of shots, and now he's just holding the ball here, and they're only 20 seconds off taking this first game. Um, interesting point holding here, rather than actually heading into that attic, just holding on this ball. Nade's coming in everywhere. Manages to pretty much jump over one and get a nade off, but unfortunately he's taken down, raided with the ball, and it looks like he's just going to try and clear out of there. Or, in fact, it looks like he's going to hold. So he does have to be careful, though. He has quite a few neutral bullet players coming. Uh, at him from several angles. He's actually going to back off and leave the ball, which is smart, just try and stay alive. Um, but unfortunately, this sheer weight of numbers, Seduce is going to come in and drop him. Um, and Future Bullet's going to look to just try and get away with this ball. Uh, nice double from Seduce, and all they need is 10 more seconds. So Seduce is probably going to take down Pips here, and then unfortunately, he's dropped. So maybe Divine taking the ball blue and uh, trying to give, I guess, Future Bullet a taste of their own medicine. Yeah, Slays with a double kill there, who it's really using that clam, but to utilize his cover and takes down Barcode. Amazing use of the map geometry there from Slays, putting in a lot of kills for his team. And I'd like to just highlight Slays for a second here on the double digits for his squad. Now on board with Madzi as he tries to find a kill, does go down and seduce with that ball. He can see him you know, clambering around there, trying to rack up points for his team. He's just going to scrape together those final points and they're going to take game one, Hoots. Yeah, it was unfortunately all four dead at the end there for Divine Mind. Not much you can do when there's the other team only needs a few more seconds of ball time. So um, great way to wrap that up. That's the first game done, but um, it was pretty comprehensive, both slaying and objective. They just really couldn't get into it, um, Divine Mind, unfortunately. So they'll be looking forward to taking the opportunity for the next game to try and peg one back. Absolutely, and I think it boils down a little bit to those rotations. I, I feel Nutribullet was able to move the ball around the map a little bit more fluidly and rack up of those points while uh, Divine Mind is a little bit more scrappy, you know, just string together five or so seconds there and uh, end up losing the ball. So round one goes to Nutribullet, but I wouldn't count Divine Minds out just yet. They're just as hungry. And highlighting some of the stats here, 20 bomb for Barcode and Madzi, uh, Seduce and Pratt with 14 apiece themselves. And double digit assist for Barcode, so really performing for his squad. Accuracy across the board, you know, is it a surprise that all of these guys are pulling up big numbers in the accuracy department, Hoots? No, not at all, but even the, the damage dealt, Barco just, just throwing so much fire down on the map. It's Prady's, you know, obviously he played a lot of objectives, so you wouldn't expect him to be dishing out a huge amount of damage, but that's just massive from Barco. 5,915. Um, he was the one putting the shots in. He played objective when he needed to, but you mentioned before, Justin, it, it just felt like that, um, that Neutral were happy to hold the ball either side, really. Um, they could do it at blue, they could do it up in the attic, it, it really didn't matter. And I think one of the big things with Barco is control of that camo. Every time he used it, super effective. And um, even Madzi, when he got it once or twice, was able to pick up some triples here and there um, and, and break setups. And that's what that camo is there for, it's to break setups and he used it perfectly. Absolutely. And I love seeing a little bit of body shooting because these guys, they're good friends, but today they're rivals and they've been trying to make the best squads to play against each other. And I love to see a little bit of that cheeky banter going on in game. Um, but it does translate to a win for Nutribull off that one. Maybe maybe a little bit of the trash talk getting to Divine Mind's heads. Yeah, the thing that was interesting was Barcode was just absolutely roaming the map out in the open everywhere, putting down shots, and, and they just couldn't drop him. He's playing with this level of confidence that just opens the map up for his team so, so well um, in that odd ball game. It just means that your own teammates can be running the ball through pretty open areas to get to another point. They can move the ball so much more freely and rotate where they need to. Um, so he was fantastic that game. Absolutely. But we are moving on to this next game, Slayer. Bizarre, we've already seen it uh, with CTF. And uh, I feel like they would play quite a bit differently. Is there anything that you'd like to see um, from the previous series that we've seen on CTF Bazaar? Well, the one thing that's different, I guess, when you go into a Slayer is that the spawn system completely changes. So rather than spawning at the same base or in different areas of that base each time, you can spawn all over the map. So it's it's a it's a time when, as a, as a player, you need to be aware of everything around you 360 degrees. Um, so you can be dominating in one position, but the next thing you know, someone's easily spawned behind you, run up and, and smack you in the back. So 
Um, that's something that's going to be interesting to see in terms of setups and where where teams choose to go. Are they moving around a lot given the spawn system trying to find... That, well, that's the other question as well, right? I mean, have these teams figured out the spawn system yet? It's pretty similar to past Halos, but knowing those spawn points, knowing that when a certain amount of damage is done here or there, that players are likely to spawn in this spot, um, that's stuff that you know a lot of teams are probably trying to figure out now and, and the top teams will have had a pretty good idea so far and they'll be able to utilize that to get the win. Yeah, absolutely. Um, collapsing on those spawners, and we have that big open area on the map as well. It's I, th I think speed on those collapses and rotating is just going to be so critical. You can't be caught in the no man's land in the center of the map. You're just easy pickings. There is You can be shot from so many different angles. You're just a sitting duck. So those collapses on the spawners, they're, they're going to have to do them swiftly. Otherwise, they're going to be caught out. But that's what that overshield, I guess, changes in terms of if you've got that overshield, you've got it in, you can be that crazy person standing in the middle of the map just putting shots everywhere. Um, you know, it gives you that extra layer of protection. You can take more shots. You're pretty much like wearing a helmet in a, in a game of footy and you can just be running straight through people. Um, so the control of that's going to be absolutely critical and that in turn leads to the ability to try and lock down those rockets. And we've seen what rockets have done even in the, the previous Slayer on streets that we saw in the last series. You know, that can be if used semi-effectively to guaranteed kills. Um, so teams are going to try and use that overshield to, to land those rockets down. But yeah, I'm just not 100% sure where teams will try and set up on this map. Um, if it is going to be a case of holding a particular area or if they will try and run around a lot more freely. It's, um, it's something that I guess being a new game, first tournament we've seen, um, that we're just not really sure how it'll pan out. Uh, well, Hoots, I'd say considering these teams, uh, you know, they're more the new kids on the block in terms of Halo history. You know, people will call them the Halo 5 kids, and that was a very fast, intense uh, game. And we saw that that shift when Splice came onto the scene and everything just became fast paced and it was just constant collapsing. And I, w I would say that maybe these guys will lean into that a little bit more and worry less about the setups and more of that fundamentals of working together. And that's a strength for some guys that they know each other, they know their team, they know how they like to play, and they'll probably lean into that. I think it's worthwhile as well talking about one of the elements from Halo 5 that we haven't seen transition across completely, which is the thruster pack. You know, something that everyone had back in Halo 5 and was a massive part of every individual fight. It's now a piece of equipment. Um, you know, it, are people finding it as useful? I haven't seen a huge amount of use for it yet um, in the games that we've seen so far that the thruster pack has been on. It seems people are favoring the repulsor and the grapple, uh, the grapple hook a bit more, but you know, that, that thruster pack was such an integral part of Halo 5 that I imagine we will see certain plays start to try and whenever they have the chance, pick that up and gravitate back because it is something that can change the every single fight. Absolutely, couldn't agree more. And I mean, talking about that thruster, and I don't know if you've found it, with Halo 5, you, you expect it to be there, the muscle memory, you know, the dip left or the right, a little bit of a crowd to jump and then thrust to the side. And because you don't always have that anymore, that muscle memory when you're taking a 1v1 fight, how often is that, you know, that switch in your brain goes, I'm going to utilize the thruster here. Um, but the repulsor, it's kind of, you move it, you use it to move around the map and, you know, you doing jumps and things like that and it's a little bit less in the moment that say utilizing a thruster would be so maybe a little bit of that muscle memory not kicking in but i think we'll see players utilize each of those pieces of equipment as we go forward and the meta kind of, kind of forms itself now you're speaking my language as you know someone who's getting a little bit older and <laughs> struggling a little bit more in, in halo games as each one comes out i've found that i have often falling back thinking i have that thruster pack in my back pocket and and, and smashing the X button and I'm, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just standing still and I'm, I'm a sitting duck. So um, yeah, that, that's something that a lot of players are gonna have to get used to. For some of these players who you said are new Halo, uh, uh, you know, started with Halo 5, that it's it's something they may come to expect from every game and now it's taken away. It was a massive part of the sandbox. So um, not having that there is, is something that will be, will be challenging for some, but you know, I mean, just look at the quality of play we've already seen. The game's been out for five days or not even five days. Um, and we're seeing top quality play from some great teams through many of whom have actually just come together in the last couple of couple of days as well. So it just bodes really well for, for the, the rest of the roadmap for the rest of the year heading into October for the World Championships of 2022. But meanwhile, we're getting ready now. Um, as we said before, Slayer on Bazaar. We've got the Rockets, the OS, that grapple shot's there down bottom mid as well. First to 50 kills and uh, Justin, I'm gonna hand it over to you. No worries, and I hope to see some grapple plays in this with that rocket. 
death from above and we're just loading into the players now and you know neutral bullet the one up in the series but i would not count divine minds out there's some hungry boys ready for victory and we're starting it off again with barcode who is just such an absolute monster putting in some shots trying to push them off that looks like they're trying to collapse on the rockets here slay is getting the better of barcode they're putting him into the respawn screen now on board with my boy ali berserk he does get sent into respawn as well. Prady's trying to get some angles here for his team. Trying to get the clean up on Pips, but he just sneaks away. Sneaky little beaver, and there's the rocket and slays there. Like, leave Pips alone. That's my friend, and he gets taken down at the double doors. Uh, now on board with Madzi with those rockets. Still got both to play with. We'll have to see if he can set up a bit of a collapse for his team here, Hoots. I think they've got OS there as well, so Perfect just sits there, waits for Pips to run through the alleyway and drops. Interesting that he, yeah, decided to, to stay here at Rocket Spawn with these rockets rather than move around. <laughs> That's ballsy, <laughs> putting a rocket down with teammates running around, but it worked out perfectly and grabbed a second kill. So two kills from two rockets. That's exactly what you want out of that. And now he's moving into the bar and he's just probably sussing out where the other team is spawning, but it looks like they're spawning in the back flag. So he's going to have a bit of time to run around freely in this bottom mid. Um, but still, most of this Divine Mind squad pinned down in the back here. Um, and Madzi looks like he's he's got the scent and he's heading in. Yeah, you can see he's being so calculated with his movement. It's like, yeah, there's Berserk. He's a bit weak, but I'm not going to collapse in there. He's, all his mates are in there hanging out, ready to collapse on Madzi as he goes in. He finds himself a kid kill. His patience paying off, and scoreline, we're just going to highlight that for a second. Neutral Bullet's got all the fruit in the blender and making themselves a nice smoothie for breakfast, and Divine Mind's struggling a little bit once again, Hoots. Yeah, this is this is getting pretty, uh, pretty nasty pretty quickly, really. We're just seeing... Um yeah, then race out to a, a, a very big lead. It's uh, across the board, really strong slays coming from both Deduce and Barcode here. We're on board with Barcode as he's moving up into this top balcony, here, putting shots across the map um, and using that cover really well as well. That's one of the advantages, even though you might feel like you're out in the open on that balcony, those little ledges there can provide great cover and he's just peeking from this bar and um, it looks like even shots just straight there through double mid, uh, double doors, I mean, sorry. Um, and picking up assists, he's just running right and, and out to a 13 kill lead already. This one looks like it's getting out of hand quite quickly. Yeah, and Madzi with that OS and the thruster pack to utilize, picks himself up two kills. I think he thought a grenade dropped in his feet there. <laughs> And he's grabbing that bulldog ready to uh, bite some people as well. He's got one more thrust uh, charge uh, in the bank, it looks like. And he's trying to cut off those angles in the double doors, putting in so much damage across the map. And now it looks like the collapse is starting to form up. Madzi sniffing out Pips up there. He goes down with some team fire going through. Raided, managing to get better of barcode. But look at that in the kill feed, just people dropping left and right. And Madzi maybe hanging it out uh, down bottom mid a little bit too long there, Hoots, and does go down. Yeah, that can be a tricky spot if you get stuck down there because the jump to get out of there is actually, it, it's not hard, but it just, it leaves you super exposed and takes a while. We've got these rockets up now. Obviously, you know, you can nade them out if you if you want. So that looks like what Prades was trying to do, but I think they're still there on respawn berserk. He's just sitting at the base of the rocket stairs, but I don't think he's going to be able to get up there while his shields are like that. And uh, I think rockets are, have been taken, as you can see, it's Madzi with them again, and, and well done there from Berserk, who managed to, to wait a little bit before going in and attacking and getting those rockets back. But as you can see, Neutral Bullet are the ones who recover them again. Prady's bottom mid with them, uh, running around. That OS is popping in 25 seconds, but he's got these rockets. He's probably going to put them to work with a predictive rocket up at Slays. Must have got the call out. Doesn't connect completely to finish the kill, but I'm sure he's damaging a bit. He's going to head in and try and clean this kill up. Yeah, I love what uh, Pratt was doing there, and he put some damage into Berserk, just hanging around that camo, the ca commando spawn there. He's just moving around the map really well, putting in damage for all his teammates, checking those angles, and look at him just sniffing players out. Where's the next one, boys? Where's the next one? Racking up another doubles there if he wants it. Slays desperately trying to stay alive. Unfortunately, uh, Pratt not able to add that kill to the stat line as he runs out of ammo, but he's really just sniffing them out. And speaking of sniffing, there's the Bulldog Woof Woof. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just looking at Barcode in the in the scoreboard here. 11 kills, 9 assists. So he's just he's just going going nuts. He's just been running around bottom mid for a lot of the map, uh, which is which is crazy. But seeing an interesting route here, Prady's not choosing to go down the drop vent, but it is a great spot there to, to hide and take cover. Um, he's still got this bulldog, and he's going to try some long range shots. Don't connect, but Slaves once again uh, looks like he's caught unawares. Manages to get away, but. 
this will be interesting. Oh, we've stopped away, so that doesn't matter. But Slay's getting away through the river there. Um, and now we're on board with Pips. He's only got two kills. He's been struggling quite a bit. Um, and he's stuck in this little cubby area that we were speaking about before. So he's going to want to try and do some damage and get out of there quickly because, as we've seen there, it's just a really easy area to get caught and stuck in. Yeah, neutral bullet. He's just running away with it. They're 43 to 23. 20 kills the difference of almost doubling the scoreline right now. And you can see it. Neutral Bullet are just so comfortable moving around the map. They can just go where they like, look at the angles that they like, and um, Divine Mind's not really answering them um, in the kill department, unfortunately. Look at those nades from Berserk, desperately trying to cut off those angles. Does manage to nab himself a kill, though, Boots. So Berserk trying to do everything he can to keep his squad in. Yeah, unfortunately, just look at these scores coming in from Neutral Bullet. And it's not just the kills, but it's the assists. It just shows the team shots working so much stronger. Um, so, you know, it's... It was a series we thought might be a little bit closer than this, but I think this just shows how strong this neutral bullet team really is. Like this, this is a this is a spanking in every sense of the word. It's, it's potentially going to be a spectacular <laughs> if uh, if Divine Mind can't nab another kill or two. But um, this has just been across the board super impressive from neutral bullet. Yeah, this is certainly not an off-brand neutral bullet blender from Target. This is. The genuine brand, just such high quality sportsmanship from these guys and just absolutely stomping this other squad, which was arguably, you know, it was a big discussion leading up, you know, who is the number one squad? And it was both of these guys, but I think it's pretty clear that Neutral Bullet, they're just making making their move on the ANZ scene and establishing themselves as the top squad. Yeah, absolutely. You saw at the end then the spectacular medal. So that's a, a 20 kill stomping, um, which I didn't think we expected, Josh. I'm not sure about you. No, they got the full steak dinner. They got the dessert and all. Uh, I did not expect it to be that much of a blowout on the Slayer. 50 to 30, you guys were saying it. It just shows the dominance of the Neutral Bullet squad. Amazing stuff from, uh, from both teams, really. But Neutral Bullet just obviously... Uh, head and shoulders above there, at least in the winner's final. I do want to call out, and it's a narrative we spoke of earlier, but we should rehash it because I think it's relevant and also for those just tuning in, and that's about this squad that they've, they they haven't, the Divine Mind squad, they didn't go into this tournament with the team lineup that was announced. Now, would that have changed the result? Would Junior in place of Raided have actually changed the result of this? I don't know. I don't think anyone can know the true answer to that but because Raided himself is an excellent player, you know, formerly known as Snakey. We've seen him play on main stages at at, uh, at ESL events and, and former HCS events here in ANZ. But when you don't have your full lineup hoots, or at least the one you were planning to use originally, that's going to make an impact. Yeah, but it goes back to what Justin said before in terms of with the roadmap and everything now, having some certainty of what events are coming up, meaning that you really should try and keep that team together. So that's one thing that I remember we used to speak about this, you know, 10 years ago, Josh, is at the end of events, just hoping that teams would stick together to keep that teamwork and, and cohesion going. A lot of times people are quick to make moves. And so, you know, whilst it's been disappointing for Divine Mind that they've been um, taken care of pretty easily in this round, um, assume that they'll at least you know stick together and, and work on things because like we said this game's only been out for five days they haven't had a huge amount of time to prepare very very true very true and justin you know we, as we're going through some of these highlights it really was just the neutral bullet show um you know I, I still stand by what i said i think it might have been a difference but how much it would have been i don't know when it seems like there was just such a clear differentiator even if you take out that one player we saw even the likes of let's say pips there who was unfortunately falling behind a little bit i saw that he was stuck on just you know, a couple of digit hills, if that, you know, you know, two or three hills at one stage. I don't know if he got much higher. So, you know, it may not have changed the result, right? I don't think so. Um, and circling back to not having Junior there, sometimes it's not up to the quality of the player that you have replaced them. Sometimes it's just the mentality of, you know, we've got this bill coming in and, you know, it's like those other guys have had their full squad together and, you know, once those doubts start creeping in, I mean, Hoot said earlier today that Halo is a very mental game, and as soon as those doubts start creeping in, they take root, and that can just cost you games. Yeah, indeed it can. Look, regardless, no matter what was in the mentals, we are going to be seeing Divine Mind go down into the lower bracket final. So we'll see how that match is going to go down. And of course, Neutral Bullet into the grand final of 
our, you know, our first ever Halo Infinite event here for ANZ. I think that's really awesome to see them there. A surprise to absolutely no one. They were paying a dollar one at the bookie. And uh, look, I, I think it's almost a certain that they're going to be taking this one out considering the way that they just played in that winner's bracket final. Hoots, with all of that said, if you were going to be in the team, which is likely, just given results, to be Divine Mind, who we may see in the grand final, you know, after that series we just saw, if if you're the coach, what do you tell this squad? How can we possibly come back from what we just saw in that series? Yeah, well, I, I think it's really, uh, I think it's, uh, sorry, I think we might have had a technical hiccup there. So we're going to be moving on. We do have our interview lined up. So I think we've got Madzi. So let's have a chat to the uh, to the one kid there as well. Madzi, I think we've got you. G'day. Thank you uh, very much hey, for uh, for joining us. Congratulations on the win. Mate, we were just talking thank about, you, you know, the expectations coming into this series. Uh, we think that, you know, we kind of expected this would be the result. Maybe a little bit more of a dominating performance than what we expected. Tell me, from uh, from your perspective, were the results what you expected? Was the scoreline what you thought it would be? Uh, yeah, I'd say it was as expected, but... The score, I didn't expect the scorelines to be like that. I thought they played a bit better. I mean, nonetheless, they did. They played pretty decent. But I thought, yeah, we just, we just played the better team. Maddie, I'm, I'm interested in your oddball strategy. It seemed like you guys were willing to hold the ball both down in blue as well as up in the attic. Do, do you guys have a set place where you do prefer to hold that, or is it a case of we'll just take it wherever we can get it? Uh, with oddballs, there's like multiple spots on the map where you can set up. You can set up gold, uh, silo, and elevator side. So regardless of what side of the map you're holding, you can just hold it there. And if we're holding the right positions and we're watching where they're pushing from, we'll be fine. Now, Madzi, my boy, Halo 5, you were kind of known as having the best pistol shot. It was kind of like your little baby, you know, you take it in into bed with you at night as your teddy bear. How do you feel that we've gone away from the pistol, we've got the battle rifle, are you hurt? Are you worried about the future? Nah, I'm loving it, man. The BR is nice. It's very clean. I'm loving it. I do miss the pistol, the single shot, but I still really enjoy the BR. It's really good. That's actually a really interesting point, Mads, because it's something we touched on, you know, a couple of us here, we're, uh, you, you know, we're dinosaurs, we're OGs, and the, um, BR is love, BR is life, but obviously you made a real name for yourself in Halo 5. I do still distinctly recall starting the Madzy fan club. Now you, you said you missed club, the pistol. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, let, let, let me ask you, uh, what's your take on the sidekick versus BR and being the primary um, competitive starting weapon for Halo Infinite? Oh, the BR 100%. The sidekick, it has bloom, uh, shoots a little bit too quick. Uh, I don't, I, the BR is definitely the way to go for sure. I, I'm so glad they went with the BR. Glad to see that. Glad, glad to see that you uh, provided the correct answer, Madzi. I didn't want to have to cancel the fan club, but no. In all seriousness, mate, uh, <laughs> I, I really appreciate yeah, having you on. Um, looking like you guys yes. are putting on a very, very dominant performance. I can't wait to see you guys finish out this tournament, but no doubt uh, represent ANZ as well, mate. So good luck in the grand final, and thanks for joining us, buddy. All right, thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Awesome. So there you heard it from Madzi, uh, superstar, I think, and definitely a future guy to look out for on the uh, on the main stage when it comes to global events as well. I mean, Justin, you've been able to see a lot of him in the Halo 5 matchups as well. Like, it's been a couple of years, I guess, since uh, at least us here at ESL and coming from the perspective of HCS, have seen Madzi compete on uh, any kind of uh, high tier level, but yourself and the Halo Australia team have seen him around the traps. Has he always has he remained high tier coming into Halo Infinite? What have your thoughts? Is this exactly where you expected to find him? Exactly where I expected. Madzi and Barcode were two highlight players that I just knew would rise to the top. And throughout Halo 5, you just saw them creep up the placings and move into that top spot. We saw immunity dominate for so long. And I think it's time for a new dynasty for ANZ Halo. I think so as well, mate. We'll see what the old guns have to say about it. But look, we'll see how the rest of this tournament's going to unfold. Uh, for now, we do want to give a shout out to a tournament that's coming up 
We talked about it a couple of times throughout this uh, throughout this broadcast. The Game Pass has PC games, open series featuring Halo Infinite, Smash.gg forward slash Xbox. We already talked about it. An all expenses paid trip to HCS Raleigh, flight, hotel, and team pass. I see on the Twitterverse that the team passes are all sold out for Raleigh. I'm going to assume that this is going to be one of your final chances to get a team pass to this event. It is coming up December 11th, not too far away, only a few weeks away. Smash.dg forward slash Xbox is the destination to go to. And look, Hoots, that's one thing that we haven't touched on. We've talked about the hype around the HCS Rally Major, but the fact that it was sold out so quickly, and yeah, obviously you're gonna see a whole lot of North American teams there, Da being in North America, but just uh, the global presence that Halo is and the hype that was surrounding it. Five days after launch, I think it was only a few days it took for Raleigh to be sold out. Absolutely nuts, right? Yeah, it's crazy. And it's not just that. It's the amount of teams we've seen signing up to all these online qualifiers. I mean, you know, the numbers we've had here in Australia have been fantastic. In the US, they had over 400 teams. I think I, I saw a tweet earlier saying it's the it's the most teams ever in any Halo event. Um, so for it to the game for only be out for five days and then you have so many people signing up early on and I'm sure there are a lot of people who just couldn't get their teams ready in time given the short notice. Um, I think it just bodes so well for what we're going to see in the future. Yeah and I mean that was something to shout out about the ANZ scene. Now for those people who aren't from ANZ watching from home, this may not sound like a big deal for you but for, he for us here we had 37 teams sign up for HCS ANZ Open number one and with that notice hoots that we were talking about with, with almost zero, we're diving straight into it. That's a very impressive turnout, and it actually is one of the highest numbers that we've had for a few years. We've already talked about here in the Australian New Zealand region that uh, Halo's been kind of uh, dormant, or at least it's been a lot um, more niche than it, what it has been in the past. I mean, and again, I've shouted out a few times, Lunchy and the Halo Australia guys have done a fantastic job at keeping it alive until now, but getting that, that resurgence back for us in such a big way uh, is really, really impressive to see. And I have no doubts at all we're going to be smashing those numbers as we go forward. I have just in my ear heard of an update in the lower bracket as well. Idolize versus Nuke and Pave. That's a very uh, interesting one to see who's going to go on to play Divine Mind. 1-1 one, one in their best of three series at the moment. So that's in the lower bracket. One of those teams are going to be kicked out and they're 1-1. One, one. They're going to map number three. So look, that's a very interesting update right there, Justin. Absolutely, and uh, he would be very upset with me, but I've got to back my boy Lunchy in that one. A lot of DMs saying, Justin, I, I've still got it. I can do it. I'm going to go back and compete and prove that I'm still on top, and it seems to be playing out very well for him. And 1-1, one, one, I, I love a tiebreaker. I love it. And the competition, it gets my blood up, gets the heart racing, and it just makes it more exciting, the cast, and more exciting for the people at home. Um, and hopefully that last map is an absolute banger. And whoever comes out on top on that, they're going to be hot, ready to go uh, for Divine Mind. So they better watch out because those two teams down in the lower bracket, they're no slouches and Divine Mind better take them seriously. Indeed, they should. We're going to get the update for that game in just a moment. For now, we're going to go to a quick break. Guys, this is the HCS ANZ Open number one. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you share the stream. We're going to be back for the next game, our Losers Bracket Final, right after this.
So the best teams are probably the ones rolling in from Halo 5. Obviously, they're all very skilled players, been very, very good at Halo 5, even MCC. I've been playing them lately and getting stomped at my old love, Halo 3, although the game's not the same. I'll take that little caveat. Say our best competition would definitely have to be Seduce's team of Seduce, Barcode, Prades, and Madzi. Their team and our team has a really good opportunity and chance to do well overseas. The biggest threat to us, we feel, is Divine Mind, you know, with that rivalry between the duos. We also know they're comprised of good players that have been there, done that, you know. They've got Junior and Berserk, who have been to Worlds. To pick a team to win, it would definitely be Seduce's team. Just with the sheer experience that they've got in that team is solid. They're just individual beasts. And I guess throughout matchmaking so far, uh, they've been pretty dominant. I've been playing with them as well. So I'd I see how they've been playing and they've been playing really well. So there's two teams that we've got our eye on, two teams that we can really push each other. We almost want to work together. Like we want to beat these guys like crazy, but at the same time, we both have the same goal of doing well internationally. So that team is Divine Mind. And then you've got the old school team Immunity. So you've kind of got like the newer era and like the older era. So it'll be super interesting to see what happens in the competition. I mean, X5 looked pretty hot with the with the new squad. Been around for Yonks, but with, with Vamped as an addition, I think that they'll do really well. Barcode is one of the cracked individual players here in ANZ. He's always consistent, always performing well. Madzi is also a standup player, obviously Seduce. So these guys are at the top of their game, top of their league, and they're they're quite strong. So definitely look out for them uh, coming into this week. Slays as well. He's he's a re really talented, like individual. He just you know he brings so much to that team, and he can just create so many opportunities for them. I think Barcode's definitely a player that people are going to have to watch out for uh, going forward into the future. Is he perfect? Not necessarily, but uh, he's got a lot a lot of things going for him, and he's young. And if he can. Uh, you know, keep his head straight on his shoulders and take some feedback here and there. I think he'll be probably, yeah, one of the scary players in all the regions going forward. I definitely say Immunity was the dark horse of the tournament, I feel. Those guys know how to play Halo and they've been doing it for the past decade and a bit. So, you know, who knows what they can pull out of their bag. Or even Team SSU, which is also comprised of a few older players such as Ads, Dante, Rattles and Evil. They're also, you know, they're, they're grinding this game out. The team that I might form could be the Dark Horse. Let's see, let's see. Obviously, my team's going to win. Um, nah. Team Immunity, who obviously I learned a lot off of, and personally think they're all really good players and have all really good mindsets. Some people might look at that team and say, well, you know, they haven't really been playing for years. They can't just come back and be the best. But I definitely think if there's a team to be a Dark Horse, it's a team like that. Uh, players who've got a lot of experience, a lot of motivation. But you can't take away all of that experience that Team Immunity have accrued over the years. Like they're still one of the best teams because they know how to play as a unit. They know how to play in twos, threes, fours. Any situation that they're given on the map, they've most likely been in before. So it's just gonna take them a bit of time to get used to the game and they're definitely going to be a top three team. I'm not too sure on Dark Horse teams, but what I will say is that even just playing the playlist now, you, you keep stumbling across people who seem to be pretty decent, you know, and I keep stumbling across people who I've never played before, don't even recognize Gamertag. So whether or not they're keyboard players or not, I'm not too sure, but you know, it's really exciting to see that there's potentially some hidden talent out there that could sort of maybe do what I did back in Halo 3 and sort of pull some people together and come out of nowhere. On behalf of the entire Halo team, it's my honor and privilege to announce that your Spartan journey begins today. Right now, you can download and start playing Season 1 of Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer beta on Xbox One, Series S, X, and PC. This is an amazing moment for our team to get to celebrate this as we finally get to release the game and play with you all online. See you online, Spartans. Initially, I was a doubter. I have to admit, so for the longest time when Seduce first came to me and he's like, dude, I think it's going to drop early. I'm like, don't say that, man. I don't want to get disappointed when it doesn't. Certain things started to make me raise an eyebrow like, okay, well, well that's kind of odd. I didn't like believe it because I've just been waiting for this game to come out for so long now. So I'm just, I'm like, you know what, stuff it, I'll wait till December 8th. But I guess it kind of did catch us off guard, but it is a good thing that he came out early. It gives us more time to practice. If you can imagine like this chalkboard at a detective's office and like little thumbtacks going through and we're like red 
textile, drawing all the dots together. That was us pretty much for like a week. We ended up sorting our sleep schedules. So we like slept eight hours and then woke up at 4 a.m. and then we grinded the entire day. There started to be dots that started to appear in the sky. You start to you know, draw the lines between them. It's a better way to get the ball rolling than a surprise release. I think it was, it was really well done. When me and my friends saw the leaks, we... We were kind of skeptical. I was kind of skeptical at first a bit, but then there was like dots that were connecting to another dots and all that stuff. But it was it was a massive surprise. I was really excited and really happy to see that it, um, it actually did come out. And then to then release this roadmap of like a get guaranteed years set of dates and prize pool, just like support for the ANZ region that we've been missing for so long. I think the roadmap's awesome, to be honest. I've never seen something so organized. Gives us actually definitely a lot more clarity around planning things as well, which is good, so. It's super exciting to see Halo's, like especially ANZ getting some love tournament structure wise. There's gonna be like a pro league. There's gonna be lots of events. There looks like there's a lot of events, which is always a good thing. Even like weekly comps for our region. That also looks pretty awesome. I love how they're doing this, how they're, how they're going full force for um, for esports for Halo. 343 really did a good job with the team skins and just all of that sort of esports promotions in the game. The fact that the game's free to play is awesome, so it gives like literally anyone access to the multiplayer version of the game, which means the barrier to entry into competing is basically non-existent. All you need is an Xbox or a PC now. Definitely fun to be playing with the boys, you know, on a fresh experience. And that announcement trailer got me hyped. I was just all giddy and excited. Super excited to, to see how it all pans out. And I can't wait for those major tournaments in uh, in America as well. I can't, can't wait to, to see what's in store.
Ladies and gentlemen, guys and girls, welcome back. This is the HS ANZ Open number one. I'm your host and maniac, now joined on the cast by two of the freshest kids on the block. We do have Bluey and Hoggy. Welcome onto the cast, boys. Uh, it's been an excellent competition and tournament so far. Very, very exciting things. We've obviously got a lot to talk about as we get to the pointy end. We've just got two more series ahead of us. Our lower bracket final and then the grand final, which we'll touch on very, very soon. Hoggy, we've seen a whole lot take place today. And a lot of the players that obviously you've even competed against in the past, tell me, what are some of the highlights for today? And has everything unfolded the way you thought it might have gone? Yeah, I think things are going pretty swimmingly right now for Nutribullet. And I think... There's no real surprise there. We really thought that, but I did not think the Divine Mind wouldn't put up much of a fight, which ended up turning out to be that way. But maybe they can come back now. They're going to be versing Nuke of Pave in the Losers Bracket Final. So maybe they can get a rematch into the final against Nutribullet. I, I'm going to be keen to see that one. And Bluey, for yourself, you know, we haven't seen you on broadcast before. Happy that you can join us here today. Obviously, you've got a bit of experience. You've competed in a couple of ACL events way back in the day. And obviously, Halo 3 is typically your jam. Now here in Halo Infinite, following some of these players, what about yourself? And what have you seen throughout the bracket today that you'd like to probably call out and things that we should pay attention to? I mean, it's overall just been really fierce competition so, par so far. You can definitely tell that a lot of the players that we've been able to watch have just been putting in the absolute grind. The absolute hour, uh, hours in order to get here, you know. Of course, uh, huge shout outs to Nutribullet. They are performing spectacularly, and I think we're going to see that pretty much all the way to the end of the tournament today. Hoggy, to you, we've talked to a few a few times amongst ourselves between uh, Justin and also Hoots about the dynamic of Halo Infinite. Way back in the day when you and I were just little kidlins, we were yeah, playing yeah. against each other in Halo 3, and it was obviously a very, very different game. We've talked about the evolution of Halo, Halo 3 competitive, you know, Reach, 4, 5, and, and here we are with Halo Infinite as well. A lot of things that, um, you know, objectively, at least the competitive community and consensus has been both good and bad, but largely a lot of positivity around Halo Infinite and a lot of these new elements that come into play. We've seen some of the best players of Halo 5 being able to implement them and use them very well in those highlights reel. I love the use of the grapple to try and get control of power weapons and power ups, obviously being able to bring them to you. Um, on Bazaar, we were able to see, you know, being able to grapple, get the rocket launcher down to you down at the bottom market there. How do you think that these pro players have been using them? Do you think they're, they're utilizing them as much as they can? Do you think it's going to develop and evolve from here? What's your kind of take on these new elements? Yeah, I think starting out, players are just learning. They're working out how they can use these things the best way possible. And we saw in the replays, Barcode using it as best he can already, and other players using the Repulsor as much as they can. We haven't really seen too much of Thruster, but I think as, as the game evolves, I think Thruster will come into it more, and we'll see like more of those Halo 5 battles where they're absolutely going to catch out someone. And I think a BR is going to make it a little bit harder because you have to hit three bullets in the burst to sort of get the four shot going. So be able to, be able to thrust around with a, the person having a BR should make it you know, a different dynamic than it did when there was a pistol involved. Yeah, I think so as well. And that's why getting those uh, those pieces of equipment are absolutely vital. But look, we don't want to delay any more than we need to. Let's have a quick look at the bracket and see what's gone down and, and how we got here as a reminder for those playing at home. Our last matchup, we did see Nutribullet go all the way through. They took down Divine Mind 2-0. Bluey, when we saw that score line, was it what you expected? Because it ended up being a bit, a bit of a blowout. Oh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, look, I want to go out of limb here and say that I think Barcode's performance overall on the sticks has been a bit of a warm-up, and he's really just saving himself for those final plays. And I think it's going to be a tough one for him here because there is some really fierce competition coming out of this lower bracket. It doesn't matter which team manages to claw their way through. It's going to be a tough one, and I know Barcode is frothing at the mouth for it. I think he is as well. As we look through this lower bracket, you know, we saw a great run from Idolize. They got the two over at KBM the 2-0 over Carbon, but the 2-1 to Nuke and Pave. And that's what we should talk about here as we get into this matchup in just a second. Before we talk about the Divine Mind versus Nuke and Pave, 
New can pay versus Idolize. 2-1. We didn't catch that on broadcast, but we know that was very close. Hoggy, some of the players in both of these squads, you know, I, I think they were obviously trying to do what they could to make it through the entire tournament. They duked it out. I know that a player dropped from Nuke and Pave there for a second. I think that was either a reconnect or they were able to play with three. It's something I'm going to get admins to confirm. But they ended up finishing that one 5-1 in that final CTF. Uh, is that what we would have expected? Because these players, you know, uh, Justin, our, our co-caster, was talking to me earlier about Lunchy and the rest of the squad that's, uh, or the rest of the team that uh, that makes up that squad, trying to do their best. It, it, did you expect the 2-1 there in the lower bracket and then continuing on? Well, it makes sense that it'll be a 2-1 because the series should be close, right? But you've got three older players on Nuke and Pave. Obviously, they have Junior, which is a massive opportunity for them to capitalize on. And now he has to play his actual team or whatever the situation is. We're not sure at the moment, but he's going to have to play his sort of team at the moment and then the fact that you've got Lunchy on there as well who's a newer addition newer player it's no surprise that these older players even Jace coming back who's now Jokor he, he wasn't the the most amazing player back in Halo 3 but he's proving that he deserves to be here in the top three as he is right now I just had the producer in my ear as well confirming that so there wasn't a dropout the uh, the miscommunication there was that a player had a controller disconnect there for quite a bit of time in the game while they were fumbling around with that, but they still ended up coming through with the W. So I'm keen to see who that was. Maybe Nuke and Pave will get the win here. Who knows? And we'll be able to chat to them either way, even if it's off broadcast. I'm going to catch up and find out who that was. Regardless, let's move on to what's ahead of us. We've got a fantastic matchup for sure. It is the lower bracket final. We've got Divine Mind versus Nuke and Pave. Divine Mind, look, there's no other way to say it. They get clocked there in the winner's bracket final, but they're looking to come back with a vengeance. However, on the opposing side, they're going to have quite a fight because I think there's some spirit there. But look, let's focus on this squad. Pip rated Berserk and Slays. The narrative here is going to be about that substitute player again rated because it's going to be interesting because Junior is going to be on the other side, which is going to have a whole weird dynamic to this whole matchup. But look, the Divine Mind squad, Bluey, what can you tell us about it from what you've seen today? What 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 really stands out from these guys? Uh, like, absolutely, I would say that Berserk is a huge player I want to highlight. We did say on that uh, last game for Rechargeable, I believe it was, just some of the really interesting plays he was making, especially just sacking his life, knowing he had the energy sword and uh, not wanting to put it in the enemy, uh, enemy hands. Is the kind of, like, 200 IQ play that you need going into a series like this, you know? Halo World Championship Sydney Finals for 2018, and he's he's dethroned Team Immunity here before, which in Australia is a huge name and a massive one to take down. So overall, Divine Minds, I know they're going to be coming at it with their A game. Immunity through one name or another dominated for almost a decade. So dethroning them was massive at the Sydney Finals 2018, which Hoggy, you and I had the pleasure of casting that event. It was yeah. fantastic. Divine Mind. Uh, now with Ali on this squad, you know, it's obviously no small names here. And yes, they did just get beaten now, but Ali is obviously one player to really look out for as we move forward throughout the, uh, the, the entire HCS roadmap. Yeah, no, for sure. He's definitely a player to look out for. And he's always been at the top and he's proven that he's still at the top. This team maybe needs a little bit of work right now. You can clearly sell that, see that Neutral Bullet are definitely on top, but they don't have Junior and they've only just picked up a new player or brought in their sub to play with. So it makes it a little hard, but Berserk's always been at the top. He'll help them get there and they'll stay there. Speaking of Junior, let's introduce the team that Divine Mind are up against. We are talking about Nuke and Pave. Now this team, I remember way back when, when I was a wee lad and casting that Oz Halo 2009, it might've been a couple of ACL events after that. Nuke and Pave was a name that was reckoning the scene. And uh, look, if, if you were up against Luka Pave, you knew that you had to be shaking in your boots. This squad now made up of Lunchy, Jacko, Junior, and Mantis. A really big name in the ANZ scene. And, uh, you know, a bit of, I would say, even an eclectic mix of people here, Bluey, in this squad. Oh, absolutely. You know, like one of the key players that I think we should all be pointing out here. We've name-dropped him a couple of times, but Junior is huge on the Australian scene. Huge even on the world stage. He's had uh, many opportunities to make his face and those thumbs known uh, on stage. And he's certainly like one to be reckoned with when it comes to face to face on the battlefield. Uh, but he's absolutely been performing today and I'm super keen to watch how he does now because he knows that it's time to claw his way out and it's time to get to the top. It's gonna be a really interesting dynamic here, guys. So Junior, normally in the, in the, in the primary lineup for Divine Mind, 
now playing on the team against his own squad while they are competing with a sub. Now, I've been told Junior is not holding back. He's given it his all, which is going to make this matchup all the more exciting because, you know, Junior, he's got some frustrations to let out about the fact that he can't make himself available for all of the opportunities that the roadmap's providing. So I'm really, really keen to see how this is going to unfold. Junior's performance is one to look out for, which is why he's a highlighted player. Now, Hoggy, let's put that entire narrative to the side for a second and just talk about Junior full stop. He's been competing for almost as long as far as I know. I mean, even Ads, you know, Ads has a history of like 17 years in the Australian Halo scene. I'm sure Junior's been around just as long. I know when I first started competing back in 2007, 2008, he was already on the scene and already had made an aid for himself. Yeah, he really has. And even back then, he was teaming with Mantis, and now he's teaming with Mantis again. He's brought in Lunchy and Jakor to help him. He's had to jump into this squad, you could say a little randomly, unfortunately for him and his circumstances, but he's here to win, and he still wants to beat Divine Mind. And don't underestimate my Halo Australia rep, Lunchy. He's in there. He's coming out swinging, so keep an eye out for them. But guys, this is the matchup here. Oddball on streets is where we're going to start things off. We will get to the Slayer recharge, and if we make it in this best of three, we will see a strongholds on live fire. Now look, Oddball streets, Bluey, the coordination between your team is massive. That's the off the rip that, that as soon as you're spawning and you're basically just facing the opposing team straight away, you really need to have your communication down pat, right? It's so key here, especially if you decide to take that bottom mid peak, you can expect to be hit by four BRs straight in the face. So it takes a lot to be able to make the right call straight from the get go and say, okay, boys, we need to make the rotation from this position or to this position. We need to get hold of the objective and we need that rocket launcher. Indeed we do. Ladies and gentlemen, get hyped. This is the lower bracket final. We're going to have Divine Mind versus Nuke and Pave. This game is about to get underway. I hope you are hyped. And uh, I'm going to pass things off to Hoggy as we get this game underway. Yeah, thank you, Josh. Game number one, loses bracket final. We are on board with Slays. He's pushing straight in. He's going to find damage. He doesn't manage to get him. He puts shots down on Lunchy with a free kill. One trade each for the team. His teammate does have rockets, though, and the oddball is still not moved. Rated has the rocket. So good start here for Divine Mind. They'll grab the ball. They'll have two dead on the side of Nuke and Pave. So a beautiful start for Divine Mind. Yeah, I made that call at the beginning of the game that it takes a lot to be able to tell the rest of your team, like, look, don't pick down bottom mid just yet. We need to make a push, and that's exactly what Divine Mind did, going straight to bar side and not looking down bottom mid. Unfortunately, Nuke and Pave were the ones who made that sort of separated split push, and Junior got caught out there. So really unfortunate for them, but uh, really fortunate for Divine Mind. Super strong, strong start off the get-go. Yeah, while you were talking, it was three down for Nuke and Pave, and you can see in the kills on the top right, not a single one of them has a kill, but Junior, he makes up for it. He gets his first kill with that Stalker rifle. They're going to try pushing together down towards Cafe, and uh, Raider's just going to need to stay alive and do the best he can. Mantis is trying to push on him. He will go down, one dead for each team. The ball is in PD. Mantis pushes in, finds another. It's two dead now for Divine Mind. The ball is in the hands of Nuke and Pave. Berserk and Slayer, though, they're pushing in, and they're going to find some kills. Very crucial right now to get some kills on the board, make some space for your team in order to hold that odd ball and get some points, because you, you can see now the differential is so small, and that can change at any moment in the game. But as soon as you start to see a blowout in those points, that's where it gets a little bit unstable, and you really have to coordinate with your team that we have to start making a good hold. That's exactly what Nuke and Pave appear to be doing here right now, sort of flipping the uh, the hold that Divine Mind had on them, and it's looking to work really well for them now. Yeah, Mantis goes down, two dead for Nuke and Pave, so things are looking a little rough, but Lunchy, he's going to stay alive, do what he can, get shots down on Berserk. He managed to get taken down, though. Berserk doing a beautiful job for his team. Back on with Raided, he'll find Jaco or take him down. So the team were coming through nicely for Divine Mind as they take down most of Nuke and Pave, and they'll manage to get themselves a setup on Cafe. Yeah, really good overall setups from both teams. It's very clear that they've put in the hours in order to understand the streets because it is such a complex map. There are so many nooks and crannies, so many jump ups and so many angles to have to hold on a map like streets here. So it takes, again, a lot of that coordination, but you can see that so many team members from the side of Nuka Pave are going down quite quickly. It seems like Divine Mind have overall control at the moment. Yeah, about 20 points to the lead as Lunchy's going to be working with Junior to find some kills. He'll find Pips though, he'll have to back down. Pips is, uh, stays alive somehow. Slays pushes onto Junior, he won't be able to help him though. He stays alive again. 
Pips, Pips takes him out though, and Junior gets taken down as well. Double kill for Pips, and that's a killing spree as well. Three dead for Nuke and Pave. Again, Divine Minds have control of this oddball. Pips is performing so well right now, just laying down the right shots where needed, responding to the calls that are made. You can see on the board right now, eight kills for three deaths. Just as I say that, he faces two, but will he manage to get away right now just on this jump up, standing on vend machi vending machine and being able to challenge back out again? There's no way that Nuke and Pave should have let him get away with that play here, but it just shows how smart of a player Pips is. Yeah, Lunchy on a bit of a flank. Three of his teammates are dead. He manages to clean up Raided. He'll go down again. Divine Mind's keeping perfect control of this oddball. They're up by 30 points, and Bluey, Divine Mind, they're looking very strong right now. Super, super strong, yeah. The holds are good, the setups are good, and most importantly, the slays are good. Like you just called out before, Lunchy was managing to clean up, but the cleanups just aren't enough. You have to be winning your battles overall, and that doesn't seem to be what Nuke and Pave are doing right now. Not sure. Uh, how they could sort of make an adjustment on that. But remember that Oddball is a best of three round game type. So even if they do lose out in the first round, they could come back in the second. Yep, nine kills each for Slays and Pips. Pips is taking fire. He's just trying to milk some time the best he can, see if he can get his teammates to help him. They won't be able to. So Nuke and Pave are trying to get control of the Oddball for the first time. Rockets are up as well. Lunchy's going to grab those. So. He's going to use them to good use, though. He'll make a play a week and try to stay alive with this Rockets as best he can. He only has one left. So, again, Nuke and Pave, they have control of this odd ball. They have the Rockets. Let's see if they can keep a good setup going. If Nuke and Pave can keep the setup right now, Lunchy using that Rocket, and he does manage to trade, which is still good for them, better than him whiffing or just having to waste the Rocket. He does manage to get a trade, which is going to give his team a little bit more time to sort of readjust themselves, maybe hold the ball for a little uh, longer. But as I say that, they do get cleaned. We just had four down there on the side of Nuke and Pave just for a millisecond, which is really bad because it just opens up the map for the Vine Mind to be able to get in and flip that hold that Nuke and Pave. Nuke and Pave, they have a little bit of a pincer going on the oddball. They haven't really had much of a chance to hold it for too long as Jakor tries to put shots down on Pips, makes him one shot. His teammate goes down next to him. So the teammate of Berserk will come in. He can't get him. His teammate comes in and cleans Jakor up. Still two dead. Divine Minds have the ball again. And Nuke and Pave, they still can't get the slays out to even get hold of the oddball for more than 10, 15 seconds at a time. And you can see that by the scoreboard where they're up by 50 points. A minute and a half left in this round here, and that's got to be coming down to the crunch point for Nuke and Pave just on this first round because these are five-minute rounds here. It does seem incredibly short, but in a game like Oddball where time is literally everything, it does start to bear down its weight. And especially when you have teammates uh, on the end of Divine Mind like Slays and like Pips, even Berserk here, again, we highlighted him before, but he's got 14 kills on the board, just putting down massive kill pressure alongside his seven assists. This team just looks so strong, so coordinated right now, and you can see that they desperately want to get into that grand final. Yeah, again, Junior just trying to play his life. He won't be able to. Rockets are up in five seconds. So this is Nuke and Pave's chance. If they can get these Rockets, they might be able to bring the game back. Slay's staying alive for his team, which is perfect. He's got the Stalker rifle. Maybe he can put that to use. There's one minute left on the clock, 60 points the lead. Rockets are probably in the hands of Nuke and Pave. They are. He'll take down one. He makes one weak. Again, two dead for Nuke and Pave, though. So Divide Mind still have control. Oddball's just kind of sitting there waiting for somebody to pick it up. Pips tries to charge in. Doesn't manage to get him. He'll back down. Jakor needs to stay alive and get the call outs to his teammates to get him over here. Pips is going to push in for a 1v1. He looks like he's got an AR against him. Pips is just peeking, 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 and he takes him down. Pips with the beautiful shots. He's using that AR perfectly. He'll go down, but Pips making light work of Jockle with the AR. Definitely feels like it's uh, deviated into a bit of a Slayer match right now because Nuke and Pave really just need to get kills on the board in order to actually get the space and grab that ball. It's becoming really difficult for them in order to do that. But what we are seeing is Divine Mind just being able to be like, oh, okay, well, you guys want kills. We can do that just better. We can make space for ourselves and we don't even need to grab the ball because of the tremendous lead that we have here. Just as I'm saying this, it seems like five seconds left on the scoreboard. Four, three, two... One does come to the end of the round. It was so easy for them just holding that objective there at the end. Nuke and Pave just could not get any shots. Yeah, with only eight seconds left, it was four down for Nuke and Pave, so it was rough. Easy for Pips to get the kills. <laughs> Bit of a weird spawn for Pips. He's facing backwards, but it doesn't matter. He'll turn around. Oddball's ready to be picked up. Berserk might go straight for this Bulldog. I'd like this play. I'd love to see him pick up the, 
the Bulldog gets some use for it. He'll find Lunchy, put some shots out. He finds Mantis as well. Back down. Great shots from him. Rockets are still up. Let's see if uh, Divine Mind can grab those. His teammates might have grabbed the Bulldog because it is not there. He's getting double teamed by Lunchy and Mantis. Lunchy does not care. He's going straight in. Perfect work from him. Three dead now for Divine Mind. So maybe Nuke and Pave can get the ball finally as Mantis might try to push in. Yeah, a bit strenuous on Nuke and Pave there, but maybe it was just the switch up in the map spawns that uh, Nuke and Pave needed in order to make their own coordinated push. It felt like off the get-go they had their own play planned and they kind of made the read of what Divine Mind did. And in fact, Divine Mind took uh, what uh, New Compave did at the beginning of last round, and they sort of split off into the middle, and it didn't work out great for them seeing their players get picked off at that vending machine side. Yeah, things pretty even, even though Lunchy gets taken down. The ball will be sitting here ready for Divine Mind to pick up. He gets a double kill. Beautiful work. Pip's pushing around. He'll see Junior get a shot out for his teammate. Let's see if Berserk can get him. Berserk does get him. Slays goes down. One dead now for either team. But Pips is just going to milk some time. This is his perfect chance to get some more time going for his team. He'll get flanked. He'll go down. Two dead for Divine Mind. Shots coming out from Lunchy. And his teammate might be able to clean him up. He won't. But Berserk had to back down. And Nuke and Pave, they've got the ball now, Bulldog in hand. Let's see if they can rack up some time. Yeah, it seems like even though they've got the objective right now, they're really struggling to make a move from this pink street, you know. Lunchy is kind of pushed back right now. You can see he wants to peek, but every time he, he tries, that there's just another member of Divine Mind that has eyes on him, and he's sort of getting flanked from every position right now. But he actually manages to take down Pips with that Bulldog play. Really good patience coming out from Lunchy there, because he knows that his team needs this setup in tram side in order to start putting some time on the board. Rated, he still doesn't have a kill. He's had a rough round this time. He pushes in to try to see if he can get shots for his teammates to take one down. Pips uh, Jr. does. So it's one dead for each team. Bulldog in hand. Three down now for Divine Minds. Rockets in hands of Mantis. He takes down one. Three dead for Nuke and Pave. The ball is just sitting out the front of Tram. Berserk does not want to push it. He's going to use it to bait. And maybe he will grab it, and he does. He, he, he's not going to be able to get too much time, I don't think, as Mantis is in front of him, though. It seems like both teams for this round are just playing very fl uh, frantically at the moment. It seems to be more based around kills than really holding the objective. I think both teams are really putting the pressure on each other right now. And no one is really able to make a good, solid hold. Mantis is just going to be running dumpster side, trying to take the ball up to that, uh, that arcade sort of ramp street area, but he just gets stopped in his tracks. I, I guess that's still good for him, though, because they did manage to make a little bit of a lead with the ball. But as players go down, that lead is going to disappear very quickly. Yeah, a lot of scrap time. We're almost two and a half minutes into the five-minute timer, and we've still only seen 40 points gained from both teams. So, oddball. This this oddball's gone interesting compared to all the others. And, and the previous round, for example, the previous round, we got to 100 points with plenty of time left on the clock, and we still we're only two minutes and a half left on the clock, and the scores are now even, 25 all. Mm, it might speak volumes to just sort of the uh, the frantic nature of streets in itself. You know, as a team. We mentioned in the opening of this map that you do have to have really strong coordination in order to be able to make these good kills matter and turn them into a good setup. And just as I say that, you know, Slays makes a fantastic kill there. That double is going to provide him a little bit of space, but they're not really carrying the ball, even though they get these kills. Not too sure what's going on. Maybe they've cracked the code a bit and realized, okay, we need to focus more on just the asset denial side and making sure that there's not enough players in uptime to get a hold of it. Yeah, Lunchy's got three players pushing him. He does have the Bulldog, though, so use this to advantage, stay behind corners, and uh, get shots out when he needs to. Ball in the hands of Duke and Pave. Finally, they might be able to get a chance to get a setup going, and Divine Mind is pointing on the other side of the map. He'll be challenged by Raided. Put the shots down, stay back. And I'd love to see him sit back even more and use this uh, Bulldog to his advantage, because it's, it's something that's been added to the game, and... It's a three-shot kill, and it will kill faster than a four-shot BR. So I'd love to see him just do exactly what he's doing right now and just wait for Raider to push him. He Lots finds him, and he does take him out. Very nice. Good little boxer kill from him there. He knew that his enemy was going to come in close, so that's why he had that bulldog in that little uh, in that PD side cubby just waiting for someone to peek out. We are a minute 46 into this game, and it only did seem like at about uh, you know the two-minute mark that Nuke and Paved actually managed to get a really strong hold, and they are continuing that but they are coordinating well enough to know that, okay, the enemy team is coming in, Divine Mine is coming in, drop the ball, we need to get these shots down because we need these players to go down. We can't keep having this pressure on top of us. Yep, Slay is trying to work with his team to push in. They do have the odd ball. Nuke and Pave had it for a little bit. 
due to that Bulldog in Lunchy's hands. This is a perfect flank for Slays. He's going to find one or two here. He does. He gets one. His teammate finds the other. He might be able to pick up the odd ball. He, he will have a little bit of a challenge, and he does. So he does pick up the odd ball. He's got pips on the other side of the map. He's going to rotate around to get the help from them. But all of Nuke and Paver on the opposite side of the map. This is going to be so much time for Divine Minds. Yeah, Divine Mind's actually managing to make a really good setup here, flipping what Nuke and Pave had, and they're not real. Nuke and Pave doesn't really seem to be pushing as uh, as like a huge coordinated group here to sort of break this structure, and it's going to be uh, really difficult for them if they keep getting picked off like that. You know, Slays getting these shots down, getting these picks, getting these kills, and Nuke and Pave can't risk losing three down just like they were if they want to get a hold of this oddball. Yeah, perfect teamwork from Slays and Pips. Two times they bait and switch with each other. Then his teammate comes along and helps him out. So beautiful teamwork from Divine Minds. And they still have the oddball. The time still ticking up. They've managed to take the lead. There's only one minute left on the clock, but that won't matter if they can win the game. Junior takes down Pips. Two dead now for Divine Minds. This is Nuke and Pave's chance to get in, get this oddball, get a setup going again. Uh, Lunchy's going to be trying to help Junior over on PD. He's got one player left in here. He's got the Bulldog in his hands again. Junior gets the beat down. They'll have the setup. Let's see what Lunchy can do with the Bulldog again. He just needs to stay in these little small corridors and help Junior out with this oddball and get some kills for his team because they need to win this round to stay in the game. I can only imagine how both teams are feeling right now. It is 67-67. The score is all tied up. But again, they're going back and forth with these kills. And Lunchy actually manages to land some really good shots there in order to just put like the absolute paramount amount of damage down uh, so that he could just make sure that, okay, you know, these guys are on the ball, but they're all one shot. Please clean up. They're not going to have any ball time. As I'm saying, this new Contave did manage to get a couple of seconds up, and that could be crucial in these last 30 seconds of the game. Yeah, Raider's having a rough game. He's only got five kills, but Juckor, he's on 17. And that's probably one of the reasons why the score is so close, even after the first round being so dominant for Divine Minds. Pip's just trying to find Mantis. He does manage to get him. Luckily for him, he doesn't get back smacked. He's got two players over to his left. He's waiting for his teammates. He'll find some shots on Junior. He's going to charge in as usual. This is how you play the game. He finds a second. He's looking for a third. He'll have to back down, stay alive call out to his teammates and it's four up for Divine Minds. They're still not getting much ball time, but the score does end up being 1-1 in the end. The time ran out. Yeah, and you can pave aren't out of this just yet. They actually did manage to again play asset denial there. They said, okay, we have the time up. Just make it about kills. Just play, play Slayer. We don't need to touch this ball. It's too risky for us to essentially be one player down holding the objective. So right now, we're probably going to see the play become a lot more of that vein. You know, teams are just going to want to get a couple of seconds here and there in order to be up on one, uh, one another and then just turn it into a Slayer first. Yeah, that's a massive mistake from Divine Minds. They're not used to this yeah. new change in the oddball game mode. Rocket's in the hands of Pips, though. Maybe he can put them to use to get them the final round win. It was just a massive mistake from them to not pick up the ball. They weren't even looking at the time. Not even I was looking at the time. I was surprised that the round ended. So they were thinking the exact same thing. They didn't pick up the ball. The time ended and they ended up losing the round just because of that, even though they could have easily picked it up and, and grabbed some more time for themselves to keep the game going. Yeah, it's like it, at the same time though, you've got to be cheering as you can pay because it means that they're not down and out just yet. It just means that they need to identify where their pros were in that last round and capitalize them in, in, in order to make sure that they're not down and out, you know, of this, that they go one down in this series to sort of claw their way up from losers. Yeah, Nuke and Pave managed to get three down on the Divine Mind side, so they will have the ball control. Nades and shots coming in across the map. He gets taken down, ball goes down as well. Two dead for Nuke and Pave. Things are looking really good for Divine Minds as they're trying to push in for the odd ball. They'll find another one in Tram. They see them both over at Cafe, so Berserk's got to call that out. He'll go down, trying to play sneaky. Pips is. His team does have the ball. He's getting shot in the back. He, he'll go down again as well. So two dead now for Divine Minds. Things are looking very scrappy, and this is very similar to how Nuke and Pave ended up playing the previous round, and that's why they ended up winning, right? They just The ball was never picked up, and the timer just ran out, and that's, that's really what this game's turning into, very much just a scrap back and forth. Yeah, exactly. It is super scrappy right now. But that being said, you know, Slays and Pips on the side of Divide Mine are playing so well right now, almost in tandem, it seems. It seems like when we're snapping back and forth between their cameras, they both have line of sight on the same enemy that each other are shooting. It's really fantastic to see. It just means that you know that these players right now are at the top of their game and they want to make sure that they take this. It is one all for both teams in this oddball game. So everything counts right now. Every second counts and every time you can get a hold of that ball, it counts, Hoggy.
Yeah, all of Divine Minds pushing into Tram, taking down Nuke and Pave, rockets in the hand of Slays. He still hasn't even used one of these rockets. He finds one with the first one. Shots across for, on Mantis, and Lunchy's going to probably shoot this rocket across. Lunchy is very, very weak. He'll call that out to his teammates. Not great use of the rockets in the end. And Lunchy, again, he's got this Bulldog in hand. He loves this gun. Yeah, Lunchy just always with the Bulldog, and he always capitalizes on it as well. He seems to just love that CQC nature and the Bulldog just lets him let loose with it. Those those 12 gauge shots have got to be hitting hard for the players of Divine Mind, maybe shaking them up a little bit. But overall, we're just back to this sort of scrappy nature. Again, neither teams have the ball here. You can pave, haven't made an opportunity to pick up the ball for very long. And Divine Minds is just sort of cleaning in, sort of coming in for the kills and making sure that even though that you can pave seemed to have a bit of a setup on tram side, they couldn't actually make it count in uh, accordance to ball time, Hoggy. Yeah, you can see only nine points to lead and we're still almost over half of the timer into this round. And that's very, very, very similar to what happened last round. So things are looking very, very similar. And, and if, if last round is anything to go by, it was Nuke and Pave's round uh, to win. So this is perfectly set up for Nuke and Pave and Divine Minds. They've got a bit of a setup going as they move the ball around the map. Berserk out BRs. Jakor is going to put in shots in to Junior to get the help for Pips. Pips will get the beat down. Double melee from Pips with the odd ball. He'll find Mantis as well. Shots out on Mantis. Perfect four shot. It's a killing spree for Berserk. Rockets are about to come up and Divine Mind have full control. How does Pips do it, man? Honestly, even with the ball in hand, Pips is out here getting kills and I can barely hit a four shot sometimes. God, it's just so <laughs> awe-inspiring to see what these players can do in the right conditions and how coordinated they can be as a team of four. I know how hard these players have been running and I know how hard they want to stay in this competition. Yeah, Mantis trying to push in for the ball. He'll find Raided. Shots down on Raided. The ball's still here, just scrapping along. They'll trade with each other. Three dead now, though, for Nuke and Pave. And the ball will be in the hands of Divine Minds again. 11 kills for Berserk. Six assists as well, the most for his team. So he's putting work in. But the team of Nuke and Pave, they're pushing in straight for this ball all the way into the B stronghold point. And uh, Divine Minds still have control, though. It seems like even when Divine Minds gets in these positions where they've sort of got a couple of kills up on the board, you know, two down on the side of Nuke and Pave, and they probably could squeeze a little bit more ball time out, they're just seeming to play it more safe and go for the kills and just operate in that acid, uh, asset denial sort of scenario. But we are seeing a bit of a flip here of uh, Nuke and Pave just managing to take the hold that Divine Mind had on the B-side stronghold and sort of play around what they had previously set up. It's really interesting. And it's coming down to the crunch as we just look forward at this clock. There's an, a minute and a half left in this round to determine uh, who takes this game. Yep, the ball is in the hands of Nuke and Pave though. So Divine might still have a bit of work to do. They can't rely on the timer. They are up by 40 points, but they don't want to risk Nuke and Pave getting a complete setup and holding them out. Three players of Divine Minds at Tram. Rockets are coming up in 25 seconds. One of them will try to challenge Jakor. He will back down perfectly and his teammate will clean up Jakor. Three dead for Nuke and Pave. There's only one member left and it's Junior. So Divine Minds again, they've got control of the ball. As the clock ticks down, we just see it more and more devolving into a Slayer Fest. You know, Divine Minds know that they have enough of a lead here that all they need to do is keep the lead on the scoreboard. As in, they just make need to make sure that there are less players alive on the side of Nuke and Pave than there are theirs. But as I say this, it seems like Nuke and Pave could have a little bit of a setup going in Tram as long as they manage to stay alive for long enough. Yep, Rockets are still up, but I think they're in the hands of Berserk. Oh, they're in the hands of Slayer, actually, as we jump on board with him. So he'll have two Rockets to work with. He's going to get his shield back. Listen for the coil outs. He doesn't want to waste a Rocket. Beautiful. I love that play. He's got a teammate with him here. Put shots down on Mantis. His teammate's going to push in. This is the perfect time to whip out the Rockets, and he does that. He's going to see if he can find anyone in Tram. He finds one. Odd ball is in front of him. Juckles down. So he made the other one one shot. He'll clean him up. It's a double kill for Slays. He's played this perfectly with the Rockets. He'll get challenged again by Junior. Junior's come in with the Bulldog. It's no surprise. The Bulldog in the hands of Nuke and Pave again. Huge play with those Rockets to come out there. Even though he did sort of uh, miss the first one, it was enough for him to be like, okay, you're one shot. I can turn and I can take the other person out. One Rocket is all I need to clean this up. So it did manage to break that little setup that Nuke and Pave had there. Only barely for a split second. Did they manage to have it? Not really sure what's going on with the comms right now, but we are only nine seconds away from Divine Mind being able to hold the ball and take this game, Hoggy. 
Yeah, Nuke and Pave are three dead. Hopefully Divine Minds can manage to grab the balls four dead momentarily. Pip's got the Bulldog in his hands, but I don't think there's anything Nuke and Pave can do. They're spawning on the other side of the map. It's three seconds left. Divine Mind, they're going to take game number one in the loser's bracket final against Nuke and Pave. Yeah, huge, huge plays coming out from Divine Mind there. They played that really well. I really loved what they did sort of in the end of those last two rounds where they were more focusing on just the kills rather than holding the oddball themselves. You know, it does sort of put you in a bit of a difficult situation if you're dedicating one player to be on the ball at all times because it means essentially you have a shooter down. And in a game like Halo Infinite, you want all f four players up at all times to be able to put fire down the range. Yeah, and I think... We sort of saw in that third round that uh, Divine Minds themselves managed to grab the power weapons more often, and I think that was why in the third round they were able to hold the ball for longer. In the second round, it was very scrappy, and Nuke and Page just kind of taking kills where they can get them, and maybe Divine Minds didn't take the opportunity to pick up the oddball as much as they could have, because they ended up losing out on time and on points. It was, it was both. Yeah, it was just overall very interesting way to play in the map. I think throughout the majority of the series, we've just seen them play in a very uh, like rotational style uh, for Oddball as opposed to a more Slayer style. So maybe this is something new that Divine Minds have developed, maybe in scrimming or anything like that. We're seeing huge, huge, massive numbers come out from Divine Minds. You know, Slays had 40 kills, 40 kills on the board, 11k damage, and you've got 12k damage coming out from Berserk. And also on the side of... Uh, on the side of Nuke and Pave, you have Juck All with 12 kills as well. So that just goes to show how scrappy, how intense that oddball game was overall. Yeah, 12,000 damage from Juck All. He's carrying the team junior at Mantis, lacking a little bit. But we saw yesterday, and we were able to look in on gameplay with Juck uh, and Nuke and Pave against Divine Minds. And Juck All dropped a 20 bomb on Slayer, and he's just bringing it over to today and making the chances for his team better. But Junior and Mantis are lacking a little bit in the slaying. It makes it tough for them to be able to win this first game. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, Juckor can't load all of his team into that massive backpack that we know he's, he has, especially after, as you said, witnessing yesterday's game. Overall, you know, uh, I'm, you know, I can't say that you can pay to play poorly here at all. They, they played great, but it just seems at the end of the day that uh, Divine Minds was just able to outslay them, and that's going to have to be something that they overcome leading into this next game if they don't want to face elimination. Yeah, well, Slayer is the next game, so they're going to have to step it up a little bit. But in these highlights, as you can see, the Bulldog in hand, and it was in hand a lot, especially in Lunchy's hands. He loves that thing. Maybe he's just bad with the BR, and that's why he wants the, the Bulldog in his hand. But, you know, he loves that weapon, and we can already see people using the, the Sandbox and then Lunchy specifically. Nah, props, shout-outs to Lunchy, though. He's played such a great <laughs> game today. Like, overall, we've seen him perform. And I think with him in the hands of that Bulldog, he's just looking for a little bit more consistency. Maybe CQC is more his style. And uh, as we come into Slayer being the next game, maybe we'll see a little bit of that CQC to start, uh, style develop in Lunchy's favor because we know that just from observing those games that they need to play that Slayer style. So they're going to be forced to now. That's all they can do. Yeah, well, we're going on to Slayer Recharge next, and there is a sword on that map. So maybe Lunchy can grab that. The, the timer just for respawn is four minutes, though. So if he dies, but he's probably got not much of a chance to use it. But maybe he can use the sword going into the next game. But how do you think things are going to play out in, in, in this Recharge Slayer coming up? Because we just saw Nuke and Pave get heavily outslayed. So I'm not liking their chances going into game number two. It, it is tough. It is tough, uh, especially because of how Recharge tends to play as a Slayer map. It tends to get that sort of uh, uh, standoffy style with teams either taking their place in Attic or looking across from that top control area. But again, it's going to be very tough for uh, New Can Pave to bounce back here because if Divine Minds plays the Slayer game like they were in Oddball, man, they're going to be showing some fire. Yeah, they really are. So Nuke and Pave are going to have to pick it up a little bit going into Slayer Recharge. What else do we have on the, on Recharge? We've got a uh, Grapple Hook grapple hook and a Camo, bottom middle. So those things are going to come into play, probably more than the Sword. But I was just trying to have a little jab at Lunchy there. But the Camo should play a big part as well. And, and even with the Camo and Grapple Hook, if you could manage to get both at the same time, or Sword and Camo, perfect combo. It's the kind of improv uh, improvisation that we're going to need to see from Nuke and Pave if they can manage to cobble together some of that new equipment along with stuff like the Energy Sword or anything else that's located on the map. Like, that's the kind of 200 IQ plays that they're going to need to make here in order to outslay a team like Divine Minds, especially when Divine Minds seem to be so on fire right now. You could say almost that 
they had more time to play that oddball game like a Slayer and sort of figure that thing out. Did they look at uh, what the next game was? Because maybe they just wa wanted a warm up for the Slayer map. Yeah, maybe they were just warming up. But there's a Needler on this map as well, and there's a Bangler. I would love to see the players use the Bangler. It's one of my favorite weapons. It's a three shot kill. We're on board with Pips. He picks it up instantly off the bat as I say that and uses it to perfect use as he can, uh, the best he can, as his teammates will push down for camo. He'll have the Mangler in hand, and maybe they can even go grab this sword. Divine Mind, straight off the bat, they knew that Nuke and Pave were going to push through that bottom control side, and just they wanted to push pressure because they said, okay, well, they're pushing through here. They're not grabbing camo, so then we're going to just put pressure on them and rotate three down to camo in order for us to take it, which is exactly what they did. And now it's in the hands of Slays, who performed massively just on that oddball game. So to see him with a combination right here like camo and sword is going to be devastating for Nuke and Pave if he manages to get it close. Yeah, here we go. I mentioned it. Camo and Sword. He'll find Jaco. Jaco goes down very, very easily. So Slay's already picking up the sword. He's going to get help from his teammates to take down another. He's two dead for Nuke and Pave. Teamwork coming out. Two dead now for Divine Minds. Three dead. Slay's is got to stay alive with his sword. Maybe he can put it to use. Anyone that gets close to him, he'll just sort him in the face. Pips is already 4-1. Pips has already put four kills on the board. Again, how does this man do it? He's just got the aim. He's got the creativity. He's got the mindset that needs to take it. He's got a whole team backing him up as well. Uh, Slays, unfortunately, and Pips do manage to go down there, but they did hold that top control long enough in order to shake up the map a bit and have to force Nuke and Pave to breach that entry and take them out. Yeah, we were saying that they got out Slade in the previous game, but it hasn't really stopped them at the start of this game. They might be down by four kills, but that's not much at the start of a Slayer. As we jump on board with Slays, Camo in 20 seconds. He's going to wait for his teammates to come help him. All players from Nuke and Pave are going to push through Long Haul. He gets a call out for one right next to him. He won't be able to find him. He does. He gets one beat down. Can he get the second? No, he can't. He gets reversaled by Adzi. Uh, bye bye, Lunchy. Sorry, as we jump on with Mantis, Mantis will find one, make him one shot. He should be able to kill Berserk. He doesn't know where what he's doing or where he's going. Camo will be in the hands of Nuke and Pave. He'll grab himself the Repulsa. So, Nuke and Pave have brought it back. They're only down by two kills with 10 minutes left on the clock. Yeah, only two kills the difference. Well, make that three now, actually. Uh, Nuke and Pave still playing a really good game here. You know, I'm honestly quite surprised. Like we mentioned so much before, at how impactful their slaying game of Divine Mind was on the Oddball game. And now here, they're not really showing off that prowess that they had at the end. It might take a little bit for them to get in a swing of things just because of how Recharge plays and sort of how holdy of a positional uh, sort of base map it can become. So we're going to see that sort of develop more into the game, and I think we'll see it become a bit slower as the game goes on and you sort of hit that halfway point into the game, and teams are going to start up taking positions uh, a lot stronger. Yep, it's now only a two-point game for Divine Minds. Mantis will clean up one. I think he does have another player pushing right next to him behind glass. He does find him. He won't be able to get him, though. They will trade, unfortunately. Three dead again for Divine Minds. So Nuke and Pave have brought this back, and they've now taken the lead by one kill. So things are working out very well for uh, Nuke and Pave at the moment bringing it back to just one kill the difference, or two kills now. Yeah, Nuke and Pave overall just doing really well, playing really strong. You know, it's super cool of them to see what's going on and, uh, like, how they're sort of developing as the match goes through. Yeah, things are developing a little differently to the previous game. Unfortunately, players have stopped playing a little bit as Benko joins the game by accident, but he's left already, and hopefully we can continue from here. Shots out from Jaco. He's got two players over there. He's going to work with Mantis to push through pipes, get shots down on Pips. Pips will go down. Mantis does get taken down in the process and not able to stay alive. His teammates have pushed all the way through into pipes, doing his best to get shots on for them. They'll take down one. They'll probably take down Slays as well. Sword is up very soon, and Camera is up in four seconds as well, so... Things uh, will have to change a little bit for the side of Divine Minds as they're still down by three kills. Bit of a ghost of recharge situation happening there, but it's good to see that all the players are managing to get after the, uh, get back on their feet after being spooked a little bit. And we can see sort of uh, Nuke and Pave managed to make like a bit of a score differential here, but now it's only three kills up in the difference. Again, like Divine Minds sort of slowing the pace down and realizing that Nuke and Pave are actually managing to uh, make the score a lot closer than what they would like it, be, like it to be. So Divine Mind are just sort of like throwing themselves back a little bit and saying like, oh, hey guys, let's slow this down a bit. Let's not let the lead get too out of hand. We've got this. Yeah, they're only down by one now as Nuke and Pave managed to keep the lead 
at the moment. Hips, he had the camo. He did not sprint a single time while he had the camo. He walked everywhere. He did not want anyone to see him. And again, he's got the Mangler in hand, which is exactly what I want to see from these players. I want to see them use the additional weapons that have been added to this game because the Mangler is such a such a strong weapon on this map and all the maps in the game. Yeah, especially uh, with Recharge being so closely CQC, the Mangler is only a three-shot kill if you can manage to handle uh, all three headshots, which I'm sure all of the players in this lobby currently have because they're all pretty cracked on those sticks. But uh, we do see Pips manage to change out that Mangler for the sword. And we saw what Divine Might actually managed to do with that sword before. So it'll be interesting to see how Pips can make a play here, especially with him being 14 kills on the board. He's got to know that he's feeling strong. Yeah, he's just watching his teammates back. He's going to push into PC. He'll find one. Can he find the second? No, that was a killing spree for him. Jucker will grab that sword, try to run away. He'll get taken out, though. Lunchy might have it in his back pocket. I'm not sure. Still three kills the lead for Nuke and Pave. So they're doing something right. It doesn't matter what weapons Divine Mind seem to be picking up on the map. Nuke and Pave still managed to keep the lead. Sword will find Raided. Raided will get the traded kill with his teammates' help. Berserk's there as well. Pip's getting shot. They're both getting pincered from either angle. Junior will chase down Pips. So Camo is up as well. Slay's trying to stay alive as best he can. He'll get shots down on Lunchy. And his teammates will come through and help him. Berserk, he's going to grab the camo. Maybe he can at least burn it. He does. Be, he is able to pop it. Let's see if he uses his sprint at all. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to be going in the way that we kind of predicted before this match started. We thought because of how Divine Mind managed to play that Slay game on the Oddball match that they'd come into this and clean up, no problem. But they are actually having a bit of trouble sort of making leads, making good picks, and just sort of like overall staying together and just being like holding the map in a strong positional sense. It seems like Nuke and Pave sort of uh, have their finger on the button when it comes to this. Hopefully, if Nuke and Pave could sort of come back in the way that they did in the beginning of this match, then they might actually take this. It is only three kills to match the difference on Divine Mind, so we'll see where this game can go from here. Yeah, trying to be sneaky. Berserk, a player pushes in. He'll get the free trade. Another one pushes in, but he might go down, and he does. His teammate gets the trade as well. So Divine Mind working together perfectly. They've managed to get the last two camos, and that's probably one of the reasons why they've taken the lead. It, albeit only two kills the difference, Pips again. He's got the Mangler in hand. He's going to use it up close. He's going to probably go for the shot melee, see if he can get more than one kill and trade off with the side of Nuke and Pave. Things are slowing down very much so now, though, with four minutes left on the clock. There's still a lot of time for these teams. Jakor is going to get shot in the back. Junior will find one. He goes down. So Jakor taken out. Junior trying to get shots out again. Two kills still the difference. Pips is taking shots as well. Raided's trying to get in there to find the player of Junior. He doesn't, though. Junior trades. So Junior doing a perfect job. His teammate getting the shots across for him. Berserk playing real sneaky, cleans up another kill. Three kills, the difference again, and there's still only three kills to go. Berserk is on the flank. He has a man Mangler in pocket, makes Mantis one shot, will challenge Lunchy as well. Lunchy will go down. Only two kills, the difference now. Camo's up, but it might not matter. Berserk's trying to stay alive. One kill, the difference. He challenges for the kill. His teammate will clean him up, though. That's the second game for Divine Mind. They'll take this series and move on to the grand final for a rematch against Nutribullet. Wow, bada bing, bada boom. But hey, look, only five kills, the difference. Again, like we thought that overall it would be so much more of a gap in terms of uh, slaying potential on the hand of Divine Minds, but they did sort of have like a pushback there from You Can Pave. Really interesting to see how the, they reacted from that, but we know a team like Divine Mind and how they perform at the end, and I'm sure, Inman, you've seen them play plenty before. Yeah, indeed I have. I've seen these names around the block a few times, and that Slayer, neck and neck. We did see Nuke and Pave there had the lead for a little bit before Divine Mind, obviously, coming back and finishing it in the end. But that was exactly the kind of game I anticipated, to be honest. It was very, very close, very, very exciting, and I love to see it all go down. Hoggy, was it kind of the, uh, the, the result that you were expecting? I think it was the result we were expecting, and but it ended up being closer than maybe was expected, I think, because there was only a few kills in it in the Slayer, even though you could kind of say that maybe in the odd ball that Divine Minds kind of messed up in the second round by not picking out the ball to stop the clock to allow themselves to potentially win it. But it didn't matter. Nuke and Pave still put up a good fight in both games, and it was a little surprising, I'm not going to lie. 
Louis, because of a technical hiccup, we won't be able to see the scoreboards. But if you were to highlight anyone, uh, anything from that match for those who, you know, if you were to highlight it and if you weren't, if you weren't watching that match, what were some of the stats that we should have paid to attention to? Was there anyone who really stood out to you as really being a key slayer or anything else? Pips, dude. Pips, yet again, he put 20 kills on the board. How can you not look at this man and how he's playing right now and be like, okay, if there is any one man who's going to be able to carry his team to go and to go against Neutral Bullet, it's going to be this dude. He's on fire right now. I'm so keen to watch him play in the next game. Oh, he, Pips was a standout back in the HCS event in 2017 and 18 as well. I remember interviewing him and, you know, he was kind of, you know, in the, the later stages of the Halo uh, competitive history here in Australia at least. More of a H5 kind of kid. But, um, you know, he really stood out to me and it seems like he's making a name for himself here in Halo Infinite as well. Yeah, and the funny thing is, him and Pip, uh, Pip sorry, and Barco together weren't really in the top two teams in the country back in the HCS in 2018. But you can see that the time has sort of aged them and they've been able to grow, get better as players, get better with their shots, their movement and everything. And now they've brought themselves to the very, very tippy top of Halo Infinite, even right at the start. Yeah, indeed they have. And, you know, we saw there through that highlight package that there was good use of that repulsor as well. Able to blow those players off the map. I absolutely love seeing that. I've seen some insane clips already shared in the Twitterverse of people get, like, triple kills from one use of the repulsor. Absolutely disgusting stuff. I hope we see more of it through this competition, and I'm sure we will. And we see there, there was a, a really, really impressive scoreline. Divine Mind, obviously, taking the win there. Two nil series sweep, finishing it off with that 50-45 Slayer. Uh, earlier on in that oddball, we talked about many, many times, Blue, about the, the teamwork that's required to take an oddball. And although it looked like it was close at times, particularly earlier on, Divine Mind with a more structured team obviously came out with the win in that earlier, uh, earlier game. Yeah, it's going to be uh, really interesting to see how they play going forward because obviously in those two matches that we just watched, their gameplay was on point. Their team comms were clearly on point. Overall, the structure of the team was really strong. But uh, going in here, like, they're not done yet. That's the thing. That's what... It becomes a mental game now. They know that they're going to be in it for the long haul going up against Nutribullet. I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the grand final. Before we get there, I think we do have the man himself, Pip, for an interview. Let's welcome him in, welcome him in and have a chat with us. Pip, what an absolutely amazing performance there. The squad must be happy. I think you've got a fan here in Bluey as well. Tell us how you're feeling, mate. Obviously, you were just knocked down to the loser's bracket, but a pretty convincing finish to get back to the grand final. What are your thoughts? Yeah, we didn't play our best against um, Nutribullet. They're definitely the best team right now in ANZ. They're very strong, so we just have to shake that off. And then coming into that series, we obviously know Junior's really good. Didn't really see the other three play that much, but they were surprisingly really good. It was a good series. Yeah, I just wanted—I just wanted to ask. Um, Jaco is on the other team. Have you seen much of him before? He's been really performing this weekend. Even yesterday, we got to watch things off stream. So I was just curious what you thought about Jaco um, as a player and how you thought that that team went overall. Were you surprised? Um, were you not surprised? Yeah, I played a bit when MCC first came, like um, to PC. I played Reach against him quite a bit, so I know he's quite talented, and then I watch them versus Dire Wolves, and I was like, definitely unexpected that that win especially, so definitely a shock to me. But yeah. They're a very solid team, honestly. You just mentioned before that you know that Nutribullet is one of the strongest teams, if not the strongest team now that you have to go against in facing, especially in the upcoming Grand Finals. Is there any thoughts that you'd like to share before uh, going up against them? Maybe a little bit of trash talk that you want to shed their way? Nah, it's all love. We gotta just... We gotta play our game, they're really good. This could have fucking be better. Pip, was Junior giving it in his all? 100%. He doesn't know any other way. I thought I thought <laughs> as much watching him. I don't I couldn't ever imagine Junior doing anything but well Pip, look, it was awesome to watch, mate. Obviously you've got game face on. Good luck in the grand final. Hopefully you can take it back. Thanks for chatting us with us and uh, we hope we'll be seeing you in many more competitions in the future as well. Cheers. There you go, man. A few words. It looks like he was in the zone there, Bluey. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't really, uh, wasn't really giving us much. But hey, man, when you're in, 
when you're in that level, when you're in that element that he is right now, he knows he's got a fierce match coming up uh, for him. So he knows he's got to be in that headspace of the game rather than chatting with us old boomers. <laughs> Indeed he does. And of course, Hoggy, you know, he's obviously uh, going to be playing this uh, rematch, that uh, a rematch of the winner's final as he heads into the grand final. Uh, game phase of plenty. Do you think there's enough here? Is there enough in the tank to cause an upset? Because that winner's final looked pretty convincing. Yeah, it did look pretty convincing. I would love to see a close match coming up. Maybe the maps just weren't great for them, but, you know, uh, Neutral Bullet do seem really, really, really strong. And I've seen them grinding online. Like, at night, they're usually the last ones on, like, of the, the top players that I have sort of on my friends list. And I see them in, you know, games together, and they're still grinding. So the fact that they've grinded so hard, I guess, is kind of the reason why they are at the top in this early stage. But I would love to see Divine Mind to be able to push through and at least take a game. Because at this point, we've seen that they are so dominant. But I'd love to see Divine Minds be able to take a game and maybe even the series. Well, let's see what's going to happen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is almost time for our grand final. This is the HCS ANZ Open 1. Let us know in the chat who you are backing. Is it going to be Divine Mind? Can they cause the upset or will it be Neutral Bullet? We'll find out after the break. On behalf of the entire Halo team, it's my honor and privilege to announce that your Spartan journey begins today. Right now, you can download and start playing Season 1 of Halo Infinite's free-to-play multiplayer beta on Xbox One, Series S, X, and PC. This is an amazing moment for our team to get to celebrate this as we finally get to release the game and play with you online. See you online, Spartans. Initially, I was a doubter. I have to admit, so for the longest time when Seduce first came to me and he's like, dude, I think it's going to drop early. I'm like, don't say that, man. I don't want to get disappointed when it doesn't. Certain things started to make me raise an eyebrow like, okay, well, that's kind of odd. I didn't like believe it because I've just been waiting for this game to come out for so long now. So I've just, I'm like, you know what, stuff it, I'll wait till December 8. But I guess it kind of did catch us off guard, but it is a good thing that it came out early, gives us more time to practice. If you can imagine like this chalkboard at a detective's office and like little thumbtacks going through and we're like red 
textile, drawing all the dots together. That was us pretty much for like a week. We ended up sorting our sleep schedules. So we like slept eight hours and then woke up at 4 a.m. and then we grinded the entire day. There started to be dots that started to appear in the sky. You start to you know, draw the lines between them. What better way to get the ball rolling than a surprise release? I think it was, it was really well done. When me and my friends saw the leaks, we... We were kind of skeptical. I was kind of skeptical at first a bit, but then there was like dots that were connecting to another dots and all that stuff. But it was it was a massive surprise. I was really excited and really happy to see that he, um, it actually did come out. And then to then release this roadmap of like a get guaranteed years set of dates and prize pool, just like support for the ANZ region that we've been missing for so long. I think the roadmap's awesome, to be honest. I've never seen something so organized. Gives us actually definitely a lot more clarity around planning things as well, which is good. So. It's super exciting to see Halo's, like especially ANZ, getting some love tournament structure wise. There's going to be like a pro league. There's going to be lots of events. There looks like there's a lot of events, which is always a good thing. Even like weekly comps for our region. That also looks pretty awesome. I love how they're doing this, how they're, how they're going full force for um, for esports for Halo. 343 really did a good job with the team skins and just all of that sort of esports promotions in the game. The fact that the game's free to play is awesome. So it gives like literally anyone access to the multiplayer version of the game, which means the barrier to entry into competing is basically non-existent all you need is an xbox or a pc now definitely fun to be playing with the boys you know on a fresh experience and that announcement trailer got me hyped i was just all giddy and excited super excited to to see how it all pans out and i can't wait for those major tournaments in uh in america as well i can't can't wait just to, to see what's in store Ladies and gentlemen, hello fans, we are back and it is time for the grand final of HCS ANZ Open number one. I'm in Maniac, it's been my pleasure to bring you all the action all day and joining me here on the cast as well, we've still got Bluey and Hoggy boys. We just saw a very intense and exciting finish to our losers uh, bracket final, that 50 to 45 on the Slayer there. Uh, Divine Mind up against Nuke and Pave. We are gonna be starting here with the upper bracket though. Uh, we excuse me the lower bracket. So we saw this run through here. Uh, it was a very impressive run by Nuke and Pave. You can see there they made it all the way 2-0 Direwolves, which was that very shock elimination yesterday. 2-0 over the BBR. 2-1. It was a bit closer with that lower semis before finally going down to Divine Mine. Hoggy, you brought us some of the action there. You took us through the last series. Divine Mine, they must be feeling pretty good with that 2-0 over Nuke and Pave. Yeah, they got to be feeling confident. They probably came up against a bigger challenge than they were maybe expecting, but who says that isn't uh, a bad thing? That's, that, that should be a good thing going into Nutribullet, because Nutribullet were a tough opponent for them in the winner's bracket final, so having a challenge in the lower bracket final should ramp them up for this Nutribullet rematch. Indeed, it should, and you can see their Nutra Bullet with the two nils all the way through for the entire competition yet to drop a map, and they may just finish the grand final that way as well. 
your matchup here. We're just trolling you guys. It ain't no Divine Mind and Nuke and Pave. We're going to be seeing Divine Mind and Neutral Bullet, which we'll see in just a second as we go through the lineups. Neutral Bullet, obviously, is a team that's come through the entire way, uh, and they will be up against Divine Mind. So Divine Mind here, Pip, Raided, Berserk, and Slays. We had the interview with Pip before. And Bluey, look, tell me a little bit about this guy because it sounds like I'm about to promote you to the CEO of, Pip, of the Pip Fan Club. Yeah, please do, Edwin. Uh, I really am vying for that position right now. This dude just performed and performed and performed all through those games. It was super stellar performance coming from him, and I can't say enough about him, uh, honestly. He should be really feeling good about how he's coming into uh, this game against Nutribullet, you know, uh, across such, you know, titans on the Nutribullet team. This man is really performing overall, and um, if he can continue to bring the A game that he just showed us into this game, I wouldn't be surprised if they actually managed to reset the bracket overall here and uh, we go to another massive grand finals game. Indeed, he's dropping 20 bombs today. A couple of years ago at the Sydney final 2018, only one spot off qualifying for Worlds. I know it was crushing for him then, but he's come a long way and I'm expecting him to potentially make some waves throughout uh, the roadmap this year. There's a few international opportunities that these guys will be vying for, I'm sure. He'll be uh, packing his bags for one of those international trips very, very soon. But of course, they will be up against Nutribullet, Seduce, Barcode, Mad Madzi, and Prades. We've been introduced to these guys before. Hoggy, who are we looking out for from this squad? Yeah, it's definitely Seduce. He's been on Team Immunity with Benno, Hev, Voltage. He's been around since Halo 5 and playing a little bit before that with them as well. And he's sort of just risen as time has gone on. And now he's potentially or basically just join uh, together this God Squad at the moment, at least from what we've seen. And that's what people seem to be referring to them as, and Seduce has always been at the top. And it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the frenetic array back in the day. It was sort of like BBR, and then the squad joined together, and then BBR was no longer the number one. And that's sort of what we're happening here, happening here but it's just not really as if they've got much of a challenge to sort of topple over. If you guys didn't see uh, what happened back a few years ago at the 2018 final, you should go back and check it out. Check out the VOD. City 2018, uh, we saw Seduce. You saw that, that little piece of, uh, of trivia. Seduce left immunity. It was a massive shock to leave the number one team. But of course, they weren't the number team, one team for long because Immunity and that renewed Mind Freak squad at the time dethroned them, got the number one spot. Of course, it was a grand final. Both of those went over and represented ANZ at the HWC uh, World Championship. But very, very impressive stuff from Seduce. Keep an eye out for him because he is bound to deliver the goodies in today's grand final. Going to be absolutely awesome. But I mean, all of the players, and I mean this with all sincerity in these two squads, Bluey, are just dynamos in their own right. Oh yeah, huge titans across the board. I wouldn't be surprised if going forward we see both these teams pretty much be the benchmark for the talent that we have in Australia. Again, if they continue performing and as as the game sort of goes on in its lifespan and they learn more and more, they get a hand for that equipment, you know, all those spawns and stuff, just general tech, they are going to perform massively and we could potentially see them on the world stage going to NA and competing in Ray Lee. I reckon it's almost likely for sure that we'll be seeing these guys. But look, let's see. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Cut before the horse. Let's get this grand final underway and see where what maps these guys will be playing on. We are in the grand final, which means best of five, ladies and gentlemen. CTF Aquarius is where we kick things off. We're going to be going over to Slayer on Bazaar and Oddball on Recharge. They will be the three maps we see at minimum. If it goes the distance, we've got Stronghold Streets, and Slayer on Live Fire. Now, as a reminder for the format, it's a best of five. If the lower bracket team, in this case, Divine Mind, if they win this best of five, we reset and we play another best of five. But Hoggy, I'm a betting man, and something tells me that Nutribullet ain't gonna let that happen. Yeah, something tells me the same. And we've got CTS, CTF Aquarius first. And I think this is one of the most staple maps in the game at the moment. And it allows you to really push into the enemy base and kind of, you kind of know where they're going to spawn because there's only a couple different spawn points, but it allows them to sort of push in on one side, spawn them on the other and trap them there. And I think this map may be a real clear indicator of how this series is going to go. If Nutribullet really does know what they're doing, they're going to show it on this map. Indeed they will. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The grand final of HCS ANZ Open 1, the first Halo Infinite competitive.
competitive tournament we've had here in Australia and New Zealand. I hope you are hyped. Get your poggers going in the chat. The grand final is underway. Neutral Bullet versus Divine Mind. It's going to be a cracker of the game. I hand it over to you, Hoggy, to take us into it. Yep, game number one of the grand finals. We're on board with Pips. Shots ringing out across the map. All players from Neutral Bullet have pushed out. Prady's the only one left there. They're going to be able to grab camo. Seduce has it. He runs back, and he's going to stay alive with that camo. Willie, though, he doesn't, though. He gets taken down. So the camo has already been burned. Three down now for Divine Minds, though. Not a great start. Interesting there. Uh, Divine Mind actually managed to put the first kill on the board for the game. And then after that, they went three down almost immediately. It's like Neutral Bullet heard the call, and they just said, nah, we're not having any of that. And then took down three members of Divine Mind, pretty much forcing Divine Mind to have to stop any semblance of a push that they have. And just as I say this, you know, we're seeing Barcode right now. He's already grabbing the flag, taking it out. The game has just begun, Barcode. Give him some breathing room. Yeah, absolutely no fear as he tries to run it, but I'm not sure if that was the best time to grab it. Divine Minds do go three down, though, so Neutral Bullet still pushing in. Only one alive for Divine Minds. The flag is on the move through bottom middle. Can they get this flag in? This would be a great start for Neutral Bullet if they manage to get this. Yeah, Prady's with a super clean, super speedy run here. You will notice that in uh, in Infinite here, flag running is super quick, you know. You may feel like, as the team who's lost their flag, that you have tabs on it. But as soon as you take your eye off it for a second, it's gone. And with that being said, Neutral Bullet have already put one on the board just straight away. And they're running another one. Yep, what is going three, on? There was three dead for Divine Minds, four dead for Neutral Bullet. The flag's out. They might be able to get a counter cap, but the nades and shots are coming in from Neutral Bullet. They will have to back down, slow it down just a little bit, protect this flag as best they can. Their flag is still there, so the flag hasn't been pulled. I really like what Berserk's doing, staying alive. He'll probably be able to live with this. No chance for them to stop him. But the counter cap's probably going to come in through for Neutral Bullet as they're already pulling it bottom middle. Is this the kind of dance we're going to see for the rest of the game? Because so far it's been team caps, other team grab flag pulls out. If we see this, and this is going to be a long one because we're going to see such a deviation in sort of play styles at the end. Both teams are really going to have to slow down their pace in order to get good control over this map because as you mentioned before, coming into the map, this is one of those ones where you can get control. You can start to make a push into the enemy side base and make sure that you know where they're spawning at all times. Yep, that's the second cap for Nutribull and unfortunately for Divine Minds. They are down a player, but that shouldn't stop Neutral Bullet from continuing because that's how it has to go, unfortunately, for them. They find one top mid. Raided goes down. Both of them over in the corner of pink side. Seduce gets a second, so it's three dead now for Divine Mind. Seduce, Barcode's pushing in. A player behind him in the base, perfectly trying to stop him, but his teammate gets the kill. Camo's up. They're going to start running this flag. Yeah, really tough position for Divine Mind to be in right now, but they're, you know, they're down but not out. We know how tough divine mind is as a team and their mental is strong right now you can see that they they're going to be playing with no fear coming into this match and that's exactly what they did because they immediately matched the flag cap that neutral bullet made in the in the uh, in the start and match it with their own so if they continue to do that they're still putting kills on the board they're still they still have great team shots and great communication going forward yeah, Pips only on one kill, unfortunately. It is three caps to one. Beautiful use of the thruster as Barco takes down Berserk. He'll be pushing in, trying to stay alive. Does not want to go top middle. He's going to head into the base. Pips does have camo. He is the last alive for Divine Minds. He'll probably just have to play sneaky and try to stop the flag as it comes to him. Camo is up in 26 seconds as well. Yeah, Pips is just going to swat flag here, play a bit defensively, make sure that he's playing a bit of that anchor role for his team because they know that uh, them having the flag Puts them in a really difficult position. Praddy's with the tea bag. A little bit of disrespect. Another player from Divine Minds drops out. So we might end up just having a forfeit, unfortunately, for Divine Minds. Even though this, this series probably was going to head in this direction, this is definitely not what you want to see. The game was 1 1 when he dropped out, you know, and they'd only just capped another flag. So they were proving that they could hang, and it's just so unfortunate for them. Yeah, super unfortunate, but it is what it is. We can see Neutral Bullet just sort of trying to, to wrap up the game here a little bit, uh, seeing if they could get a good alley-oop on the flag, possibly from uh, the bottom to the top. Trying out some new tech here, which we might see in later series. You know, again, it does put Divine Minds in a bit of an unfortunate situation, but it is it is definitely an is-what-it-is situation. They did try to play on originally, but uh, sometimes that just what ha that's just what happens. Yep, so that's the first game to Neutral Bullet. Unfortunately for Divine Minds, they have a player disconnect 
it's not really how we expected it to go. Maybe the scoreline was, but that's not really what you want to see right off the bat. But it's 1-0 now to Nutribullet. Yeah, just, uh, you know, as you as you mentioned, that's probably quite possibly the scoreline that we would have seen if all players would have been in there, but maybe not just so far in the, the sort of free reign element that they did. Uh, really good overall performances in that early game, though, from, uh, from Divine Minds, because they were playing really strong. You could see that they were given Neutral Bullet back what they had, but, yeah, unfortunately, technical difficulties. Yeah, rated with 12 kills, 2 kills to Pip. Raider was doing work though, so he was getting things done for his team, and that was probably one of the reasons why at the start the game was really close. They were able to counter cap straight off the bat. They might have gone down 2 1 and unfortunately lost the player, but Raider was keeping them in it, and that's probably one of the reasons why the game was so close. I'd be a bit scared though, looking at uh, Madzi's accuracy there. 67% is insane. Could you imagine what he could have racked up if the game went on? That dude is absolutely cracked on the controller right now. And, uh, you know, this being Grand Finals, he's definitely going to be giving it his all. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely giving it his all. So, unfortunately for Divine Minds, they go down in the first game. But let's check out how things unfolded off the bat because it got very, very crazy. One flag got pulled, the other one got pulled, then the other one got pulled. It just went back on the board. Non-stop action at the start, which is not really too surprising off this map. If you can get the kills, you really can run it because you can... You can really work out where the other team is going to spawn and know when your chance to start to run it and when it isn't your chance to run it. Yeah, it makes it super easy on a map like Aquarius to take advantage of uh, what a counter cap is. So as soon as you know our team caps, they're a bit down, they sort of have to recoup themselves. But if you as the opposing team can get in their base, wipe them, then it's pretty much a, a free flag from that point onwards. Yeah, for sure. Like as soon as you throw the, the flag out, you're directly into the front court of that team's base and then you can basically just run it bottom middle run it you know uh pink side car side and you can just run it straight into your base it's real fast to get the flag from one side of the map to the other when you can just drop it off the front yeah it'll be interesting to see how things pan out going from that ctf game there to onto our next match which is slayer on bizarre which i know for a fact is a map that i've seen plenty of neutral bullet take on and they have always been so strong and so consistent on that map if i were divine uh divine minds right now i'd be a little bit scared of what barcode is about to do to me yeah well pips unfortunately didn't start that game too well so you'll have to pick it up a bit raided's obviously proven that he can slay and he's ready for this series so he's gonna have to step up and try to uh lift his teammates or even just put him in his backpack maybe yeah, there's, there's plenty of positions, though, where Divine Minds can sort of take advantage of. There is a really good power weapon on Bazaar in the Rocket Launcher, and of course you have things like the Grapple Hook and, uh, and Camo to take advantage of that as well. So if we can see Divine Minds here sort of take more control of those uh, power weapons, which is a huge difference from a map like Aquarius, I think they're actually going to really manage to pop off here. And Pips, come on, man, I, I need you to get those rockets. Yeah, yeah, he does. He does need to get those rockets. He needs a bit of help at the moment. He's struggling a little bit, but maybe he'll be. He should be able to bring it back in the next game. I believe in Pips. He's a, he's a top player, and he's in the in the grand final for a reason. But going into this game, into the next map, we're on Bazaar. There's a bulldog on this map, and I don't really see people use it too much. But do you think the bulldog could come more into this map, or like? be more useful on this map as time goes on. It's it's not the greatest map for the Bulldog. I think it all really depends on the player styles that we have at foot. I don't think in this map we'll see it much because uh, all eight players, you know, on both sides of the team are just so strong when it comes to their BR mechanics that they're not really going to need to use the Bulldog all that much. If they're listening to me right now, they're more than free to prove me wrong. But uh, that being said, uh, it's, it's going to be tough. Maybe if players can sort of learn to play around the grapple hook bulldog combination more and sort of get in for those CQC kills, that three shot with the bulldog on uh, these HCS settings is really strong. So if players can sort of learn that a bit more, maybe dedicate one player into really getting in and being a CQC expert, then we could see that game style develop. Yeah, no, for sure. With uh, the grapple hook, the repulsor, the thruster being added to the game, all great additions that seem to be working perfectly in the sandbox at the moment. And then if you put them in combination with the Bulldog, the Heat Wave, the Mangler, all of those are close range weapons that you can really, really utilize. So with, with the Grappler and the Repulsor, even though the Repulsor seems to be used as more of a utility to 
get up on higher ground, push people away from you. But with the thruster and the grappler, you should be able to use those bulldogs, the heat waves, and the mangler to your advantage on all of these maps. Most of the maps have at least one of those weapons. Mm, yeah, again, it, it is like really tough because it seems like we're just trying to use Future Sight here and see what we can. It feels yeah. like we're two just old Halo boomers talking about all these new mechanics. And I feel like... <laughs> We need a third boomer here, right? To, to give us his, his piece of advert, his advice, his words of wisdom. And that would be none other I than Maniac. I am the boomer of boomers in ANZ Halo. But this boomer comes bearing good news. I hear we're looking at a rematch, gentlemen. So that wow. would be very, very cool. Waiting for the final word in my ear. But I hear that both teams have agreed to a rematch. And, yep. The little little talking thing in my ear says that we will be seeing a rematch. So to me, that is fantastic news. Obviously, guys, we're all playing by the book, playing by the rules, but it looks like everyone wants the best outcome. So it can confirm 100% conformed source. We will be seeing a rematch of that game, which is great to see. So we'll be going back to Aquarius. We'll be going back to the CTF. We were 1-1 when there was a DC. My understanding is that it will be a full reset. So I'm just getting confirmation on that. But it will be uh, a rematch nonetheless. So great news, Hoggy, to hear that. Yeah, absolutely amazing because I want to see the start of the game again because <laughs> that's exactly what we wanted from the grand final and Divine Minds brought themselves into this series prepared and you could tell right off the start that things were going a lot better for them. It was 1-1. They were losing a second cap as, he, as the DC happened, but they were ready and they were ready to play on this map. Let's do this again. Round number two, gents. We're going to try this again. Aquarius CTF. Let's pray. Pray to the internet gods that we're not going to have any disconnects. The last time was a trial run. We're going in for real, for real this time. And Bluey, I'm going to cut to you as we get into this grand final. We're going from the start. We're running it back. Game number one, Aquarius CTF. Bluey, I'll leave it to you to take it away. Fantastic. All right. So let's see how the players sort of change up their play style because they know that opening the last map that it was a bit of a a bit of a tango, a bit of a dance, a bit of a back and forth. They knew that eliminating players means that they could get through to the opposing side's flag. So let's see, the, see how they change it up. But as I'm saying this, my God, Madzi just cracked with that double kill. He's making such good space for his teammates and it seems pretty even so far, Hoggy. Yep, thruster in the hands of Raided. He'll get shots out on Pips. Won't be able to take him down. Backs down perfectly. Neutral bullet, two dead. They're stuck over on car side at the moment. Flag hasn't moved. Don't know where Camo is. Camo was picked up and maybe burnt or not really used at all. So the game's pretty even. Nowhere near close to what we had last game, unfortunately, which would have been amazing if we could have. But things are very much even and slower at the moment. Yeah, yeah, they are t actually really slowing it down here. Maybe... Both teams sort of coming in for this rematch underestimated each other a bit in how aggressive that they were going to be on both of these plays. And Aquarius is such like a, an open but also closed map that that aggression is really rewarding. So maybe they've both decided, okay, so maybe off the start, if we slow it down here, we'll be able to control the pace of the rest of the game a lot better. Yep, big kills from Berserk. He'll get a double. We're on board with Seduce, trying to move over to help his teammate. Freddy's, but he does go down. So things are looking pretty slow at the moment. Freddy's getting shots out. He won't be able to do it though. He'll have he'll be double teamed. Berserk gets the kill. One dead for each team. Heat wave in the hands of Raided. This is what I want to see. I want to see players utilize all these new weapons. You'll find Freddy's back down. One dead for each team again. Again, this is nothing like the first game. Things are playing very, very slow. Raider just wants to use this heat wave as much as he can. He does not want to leave this room. No, it, uh, as you just said, it's, it's definitely uh, not as fast paced as what we experienced on that first round there. We're seeing the team slow down a little bit more, really focus on those team shots. Getting that heat wave kill is massive for them because, again, that was three down on the side of Nutribullet. And I feel like we're seeing a lot of that on the scoreboard at the moment. And that is not something that Nutribullet wants right now because being three down means that you're giving up so much space to the hands of Divine Mind that it's pretty much just opening up your base in order for them to make a flag cap. Yep, Berserks has started super strong here with eight kills. But his flag will be pulled. He's in the enemy base and he's going to pull it towards Pips, but he has to stay alive. He does not want to die here. The flag is still moving moving across the map from Nutribullet as Divine Minds are trying to stop the flag and as they pull their own, Berserk 
playing perfectly at the moment. Doesn't need to do anything too crazy. Just needs to stay with his flag, not allow uh, Nutribullet to do anything. He is getting challenged by Seduce, though. Seduce is trying to take him down. Seduce backing down. So this is going to be rough for Berserk. Berserk's getting pushed from multiple angles. He's on a killing spree. So he really has started this game perfectly. Flags are out for both teams. So back to a stalemate with the flags, though. Huge shutdown kill there from Berserk. I don't think uh, if, he, if he didn't manage to kill uh, Seduce there, he would have been tracked down so easily. But him being able to get that nade off, get that kill on Seduce means that uh, Divine Mind could make all the space that they needed with that flag, and it's so close to their base, but unfortunately they need the return right now. Yeah, they really, really do. We're still in the stalemate. On board with Madzi, he's got a teammate there. Looks like the flag will be returned though. Madzi should be able to put it in. He does. He might go down. He does. So it's three dead now for... Two dead now, sorry, for Neutra Bullet. All up for Divine Mind. Slays finds another. Three dead for Neutra Bullet. So Divine Minds has Seduce trapped with both the two of them spawning up now. Yeah, uh, really good plays by Raided up there, just sitting sort of top mid. Unfortunately, as I say that, he does go down, but you can see he was playing Overlook for his teammates, just trying to give them the intel as to where the members of Nutribullet were at all times in order for them to be able to make a good coordinated push, which is looking like it's been really difficult for them to so far. Uh, it seems like Nutribullet just have the map control, they have the slay control, they just have the stronger BRs. Yep, so 1-0 now with 7 minutes, 50 seconds left on the clock. Camo in the hands of Prades. He's just going to have to be really, really careful. Careful. He has to return this flag with his team. He's still not sprinting. Even though his teammate needs help, he's still not sprinting. It looks like Nutribullet have really decided that they do not want to sprint with this camouflage. Prades, though, with the double kill, he'll get the return. So perfect work from him. He'll grab the heat wave as well with Camo. It does run out. And let's see what he can do with the heat wave as he pushes in to the divine base. Yeah, that snow, uh, that sort of slow paced, sorry, sneaky play style from a member of Nutribullet isn't something that we're really used to seeing, you know, especially after that round one dance. They are really such an aggressive team, but they, that aggression comes from confidence. They've played enough as a group of four to know what they can do and how they can do it. They know that they can execute on those BR kills so solidly and take the map positions that they need in order to make space for the rest of them. Yeah, it feels like Nutribullet has been in the base of Divine Mind for the last minute. It's either Madzi or Seduce, but one of them is in there. Madzi's just trying to get a random run bottom middle. Three dead for Nutribullet. The flag is being run by Divine Minds. They're going to return their own. This looks like a cap for Divine Minds. So they've done a beautiful job. Even though Nutribullet was in their base, it did not matter. They are still able to get a cap and tie the score 1-1. Yeah, 1-1, one, one. great stuff coming out from Divine Minds. They sort of flipped the script on its head a little bit there and uh, actually managed to make a really convincing run. They just need to pull that off a few more times in order to give Nutribullet, you know, the what for. But I'm saying that, and I'm also looking at the scoreboard, Hoggy, and Nutribullet doesn't even seem to be getting that many kills out. It's just overall map pressure that they have, forcing Divine Mind to sort of have to hang back in their base a little bit. Yeah, Divine Minds definitely out slaying Pips. Off to a much better game this time than he was last time. He's loving the reset. Camo in the hands of Barcode. He'll be able to get away. Let's see if he uses the sprint at all, because not a single player from Nutribullet has managed to use the sprint when they have Camo. That's a trade for either team. One dead for either. <laughs> Barcode gets absolutely challenged. He gets one with the stick. Doesn't manage to get Berserk. Super unlucky with the stick. Could have easily killed Berserk, but he managed to get away. Two down now for Divine Mind. Berserk's taking shots. He'll back down to P2 and just stay alive the best he can. We are seeing a lot of instances here of Neutral Bullet going three down, but Divine Mind just doesn't seem to be making the space on the map for it to count. You know, even then we've got 2-2, two, two, but as I say that, Divine Mind do go down another one. And uh, Raider just has to sit back in his base. All that space that they could have made just in, in that those seconds, those crucial seconds in order to push out from that base are gone. Yep, on board with Raided as he's just trying to defend his base. He's going to get charged by two. His team shot's been ringing out uh, across to help him out. He gets a wingman for the assist. His teammate's there to help him as well. He'll be fighting Seduce. Raided staying alive perfectly. It's two dead for Nutribullet. He'll help his teammate take out another. So they stop the push from Nutribullet and manage to gain control of their base, even though they are two down. We only have about, you know, four and a half minutes left in this game type. If it does sit on 1-1 one, one for the rest of this four and a half minutes, it is going to go into a sudden death mode. And that's where things are going to get intense. Teams are going to start have to playing aggressive in order to get a hold of those flags. 
and we do see Barcode here making a really good flag run, sort of running it down that bottom midsection. Speed, such speed, such utility of that juggle mechanic. And he's not even hitting any... Oh, just as I say that, he wasn't really hitting any any of those walls, but it is such a tricky thing to master, and Barco just did it with absolute near flawless execution. Yeah, perfect run from Nutribullet. They threw the flag down. Barco grabbed it when the other team was three down, and he ran it all the way through for a perfect flag cap for Nutribullet. They're still in the Divine Mind's base. Barco's going to push in. He uses a perfect... Uh, Thruster into Berserker, manages to take him out, gets help from his teammates to Juice. He'll find Slays, put some shots, shots out, and just back down and lets the Juice push in. Yeah, just overall fantastic plays. We're starting to see that little bit of aggression come out from Nutribullet here as they do have one up on the board over on Divine Mind. And uh, they must be aware of the clock as much as I am pointing it out because Knowing that they have two on the board means that they've got to start going and they can build up that momentum, they can build up that snowball in order for them to just make the rest of those three caps really matter. But as I'm saying this again, the Vive Mind making a really good run. They have the flag just under their cap point. So if they can actually manage to get out and touch that flag, which I don't think is going to be able to happen here unless someone could, if Slays can pull off some really clutch kills, they're going to be in a really tough position going forward. Yep, the flag is still not returned though for Nutribullet. Divine Minds need to rush in there and try get a cap. Barco's going huge though. He will get taken down. Can Pips get a touch? He does not manage. He doesn't. He goes down, but his teammate grabs it. So that's a beautiful grab from Raider to keep it alive. But all of Nutribullet are flushing in. Berserk's trying to get shots down. He won't be able to do much. His teammate gets a grab though to stop the flag, which is perfect. The juice is coming in. He'll take down another. They trade. The flag is still not returned. And Nutribrawl have come out on top and they will get the return eventually. Oh, so overall, super good plays from Divine Mind there. You can tell that they were calling with their hearts out to get on top of that flag and make that grab. And they did manage to do it a couple of times, but it's just those crucial moments that really matter. And it is unfortunate that you have such slaying kings like Seduce and Barcode really perform when it really matters to take down those members of Divine Mind so they can't actually get a touch on that flag. Yeah, Raider did not care who was returning his flag there. He grabbed it with a millisecond left on the return. It didn't matter in the end because they ended up not getting the cap, but they still did a perfect job of stopping Nutribullet from capping the flag. It was a crazy, crazy attempt from them. So we're on board with Raided. Camo in the hands of Seduce. He's going to help out his teammate. They're running this flag through P. There's three up for Divine Minds. They do not care with the Camo in the hands of Seduce. This will help them easily run this flag in. The flag is almost in the base. Seduce drops down, trades with one. It's only one dead for Divine Minds, but it did not matter. Nutribullet pop in another one to make it 3-1. Easy, easy cap for Nutribullet. And we're starting to see that snowball sort of build up for them. They have really good momentum here in order to take another flag. And they, they did. They've got it halfway across the map in the hands of Madsy. So all it's going to take now is just convincing enough brawls to be able to touch that flag and make it move forward. Yeah, Madsy did not care. As soon as that flag was in, he grabbed it again. Slays is in a tough position. He'll find two of them. He goes down. Two dead for Divine Minds. Two players from Nutribullet pushing off respawn for this flag. And they're gonna go. They're gonna be able to get a touch and keep moving it across. Praddy's he grabs the heatwave, goes down. Was one shot. Berserk's pushing in. Pips pushing in. They're gonna try get the return, and it looks like they will be able to. Yeah, incredible plays still here, just coming out of neutral bullet. They they have such good coordination. You can tell that every player on their team knows where each other are at all times. The calls that they're making, I mean, I couldn't imagine being in their comms call right now because you probably wouldn't be able to hear the game itself and you're just reacting off of calls at that point, Hoggy. Yeah, again, Nutribullet are back in the Divine base. They're just taking over Divine's base and Divine do not care. They're just running away, going for the other flag as Sparkcode starts to run it. So they keep getting control of this base and they keep running the flag all the time. There's only seven seconds left though. So it won't really matter. We'll go into overtime, but this will be game number two to Nutribullet. Yeah, fantastic play overall from Nutribullet. Really convincing win there. And seeing them manage to sort of take that aggression, they held off a little bit in the beginning of the game, which I thought overall was really good because I feel like it threw Divine Mind off a little bit there. For them to sort of break into, once they got that uh, hold of that second flag, made that cap, they were just like, all right, uh, it's, it's belts are off now, boys. We're going straight in. Yeah, but the fact that the game went for the whole time period, I think proves that 
with the, the disconnect in the first game. I called that one the second game. It's actually still the first game because we managed to have a disconnect in the first one. We got a replay on this one. And I think that that first game proved why we should have had this full gameplay that we got. Yeah, no huge KDs coming out from the side of uh, Neutral Bullet or Divine Minds, really. You know, not really to be expected. Raided going plus two on the side of Divine Minds and Seduce going plus five on his end. But overall, just really strong plays. You can see Barcode absolutely putting down for his team there with 17 assists and a 61% accuracy rating. Are you kidding me? These dudes are insane. Yeah, definitely not missing many shots. Most damage from him as well. Only 3,800 damage from Prades, but it didn't matter. They still got the win 3-1. Their teamwork's obviously on point as they, were managed, they managed to bring it home anyways. Yeah, they're not messing around, and you can tell just from this first game performance that they want this grand finals in the bag. They want to, they want to finish up early so they can go and uh, grab some dinner before it's too dark. But man, oh man, these players, like, looking forward... It's, it's going to be such uh, an insane couple of games that we're going to have next on us because there's still the potential for Divine Minds to be able to turn this all around. They did not play bad by any means whatsoever. Yeah, no, they did not play horrible at all. They were in that game the whole time, right up till the very last second. Even Neutral Bullet weren't sure if they were going to win. That's why they were running the flag with 10 seconds left. So you know that the next game should still be close as well. We had this point in the game where it was a massive grab from Slays to keep it alive. They weren't able to cap it, but they showed that they can be in this series and they can still win this series. Yeah, absolutely. We just need to see more of those really strong performances uh, come forward from the side of Divine Minds. Maybe maybe some better comms, not too sure what was going on there. They might have been a bit shaken up by having that one, uh, you know, that first game restart, but they can, they can shake that off now. They're in the game now. Now is the time to play. Now is the time to really get in it and show that, hey, Neutral Bullet aren't just the most dominant team. We've got this two guys. Yeah, we're going to be going into Slayer Bazaar for game number two. There's quite a different range of weapons on this map in terms of power weapons, because we've got the rockets coming in. We could say that that game was very even in terms of slaying. You know, there wasn't too much difference, even though the scoreline was obviously in favor of Neutral Bullet. But with the rockets coming in on this map, the teamwork plus the rockets should allow for Neutral Bullet to potentially win this Slayer easier than maybe they showed in the previous game on Capture the Flag. Mm, yeah, well, I feel like, if anything, Slayer is really here for Neutral Bullet to shine, right? We know most of these players just from viewing them on Twitch or, you know, when they've been doing their streams or even just some highlight clips that they are all, like, exponential main Slayers in a team of just Titans. So in a game like this where Slayer is even more snowball-y than a Capture the Flag game, if they can manage to get a hold, really retain it, and just put more and more kills up on the board, which all these players are very, very capable of, it's going to be really tough for Divine Mind to bounce back. Yeah, no, definitely. And especially going on to Bizarre, where it's not a typical base versus base sort of Slayer. We really have sort of the rotating around the map. If you kill players on one side, they'll spawn on the other. And that's something that the players need to be aware of going into this game, especially for Divine Minds. They need to make sure that they're controlling certain parts of the map. To, to really take control of the game over Neutral Bullet because we know that Neutral Bullet knows what they're doing very early on in this game, even though it's only been out five days. Mm, yeah, it's going to be really tough for Divine Mind here to sort of get control of those, as you were mentioning before, like the power weapons that are on Bazaar. The Rockets is so critical uh, in order to be racking up kills. And those Rockets is exactly... It, uh, I know for a fact that Rockets love to be in the hands of Barcode. He's going to make work with them. Seduce as well. Every team on Neutral Bullet knows how to use power weapons to their fullest potential, as well as the equipment on the map. So it's going to be really tricky. Bizarre has definitely been one of the maps where we've seen a lot more of those flashier, sort of like grapple hook plays coming out from a lot of these big name players. So if we can see any of that, it's going to be such a delight. Yeah, that would be amazing. You know what I would love to see that we were talking about before? I would love to see Grapple Hook Bulldog. Bring in the grapple hook bulldog for me. <laughs> I'm, I love all these these extra little equipments with all these new fancy little weapons. I want to see them in combination. So maybe, maybe Neutral Bullet can pull it out for me. Yeah, Neutral Bullet, if you're listening, please uh, do Hoggy's request. Please, but also, please. But also, yeah, don't throw the game just because you want to muck around <laughs> and uh, and use use the bulldog there because I don't think it's quite worth a grand final spot just to play around with a new toy. Yeah, no, nah, maybe not. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm asking for too much. <laughs> we'll, we'll see maybe how they go, but uh, you know, again, 
it being bizarre and sort of like a, a more of a mirrored map, as you said, you know, you have those two sort of uh, deck positions, those brutes positions, where players can sort of plink across map, exchange shots. It is really tough to actually get in on those crucial sort of power weapon spawns and uh, the, the equipment spawns and the, the power up spawns too. But we, we're probably going to see a bit of a back and forth for a lot of the time on the map here, Hoggy. Yeah, definitely. Th those power weapons are really in the open. But we're into game number two, on board with Berserk. Can the squad of Divine Minds bring it back to one apiece? You'll find one. Perfect shots from him. His teammates take him down. They're two dead, though, for each team. Overshield is in the hands of Pips. He, he will use that straight away. He does not want to waste any time. Yeah, no, Pips being in control of that OS now, as long as he can get his team to follow up on these shots that he's making, is going to be devastating for the members of Neutral Bullet. But just as I say that, that OS was just melted. You cannot stand up to three players peppering you with BR shots, even with Overshield. It is just not going to last. Yeah, Slays and Berserk working perfectly together to get the team shot on Madzi. Pips picks up another. There's another team shot ringing out. Three down for Neutral Bullet. So Divine Minds now have control of the middle of the map. It's a juice. He manages to find a kill back. Slays does not care. He was going to try go in there and clean up Seduce, but he won't be able to. He misses the jump. He just stays alive bottom middle, which is exactly what he needs to do. Praddy's trying to chase down Raided. He won't be able to get him. He'll find Pips. His teammates ringing out the shots as well. He pushes straight in. His teammates are always there. Neutral Bullet are always next to each other, and they're always working together. Yeah, Divine Minds here. Their positioning is still actually really good. You know, you can see Slaves over there right in, uh, in, in Blue Elbow, just sort of anchoring down for his team. You did see other members of Divine Minds sort of holding that red side rocket position as well. And both of those are really good overlook positions because if any player on the map goes to mid side, if any player from Neutral Bullet goes to the middle, those two members on both sides of the map are going to be able to call it out instantly and put down team shots. Yep, Neutral Bullet have control of the middle of the map. The Overshield is spawning in 15 seconds. It's only one kill the lead for Neutral Bullet. Team shots ringing across the map. They won't be able to take him down, though. Slays somehow manages to get the kill. Pradis goes down, three dead now for Neutral Bullet. The Overshield is about to spawn. Divine Minds are going to grab that for themselves. And here's the Bulldogs in the hands of Slays. They've got the power weapon, and they've got the Overshield to work with. Yeah, Divine Minds have definitely slowed down a little bit here. They've realized that they got picked off a fair few times in that early game, and they know that they sort of need to make an adjustment in their play. And they are three up on the board right now, which is actually super crucial. Make that two up, three up again. Dear Lord, but it is super crucial for a game like Slayer, especially on Bazaar, where, as you mentioned, the spawns are constantly switching up. You need a good positional uh, point of control on Bazaar, and that can be found within the scoreboard itself. Yep, rockets are up in 24 seconds. This time, Neutral Bullet have control. Divine Minds trap, trapped all over on this side. Matty sees three. He'll back down and ask for his teammates' help. He's one shot. He might even drop down. No, he's using the... Bulldog to full effect if he can when they push in. No, he goes down. Rockets were up. I'm not sure if anyone has grabbed them yet. Actually, they're up in five seconds. So Neutral Bullets still have a little bit of control. Divine Minds have managed to push out, but the Rockets are spawning. Yeah, I think overall it's just been positioning that's been the crucial part in this game so far. There hasn't really been any super flashy uh, power-up weapon plays. And just as I say that, we have oh the my triple God. kill oh with my the hook. God. That's what you love to see. Look at that, boys. He gets a hold of those rockets now, and he has the grapple hook. Can we see a bit of Reign of Death? That's absolutely nuts. He finds another kill, and he's on the killing spree. He's got another rocket to work with. He gets a double, not able to get the second triple. But that was actually incredible. The way the grappler literally pulled him through the terrain for a back smack triple kill. That's absolutely nuts. Barcode, uh, he loves Slayer. This is absolutely where he comes to shine because he's got one thing to focus on. And if he can add a little spice into that, if he can go, oh, I feel like making a flashy play, that's exactly what he's going to do. And we're seeing that firsthand. Yeah, Slays finds uh, Seduce as he's got another player above him trying to stay alive. Two of his teammates are down, but he's with the other one, and they work perfectly together to take down Madzi. It's, it's in a weird spot for Slays right now. He's got his teammates around him, but it looks like Neutral Bullet are pushing out. They're trying to put, He's trying to put shots out for his teammates. He can't really help too much, though. He's, every time he pokes out, he's getting shot. Overshield in the hands of Neutral Bullet. Neutral Bullet are really pushing away now with six kills into the lead.
Yeah, it wasn't really much that uh, the members of Divine Mind could do there. Going up against Prades with that OS, you know, it just gives him so much more of a buffer. If he feels like he's going to miss some shots or make some movement mistakes, you know, he has that extra shield there to sort of compensate for that, which is exactly what we saw happen because he took that uh, fight like it was easy anyway. And, and we're seeing Prades just this entire time, he stayed alive. He's taken some damage, but he knows when to pull back. He knows when to call for his teammates. Yeah, three dead, four dead. Nutribull. We're on board with Barco though. He was the last one alive. Sorry. He had the Bulldog in hand. He'll take down one. Nutribull at all spawning up. Seduce the last one left in the middle of the map. Divine Mind's a little bit all over the place though with Nutribull at spawning all up together. Yeah, Nutribull has taken like a really convincing lead here. It, it is 33 to 26 and they are holding that super convincingly. And just as I say that, they get another kill on the board. It's, it's pretty safe to say that once they hit that uh, that halfway mark, you know, above 25 kills for a Slayer match, they started to feel things getting into the motion of a little bit, and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, that play that we saw Barco do before fueled a little bit of that team synergy a little bit more. Five kills the lead. Berserk finds one. He'll make him back down. He does challenge him, though. Madzi manages to get the shots out. He'll get the callouts in. His teammate will shoot across as usual every single time a callout comes. They get found. Pratties goes down. Two dead for Neutra Bullet. We're on board with Seduce. The overshield's coming up in 10 seconds, so he doesn't want to do too, too much here and go crazy and jump out like that, but he does. He'll get taken down. Divine Minds have a little bit of control at the moment. Berserk will drop down for the kill. He gets one melee, gets the other. Overshield is up. His teammates are there to help him. He'll go down. Slays is still bottom mid. He'll grab the overshield. And he doesn't manage to pop it, though. Double kill from Barco. Barco goes in. He's going to get the overshield for himself. So neutral bullet, they may not have had much control, but they scrapped it out and they do get the overshield. They are up by six kills now. They might be able to close it out with this overshield. Yeah, one of, one of the few things that you have to notice here is that uh, overshield doesn't work like it used to in the old Halo games. You don't just pick it up and then it's like, you know, Bob's your uncle, you can move along with it. You actually have to be aware of when you're popping that overshield, when you want that buffer and when you want to put pressure on the enemy team. Yeah, Barcode has to back down. He's getting chased by Raided. Raided does have one rocket left that was in the hands of Seduce before he got taken down. Barcode uses the grappler. Absolutely amazing use. He comes in though, finds Slays. He gets one, does not find Slays though. Good cleanup in the end anyway, even though he managed to challenge two. So Slays now has the grapple hook in his hand. He uses it to get away, drops back, takes out another. Divine Minds, they're still down by seven kills. It's only three kills left for Neutra Bullet. Barcode's on the other side of the map. He's trying to clean him up. He does. Two kills left now for Neutra Bullet. Two kills make the difference here for Neutra Bullet taking this game. And unfortunately for Divine Minds, there's not a lot of room to breathe. There's one more kill left on the board for Neutra Bullet. And they're going to be putting down those team shots as heavily as they can. All they need to do right now is catch an enemy player out of position. And that could be Pips right here. But he does manage to get away on the bar. He does get taken down. And that is the game. Slayer is done and dusted in the hands of Neutra Bullet. Incredible plays coming out from Neutra Bullet overall. Yeah, 50 to 42. A really close Slayer in the end. Insane plays from Barcode with the Grappler. He got two triples in a row for a killing spree. And Neutra Bullet proving why they are the best team. They may have only won by eight kills, but it still felt like they had control. They had Overshield a lot. They had uh, the Rockets a lot as well. And that was one of the probably the key reasons why they were able to win the match. I would definitely say maybe for some of the newer viewers out there that an eight kill difference in a Slayer game is actually pretty substantial. You know, we tend to see these Slayer games get down to the absolute minimum wire. I'm talking 49-49, and this is something that happens all the time. But when you have main Slayers on your team, such as Nutribullet, Barcode dropping 21 kills, only 11 deaths, huge, massive outcome for him. And then you have supporting team members like Prades. Let's give him a shout out with 12 assists. Yeah, Slay's on the other side doing the best he can. Nine assists from him and Berserk. But the assists, the assists aren't even that high when you look at Neutral Bullet. I, every time it felt like one of their players was weak, they would, they would always back down and get help. And uh, damage ringing out, you can see it there. Barcode with the most damage again. It's just a, a typical thing from Barcode we've seen every single game on stream. He's always dominating and he is cracked. I feel like we've dropped this man's name so many times uh, in this broadcast, and I feel like we'll keep doing it over and over again because Marco is just such one of the huge talents we have in the infinite scene already. You know, five days from the game, watching this play zip through those columns with the grapple, he knows exactly when to use these pieces of equipment so early, and that's so crucial to winning these gunfights and these matches.
Yeah, that grapple hook triple kill was absolutely insane. It didn't even look like he grappled onto him, but as soon as you saw him flying through the terrain, you were like, what is going on? And he gets a free back smack. It's just crazy what you can do with the grappler, the repulsor, and the thruster. And he's putting it to work right now. And every time Barco needed to be clutch, he was. Yeah, honestly, how do you even react to that on the side of Divine Minds? Like, there's only so many things you can do in that situation. And moving forward, now that uh, Neutral Bullet have two games up on Divine Minds, Divine Minds have got to be feeling the pressure a little bit here. You know, as if game one wasn't enough, now they just experienced what happened in Bazaar. And seeing that, oh, okay, a player like Barcode manages to go, you know, 21 and 11 with a huge amount of damage output, what can we do to play around that? How do we counter that? Yeah, it sounds like they really, really do need to shut down Barcode. We've been say I've been saying that their team shot is crazy, but at the end of the day, if you can manage to get that four shot on Barcode, because let's be honest, if you get into a fight with him and he doesn't manage to back down, you need to hit all your shots and you need to be taking him out. You can't let him get behind cover because his teammates are going to help him out and it's going to make it very hard for your team. But moving on to the next match, we're going on to Oddball Recharge. The slays overall from both games have been pretty even. But Oddball is a little different with, with an objective sort of coming into it that can be moved around the map. And with the flag sort of, you know, sitting in either base, Slay's just being a slayer. With the Oddball being able to move around the map, it'll mean Neutral Bullet can freely move wherever they want, slay whoever they want, and put the ball wherever they want. It is going to be really difficult for them. You know, Divide Mind adopted more of a slayer playstyle back when we saw them uh, playing Oddball on streets before. But if they have to go up against such a beast like Barcode on the sticks, then it's going to be difficult for them to adapt that playstyle, especially on a map like Recharge, where you've got such good positions to hold the ball overall. Yeah, Oddball on recharge. We're into game number three. If Divine Minds can win this, maybe they can bring it back. But it's Neutral Bullet playing for the tournament win as Pratis drops down, finds one. It's two down now for Divine Minds. Pratis finds a second. The camo is there for him to grab. He's left it for his teammates. So they have camo. Won't be able to grab the odd ball yet, but it's a good start for Neutral Bullet. Really, really good start for Neutral Bullet. Being able to get that power up is such a massive thing, especially on a map like Recharge here. And they've left it to, to seduce with the camo to get the sword as well. Divine Mind, if they're not already aware of it, they're going to have to be because that's going to be such a nuisance having to deal on a map like this and on Oddball. Yeah, the time's already ticking down. The, the, the camo has almost run out already. Pratis may have a sword. He's going to try grab the, the Oddball, but he won't be able to. He's just racking up little amounts of time the best he can for his team. I can't believe we're already a minute into the game before someone even picked up the Oddball. So... I think, I don't know if it's the fact that the oddball spawns there or if people are really just trying to get control of the map at certain positions before they decide to grab the, uh, the oddball. I definitely feel like at this level, it's being able to make sure that you have, you know, scoreboard advantage. You have the numbers up to be like, okay, we can take ball now, get a substantial amount of time and actually make a good setup or a good hold in the position of the map that we know works for us. It is really difficult on recharge. You know, there are quite a few spots. We saw players earlier today playing on this attic side. We saw players today playing top elevator and we also playing them, saw them playing on back blue. So it just becomes of, okay, where can we adapt to the team that we're playing? against and where can we set up yeah exactly perfect pitch from neutral though to get the ball back in their hands barcode goes down they do have the ball up in pipes berserk's charging in through top middle he's got a teammate in dark hall as well they're all pushing in you can see him on his screen he'll take on praddy's praddy's four shots him no problem for praddy's it's two dead now though for neutral bullet and praddy's does have the sword in his hand he finds one he's got another he's got a four shot before can he do it again to pips it does not matter he goes in and he does manage to trade, so the ball will be down. Camo is up, and it'll be in the hands of Nutribullet. Getting that lockdown, though, just that, that trade kill there when sort of Divine Mind was setting up on that glass position, that top glass, that attic position, was still really good for Praetis to do because it means that their setup was completely broken. All of the players of Divine Mind were spawning on the other side of the map, and Nutribullet actually had the advantage of getting to that spot beforehand and grabbing the ball and sort of milking it for a bit of time. Yep, Pratty still has the sword in hand. He'll go down. Madzi's the last one alive. He does manage to stay alive. He also takes down a player. Divine Mind take control of the ball, but Neutral Bullet do not have a problem. There's two of them, and they're running in. All they need is one other person with them to take players down. Berserk's getting challenged by three, though. 
and Nutribullet are always together. They're spawning up together, they're working together, and they're moving together. These seconds are so crucial here, and you can see that all the members of Nutribullet are sticking together just like you said. We are seeing the team coordination in full force, and that's something where Oddball really shines, is being able to differentiate between what teams have the ability to communicate really well and lay down those shots based on those communications. Because reminder, when you have the ball, you have you have downtime in between dropping the ball and taking your weapon back out. You have to make sure that you utilize that down that downtime well between your teammates in order for them to get, you know, good positioning or or a kill or just evening out the playing field. Yeah, and we saw from Nutribullet and Madzi earlier when we had an interview with him, he said the odd ball can be played anywhere. As long as your team gets the right setup, you can move it anywhere. We've been seeing them do that already in this game. Barcode's bottom middle. Camera is coming up very soon, but he does not care. He just wants to get more kills, more damage out. He's trying to stay alive. He'll be calling out to his teammates. Madzi's over there looking out across the map. It's two down for Nutra Bullets. So Divine Minds are going to try to grab the ball, get themselves a setup going, because it's three death for Nutra Bullet. It's really interesting that we seem to be sort of falling back on Switching between what is Oddball and what is Slayer. It seems like teams here, when they know that things aren't optimal, when the setup isn't optimal, they're just switching for kills. Uh, which is really interesting because I don't feel like that's something that we've seen in any previous Halo title. It's always been, okay, just hold the ball for as long as possible. But here, we're seeing like completely different playstyles develop in between these players. All of Divine Mind down now. Neutral Bullet have control of the ball. It'll be a bit of scrap time as they try to work out where they want to move it. He's going to start moving towards Seduce and Barcode, move it into pipes, run away from the team of Divine Minds. Madzi will take down Berserk though. Ball still in the hands of Madzi as time keeps ticking along. 70 points to 44, two minutes left on the clock. And Neutral Bullet don't really have too much of a setup, but it doesn't really matter. They know exactly where Divine Minds are. No, Nutribull is actually still in really good positioning here because what we're seeing is they have members of the team just sort of going around and knowing the spawns and then picking off players of Divine Mind. So Divine Mind won't be able to push this ball without at least three or four up. And just as I say that, they're four down. They literally can do nothing. And if they're two down at all times, like we've been saying, there's going to be no real successful push made on Nutribull from them. Yep, this is definitely round number one going to Nutribullet. So Nutribullet proving they still are super, super do dominant no matter what map, no matter what game type. Divine Minds are going to have to try pull it back in round number two. Yeah, Nutribullet are literally one round away from taking the first ANZ tournament here, which is super, super exciting for them. I'm sure they're all feeling it. But for now, they have to keep their game faces online and make sure they keep performing at this top level, which from what I'm seeing, they just traded a blow then. They're about to trade another. Slays is one shot. Can anyone from Nutribullet get the kill on them? No, it doesn't actually manage to. They they trade three down there, Nutribullet. But as I say that, geez, Barcode picks up a triple, and everything that could have been said for Divine Mind getting a shutdown there is just gone. Yeah, what's new? We switched to Barcode. He's got a triple kill on his screen as per usual. They end up grabbing the ball. Looks like no one from Divine Minds decided to pay attention to the ball as Nutribullet run it away. Pip's going to get himself the sword, so maybe they can use this as all of them are over in Elevator. Slays runs in, gets himself taken down. Raider goes down. Pip's the last one left. He's got a sword. He's going to have to wait for his teammate to help him out. Yeah, Divine Minds have got to start playing a little bit passively here because it seems like they're losing a bit of the momentum that they might have had in the beginning of the game. And if they let that slip away from them too much, it's going to be really, really hard for them to regain it as the game goes on because seconds are so crucial in Oddball if they don't actually make managed to make a good foundational setup, then the game's already done. They have to sort of regain as a group here and make sure that they have good positioning on this map. Yeah, we're on board with Seduce. He's helping Barcode. They'll take down Pips. Three dead again for Divine Minds. Last one's on the ball. He'll go down as well. So this will be more time for Nutribullet. Nutribullet do not care where they've got this ball. They will get the time. They will set up and they will call out where Divine Mind is coming from, and they will move it wherever they have to. Yeah, good point overall, and I don't know if you've noticed, but all the positions they seem to be taking give them as much view of the overall map as possible. Between the ball holder being able to look out of these, you know, these pipe window positions, being able to get recon and sort of intelligence for the rest of the team, he's got two other members of his team sort of scouting out on the field and giving him every every piece of information that he's missing. Missing. So Nutribullet is kind of in a position here where they always know where to move. Interesting to point out, Pratties doesn't even have a kill yet. 
He doesn't even have a kill, and they're up by 40 points. He does have the camo, so maybe he can put this to use, being a little sneaky beaver. Will he go for the back smack? He does. His first kill is a back smack on Berserk. All he needed was a camouflage to do it, but he still manages to get there. Three dead on the team of Divine Minds. We've just been watching Praddies do nothing, yet three of them are dead. Yeah, Praddies just going off with that kill, and not only that, but... He was able to, with the camo, just sort of stay bottom mid uncontested because the members of Divine Mind couldn't actually see where he was. So he was able to give enough communication with his teammates as to where Divine Mind were making rotations from elevator into bottom control room. And from that, Nutribullet were just able to adjust to it ever so slightly and do -si do move the ball around the map just as you can see that they have. Oh, Pips using the mangler the best he can, gets shots out, does manage to take down one, doesn't get to do too much more. The ball is in the hands of Seduce though, it doesn't matter if they go all down, they're straight back to the, the ball. It's tough, tough going for the, uh, for the team of Divine Minds. There's only 20 points left until Nutribullet are the winners of the first HCS ANZ Open Qualifier number one. There's only 10 seconds remaining. He's still got the ball. Players from Divine Minds are trying to come in. Seduce goes down, but he does throw the ball bottom middle so that his teammates can try get some slays without Divine Minds trying to get the ball. Eight seconds, the difference here. All that needs to be done is Nutribullet needs to hold the ball for eight more seconds until they wrap up this entire tournament and give themselves the trophy. It is absolutely ridiculous what we've seen here. And a huge nade coming out from Barcode. He picks up a double. This is not what Divine Minds needs right now. Divine Minds need to get in a position where they all fall together, but they go three down, and there's only eight seconds left for them to hold the ball. Yeah, Mate. only eight seconds. This is looking like this will be the end of the tournament. Nutribullet doing their best to stay alive and try to get the time on the board. They don't manage to do it. Barcode goes down. Divine Minds trying to do the best that they can. They are three dead, though. Praddy's grabs it. Three seconds left on the board. They still don't have it. They grab it again, and they will be the tournament winners. ANZ HCS Open number one. Nutribullet takes it out. Fan. Fantastic result from Nutribullet here, and I'm sure a lot of people really saw it coming. If you were betting men, I hope you bet on Nutribullet because they absolutely took it away here. Josh, let me ask you a question. How much did you put on Nutribullet today? Yeah, look, <laughs> I didn't put anything on because the odds were a $1 at the bookies. They were the hot favourites, and for good reason. Obviously, a fantastic finish for the Nutribullet squad. And look, so much to talk about throughout that series. So many highlights. I'm still biting my knuckle over that triple kill from Barco earlier. A gymnast on the uh, the platform there of, uh, of of Bazaar. Now, look, we'll get back to that grapple in a second. We need to talk about that game we just saw. Oddball, 273. They ended up walking away with the, the at, at the end. Bluey, we saw there, Oddball, you don't need to get kills to be a big contributor to your team. Yeah, Praddies was just a huge objective player then, and it was fantastic for him because we could see that even though he wasn't putting up big numbers, and you can even see his damage number is the lowest on the team, but I think what really matters is him being able to make the right objective holds at the right times and being able to give those good comms. We saw him literally just sitting bottom middle with camo, go uncontested, and just give shout outs to the rest of his team. Barcode, we saw there putting out damage on every map we played him on. He was almost 2,000 damage above the rest in that game as well. I'm sure we'll talk about that more soon. But Hoggy, in this oddball, one thing that I saw is just how critical control of camo was in this game. Yeah, so many times Nutribullet had control of the camo and they put it to good use almost every time. Even when Praddy's have it, had it, he might not have been getting kills, but he was staying alive. He used it to get his first kill, actually. So the fact that they had control of camo so much did not help the side of Divine Minds. Yeah, and we saw here they're going to put your favourite weapon to use there as well, Bluey. Yeah, sheesh! <laughs> Love seeing it. This was towards the end of the game as well. It was 92 points and still climbing. Uh, but yeah, in the end, of course, it was going to be the guys of Nutribullet to walk away with it. And there's our series overview. Hoggy, I mean, walk us through it. Tail of the tape. It's pretty straightforward, right? Yeah, they easily won the uh, capture the flag in the end. Three points to one. Only eight kills in it in Bizarre Slayer but easily coming out the victors in the oddball recharge with all the camos they grab. Doesn't matter how many kills Praddy's gets, they can still win. 
a fairly convincing result in the end. Bluey 3-1 on that CTF, followed by the 50-42 on Slayer. It all came down to the odd ball, and of course, Divine Mind just couldn't cut it in the end, although they put up a valiant effort, right? Yeah, they, they still definitely put up a good fight. You could see that overall as a team, uh, they were still very synergized in a lot of their approaches to all the maps in general. They still performed really well, and I don't think they should take it too hard that they lost to a team like Nutribullet, because as we all said in the opening of, of introducing Nutribullet as a team, Nutribullet has been doing nothing but grinding as a four. They have such good, strong synergy between all of them. If you're in the position of Divine Mind, all you can do from this point is just look at how Nutribullet played against you and learn from that. And that's hopefully where they're going to go from uh, forward. I think that series overview really highlights as well how the score doesn't always convey what happened. You know, 3-1 CTF, that 200 to 70 on in the odd ball. For us as viewers, it looked a lot closer, especially back on that CTF on Aquarius. But look, that's my opinion. Let's get the opinion of someone much more educated than me. I hear we're talking to Seduce, so let's get him on and have a chat. Seduce, my friend, first of all, praise to you, praise to you. What a performance. Congratulations on the win. First things first, just tell us how you're feeling. Obviously, you've got a long history in Halo, and you've just clutched the victory in the very first tournament at Halo Infinite here in ANZ. Yeah, feeling good after that win. Um, it's been a while. It's been a few years since we've had some competition, but it's good to be back. Um, yeah, we've been grinding ever since the game came out, and yeah. Just so happy to be back. Yeah. And, oh, you go, you go, you go. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you, Huggy. So, Juice, it's it's uh it's not hard to say that all you boys played absolutely out of your minds for that entire series. But are there any points that you that you can see maybe from here on that you could improve on as the game goes forward? Yeah, hundred percent. Like it's only early days, so it's a bit of a random tournament. So we worked with like what we could have. Um, definitely plenty of places for improvement, um, and it definitely showed today. Still super happy with our performance though, so, but uh, yeah, lots of areas to still improve on. Yeah, lots of areas to improve on because it's only been five days. How have you felt with your team uh, coming from the start of Halo Infinite to now? Do you think that um, your team working together uh, over the last five days is one of the reasons why you guys are the best team and why you guys in the end, didn't drop a single map in this whole tournament. Yeah, 100%. Nah, I think we're definitely the best team, not just because of the last five days, but because of the last few years. Like, we haven't... It's like we've been preparing for yeah, this moment. Fair. It's not just, like, the game released and then we grinded. We've been grinding for years now, so now it's good to put that to the test and, like, put it to good use. And, yeah, just super excited that there's lots of tournaments to be able to, like, keep competing in. That's actually a fantastic segue to Juice because I'd love to get your opinion on something. You know, you've always been a dominant player and the Halo scene here in Australia, look, it, it's been through its peaks and, and troughs and it's fair to say that it was kind of on life support there for a little while. I feel like surely you must be just waiting for your moment. That moment is here as a Halo player has stuck that has stuck it out and has been there throughout Halo 5 and waiting for Halo Infinite. When someone like you sees the roadmap, like, what are your thoughts? Is this the moment you've been waiting for? And is there anything in particular that you're looking forward to in the HCS roadmap that's been presented? Yeah, 100%. Now, like I said before, we're just super excited that we have all these opportunities to compete in. It's not just, like, matchmaking or scrims anymore. Like, every week we've got something to play for, and it just gets bigger and better as time goes on. Like, there's a few LAN events in North America that we can qualify to. Um, there's lands in Australia that we'll be able to attend. So it's exciting that 24 seven, where it's not just screaming and practicing, like we're actually gonna be able to play for something meaningful. That's really, really awesome to hear. And I see you seem to have the team mascot beside you, Seduce. Is that correct? I do. Yep, <laughs> you wanna tell crazy. us the story? <laughs> <Neutral> bullet. <laughs> um, so it's hard to come up with team names on the spot. Um, and we just went with Nutribullet because um, like we put people in the blender, like when you get them on a spawn trap and that's just like what we were afraid <laughs> of. Yeah. I was watching I like Ogre that, 1 I and like Barcode that. play some Halo 1 and um, that game is very heavy on like spawn trapping and spawn killing. So like every time that I was in their call watching them play Halo 1, they'd be like zzz, zzz, and they would just be spawn killing them. <laughs> so yeah, now we, we wanted to take that into Halo Infinite for a bit until we like lock ourselves into an org. You know, that's actually a great response. When I see names like that, usually it's just, ah, oh, I just wanted a silly name, but actually that makes perfect sense. So 
absolutely <laughs> love it. Well, look, Seduce, uh, we're really, really stoked for you, mate. Uh, I personally am very, very excited for you. You've been a player that we've been keeping an eye on for a few years. And now that we finally have an amazing roadmap ahead of us for Halo Esports, I cannot wait to see what you and the team do. Again, on behalf of all of us, mate, congratulations on the win today. Thank you, guys. Cheers, Josh. Thank you very much, Seduce. All right, well, there we go. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the HTS Open, Number one here for ANZ, it is going to be new to pull it. Gents, I mean, what a series that was. So many highlights that we've got there. We saw a few of the replays as well. Tell me, Hoggy, I'm going to go to you first. If you could pick one highlight of the series, I think I know what it's going to be. But if you could give me one, what would it be? It was uh, when Pip picked up the mango. Nah, um, <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was obviously the grapple hook from Barcode. I did not even know that it would traverse you through the terrain, like literally just take you around it so that you could get onto a player. But that was just insane. It didn't even look like he hit him. And when you see him go through the terrain, it just makes you think, oh my God, that's crazy. And as we pull up the bracket, Bluey, same question for you. Tell me, I mean, I'm going to challenge you. You're going to have to pick another moment that wasn't <laughs> the grapple. Is there something that stood out or at least a player that really stood out for you? It's so tough overall. Look, if there's one shout out that I actually really want to give, it's uh, unfortunately not a team that we saw a lot of, but it's for KBM. Uh, they were an all keyboard and mouse crew coming into the competition and they did really well, especially when we had players, it was their first tournament of all time. And watching them play was actually such a huge treat because I feel like so far in the game, we haven't seen that many keyboard and mouse players shine. So for them to finish in a top eight position is fantastic. And boys, if you're listening, keep playing. I want to see those sick keyboard and mouse snipes come our way. Yeah, obviously something very cool about the Halo Esports ecosystem for Halo Infinite is there is cross-play in tournament as well, keyboard and mouse and controller. And as you saw there, we just looked through the bracket of today's events and yesterday's competition as well. KBM did get that top eight finish, so good shout out, Bluey. Well, that's, uh, that's kind of everything right now. An amazing event to kick things off. I'm incredibly excited. And look, I'm going to go back to you, Bluey. Like, what are you expecting ahead of us? Just overall thoughts about the uh, the events that are coming up. It's insane to think about that we are literally only five days away from the game coming out and players being able to get their hands on it and everyone performed in the way they did. I'm so excited to see what the competition looks like from not only two weeks from now, you know, a week from now, a month from now, it's just going to get better. And we're just going to see more and more teams come through and develop and more and more of these storylines develop. You know, Nutribullet are looking so strong now, but we've seen in the past, especially with Australia and New Zealand, uh, like that competitive Halo scene, we've seen our greats be absolutely dethroned. And I feel like with Infinite being as open as it is, we're going to see that happen again. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but sometime in the future. But someday. Speaking of what's coming up, we actually have the ANZ HCS Open number two. Obviously, today was just kicking things off, but number two, you can register now. The link is on your screen. You can go and check it out. Register the team. We had 37 teams for the ANZ event today, which again, for Australia, that's massive, especially with what, five days notice. Something crazy is about to happen in ANZ. I feel it coming, and I know already there's a lot of uh, teams and players jumping ship from other titles to join the HCS hype train. We are all aboard and steaming ahead. So make sure you go to that link and sign up. It is next weekend. It's going to be absolutely nuts and I can't wait for it. But guys, that's going to wrap things up for today. This has been the HCS ANZ Open number one. I hope you have enjoyed it. Halo is back, and I am absolutely stoked. I cannot wait to see what happens next. I hope you all at home have enjoyed the show. We're going to be wrapping things up on behalf of the ESL Australia production crew. My co-casters here, Bluey and Hoggy. I'm in Maniac. We'll see you guys next week.